All right. Come on now. You know it. It's getting ready for the show. Uh, uh. Uh. Da -da Can I? Uh, all right. Let's get started. Come on now. Let's just jump right in because hi, everybody. Welcome. Oh, the mic's on. Everybody's good. Welcome to the show. Hello. And hi, chat room right out of the gate. Look at you guys. How you doing? <laughs> Uh, I, I, uh, I was like getting close to the beginning of the show. I'm like, shit, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go turn the show on and get going. Cause I was reading, I was reading that, that should be enough. I, uh, I was reading, well, I'll just show you. I was reading this. Um, I was reading, this is the transcript of, uh, Hunter Biden's, uh, testimony today or yesterday. And, uh, as, uh, to quote Ferris Bueller, it is so choice. Um, this is my favorite uh, from the thing here. I'll, I'll put it on the comms window so you guys can see it up close because it's. <laughs> it started off saucy is all I'm going to say. <clears throat> and for all this talk about Hunter Biden being, you know, uh, you know, pushing back and being, you know, all treating, treating the uh, Republicans very woofly, I tell you, very wo woofly, you know, Um uh, apparently, Swalwell was ready for everybody as well. This is pretty fucking great. Thanks, Trucker John. Thanks for the raid. Look at that. Um, yeah, we want to put the transcript out within a day, Mr. Nadler. Within a day. Very good. Thank you. We'll do our best. Yeah. Mr. Swalwell, in English or Russian? Excuse me? What'd you say? <laughs> uh, all right. Look, there's obviously, it's a very serious issue. Very serious. All of it's very serious. We're serious people here. Chat room. We're very serious. This is serious business of the government, of the governing of the people in the government. And I want you to take this as seriously as I do. And so without further ado, I would like to do my impersonation of the person asking questions at the Hunter Biden deposition. It's a grown up time. Duh. 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 Um, thank you. Uh, now that I've gotten all the adult stuff out of the way, um, I can be. <laughs> I'm good. I can be childish the rest of the time. Um, I'm kidding. It's the other way around. That was me being an adult about this because it's, it was fucking ridiculous. Like, it is just... Are the people outside? Absolutely. There's a huge number of people waiting to like and, and see the stream, but you have to hit the like so they know we're, we're live now. You know, that helps them out. I'm just saying. Even outside, it's packed. I'm just saying. The whole world is full of people waiting to get into... Hal Sparks Mega Worldwide. Like, subscribe, patreon.com slash Hal Sparks Venmo. Also, we are doing our regular um, calling of Speaker Johnson's office. We did it Monday. We did it Wednesday. We're going to do it Friday. We're going to do it tomorrow. Call him first thing in the morning. Matter of fact, before I get into the show tomorrow, that's going to do the thing. We're like, I've been doing it at the end of the show because I'm trying to vary the time. Uh, you know, I did midway and then at the end. Uh, tom tomorrow, I'm doing it right out of the gate. Right out of the fucking gate. We're going to call him right up. Top of the show. Um, also, anyways, let's get, let's read the transcript. Da, 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 I'm a big Republican dummy. There you go. That's my, thank you. Yes, uh, uh, level of maturity, uh, uh, maxed out. I think I pegged the needle. <laughs> yeah. Um, at least, uh, you know. Here I am like an idiot. Um, each of us are, you know, being, you know, serious about serious things. Uh, now, that said, oh, don't even ask. You're welcome. <laughs> I said, serious about serious things, and she misheard me for a moment. That was funny. Um, now, um, the, there is no way I'm going to be able to get through the entire con, you know, uh, uh, deposition today uh, with all this stuff. Um, I mean, there's some stuff we could jump around on because I read the his statement, which is readily available. He's pretty direct with all this kind of stuff. One of the things the Republicans try to do is they're trying to throw him off balance by jumping around. So they'll get mired up in a... Do you remember this meeting? Do you remember, I don't remember any meeting about that. Do you remember when this happened? And so this came from this guy? Yes. And now I want to take you over here to this thing. So they're trying to jump from subject to subject, trying to get him to slip. And arguably, in a, in a real deposition where, where adults were involved... I would think that a, um, a prosecutor, someone qualified like Dan Goldman or something, would do this. Move, you move around. This is a time-honored strategy. You do this 
um, in an attempt to get somebody kind of off whatever their story is off their game so they can't keep their lie straight, especially when it has to do with multiple meetings and multiple people in multiple places over multiple years. You could get them to slip up and say the wrong year, and then you, when you ask them to correct, they can't because they actually said the truth. That's kind of the strategy. Now, when the Republicans do it, what they're trying to do is let a misunderstanding get said, never redress it, never go back and go, did you mean this year or that year? When they know it was a slip or somebody else didn't catch it or hoping they wouldn't catch it. And therefore, they can take two lines out of this and say, he said 2014, but blah, blah, and that's a lie. That's what they're trying to do. And this is, by the way, what um, the reason Biden uh, is is smiling through this whole fucking thing. And the reason they're angry at, at Hunter is because he can manage. He's a lawyer. He knows how this works. Meanwhile, Trump is like, they're going to trap me in a trap of trappy trapness. The lies will trap me. Right. Okay. So does my t-shirt match the background? No, it does not. This is a different color. It's just kind of a part. So my ongoing color scheme. Uh, anyways, I'm going to start wearing like green symbols on my chest just so the background peers through it and moves around just to give people nausea. Anyways, um, so there's, uh, all right. They, they talk a bunch about, um, the agreements about what topics they're going to talk about and all these issues throughout, right? Now, let me go to the comms window because it might be a little bigger and easier for me to show you. Um, Yeah. Got to bring it down just a touch. There you go. That'll be a little better. Yeah. Okay. He goes through, they, they have his resume. Um, he reads out his resume. He's done a, a lot more shit than I knew. Um, he worked with the Jesuits a lot, which is not surprising since they're Catholics. What is going on with Catholics? The Catholics, obviously the Catholics. I don't know why Catholic was a, and uh, he's served on like boards working for them and Catholic charities, all that kind of stuff. But he also worked for the UN, US, uh, the US UN World Food Program, um, which is where the meetings where they're like, gotcha, all happened with, uh, you know, Biden meeting people there, like Joe Biden meeting people at these UN food program things. So this is, you know, it's a hobnob thing, rich charity, but they spend a lot of good money. And so it's an easy way to get a, you know, a picture with somebody who's a big deal. Okay. Um, now, they, they, but it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Like, and, and the more they talk about it, by the way, I have, um, let's see, I have never wanted to eat at a restaurant in DC more than the one they keep talking about. I'm, I'm blitzing on the name of it right now. Cause I was just reading, uh, um, all this stuff. But, um, so a lot of it is like, <laughs> what I think one of my favorite things is where Comer, I don't, he's not the one asking the question. Somebody else is, <clears throat> but, uh, Comer's it you know, has either directed them to or talks about stuff in terms of China money. Um, and uh, like Abby Lowell, who's uh, Hunter's attorney, at one point he goes, he goes, uh, uh, they were talking about starting a private equity firm with Jonathan Lee and all this other stuff, which started in 2017 again after Biden was out of office. And so who gives a shit? But uh, he, he goes, there was no source of money at the time for the private equity fund because you start the fund and then you try to get people to invest in the fund because they trust you to invest it for them. You don't, even, you don't get to keep that money. You get to keep a portion of the profits of that money. Even I know that and I don't know fuck all about Wall Street investment stuff, right? All right. <clears throat> was that your cousin, Michael Sparks from Kentucky that got arrested as a Jan Sixer? No, he's not a cousin. Uh, we're probably related as all Sparkses are, but you know. Not kissing cousins, I would guess. Um, you know, in Kentucky, it was a divided state during the Civil War, brother against brother, as it were, so it shouldn't be a threat. Yes, Cafe Milano. Thank you, Kaling. Cafe Milano. That's the place. I, now I I seriously don't want to eat anywhere but Cafe Milano when I go to D.C. now. Wearing a CIA pin. Like, at this point, I think my, my whole existence from this point on is just going to be to troll maggots and, and Alex Jones types. <laughs> that like, seriously, I, I, anyway, so here we go. So he goes, um, and now he goes, you're testifying here today that there was, it, it wasn't money from China that was being invested to be deployed in international areas. And, and he goes, now when you, and Lowell jumps in to ask it, it's funny. Cause I think Hunter's about to ask the exact same question that, uh, Lowell jumps in and he goes, I'm sorry, um, dipshit. When you say money from China, what does China mean? 
China money. It means China money. China money. China money. It's China money. It's China money. Wow, well, China money. It means China money. So um, he goes, it means from any of the state-owned entities or any of the Chinese entities that have a close association with the Chinese government. Okay, so uh, I, I'll, I'll let you know uh, that all Chinese businesses, including the ones that make Donald Trump's ties or make whatever the fuck uh, uh, Ivanka Trump, you know, puts her logos and her trademarks on, is closely associated to the Chinese government because that's how shit works, right? Um, that does not mean that you're in league with the Chinese government. I mean, we're talking about an equity fund. We're not talking about like tech from, you know, like defense tech. <clears throat> How, what about SCOTUS? I'm not worried about it at all, Teresa. I'm not. They're punting and it, and the, the most damage it'll do is delay his trial, but it's not going to, it's, it, it's not going to save him from it. As a matter of fact, it's, he's got other shit that he's dealing with in the interim. It's going to be even worse. I'm not worried about it. He will face justice for what he's looking into, and they're not going to let him off the hook for it because they can't. Anyways, what do you mean China money? Because China money. He goes, at that time, I was not an equity holder in anything that Jonathan was doing. I did not have any notion of the exact source of funds. Sitting here now, are you aware that Jonathan Lee does invest Chinese government funds? He goes, I am not aware of that. It was a company that was being thought of uh, or being formed, the investment fund, was that BHR Partners? Yes, ultimately it became BHR Partners. Jonathan's original fund was called Bohai. He'd been in private equity, equity with one of the first privately held private equity firms in China. This is when they're starting the shit up. Okay. And the B in BHR partners stood for Bohai, right? Yes. And the H in H, uh, BHR stood for Harvest. Does, do I have that correct? Yes. And who's that related to? What was that associated with? I believe the principal for Harvest was Henry Zhao. And the R was Rosemont Seneca. Is that correct? No, it was Rosemont Seneca Thornton. And Rosemont Seneca Thornton, just so committee understands, uh, Rosemont Seneca would have been Devin Archer, correct? Yes. Seneca would have been you, correct? Yes. And then Thornton would have been Jimmy Bulger, right? Yes, James Bulger. I love how the whoever's asking the questions knows Jimmy personally. Yeah, Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy the Elbow Bulger. Jimmy the Bulge Bulger. Yep, James Bulger. And the idea for the equity fund that the business associates were going to invest is that it raised approximately $4.2 million. Do I have that number correct? I think from the equity stake from the partners, which means including Hunter Biden, everybody involved put their money into this fund before they started doing it. Um, trying to create, uh, try to count. Yes, Ali Osher. He is absolutely, Trump is absolutely trying to create um, conflicts between the calendars. It's not going to save him from actually being inside any, all, any or all of those courtrooms. I'm not worried about it at all. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not worried about that part of it. All it's doing is pushing, like, he could sweat about this one now and sweat about this one tomorrow in his own mind, but he's sweating about all of them at the same time. Doesn't fucking matter. It's why he's falling apart. I'll show you in a minute. <clears throat> Anyways. So uh, this, uh, th this is like a great example of, of how these assholes are pretending, A, they don't know how this shit works, which they absolutely do. Um, uh, he goes, okay, so I think it's from the equity state department. And so in order to purchase a 10% share of this equity to get to receive equity in BHR partners, each individual partner would put up approximately 420000 Is that correct? Yes. And so if Devin Archer wanted to get a 10% share, let's say, he would have needed to put up 420000 in equity to get that 10% share in BHR partners. Is that right? In some way, he would have to put up 420000 I believe that's correct. The committee has subpoenaed bank records for a company called Rosemont Seneca Thornton. That's him. Uh, and in those records, Rosemont Seneca Thornton, we can see the first payments in order to get 10% equity of BHR occurred in January of 2014. Were you aware that there were is an investment of 10% of approximately 420,000 uh, in BHR partners by Rosemont Seneca Thornton in January 2014? Can you show us the document, please? Yes, we can. If you could please mark this as exhibit. It'll be exhibit four. Can the members see that too? What's the question? No, I want to see it first. That's the, the his attorney. This exhibit starts on page six. It's a two-page piece of paper, both of which are marked page five. <laughs> Yet they're not the same page six. So can you explain? Yeah. So they're different client statements. So the first page is going through January 30th. But you'll see it's for a period January 1st through 31st, 2014. Next one is February 1st through, uh, through 28th, 2014. We're going to stick with page one as exhibit. Okay. So this is page six of two different monthly statements. So two months in a row, they put took page six from however many pages of this thing. Yeah. Wait. This, the, the, this I think this sums up the back and forth and really actually does point to why these motherfuckers are so confused. Because we are right now talking about 
Devin Archer's company, not Hunter Biden's company with Devin Archer, not Hunter Biden's partnership, other company with Devin Archer, just Devin Archer's company. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Um, so diff okay, different. So this page uh, six of two different monthly statements. Yeah, correct. We're gonna stick with page one. Both of them refer to if you see the top right corner, Rosemont Seneca Thornton LLC, care of Devin Archer. Correct. Now and now on this page, you can point to us what is the basis of your question, please. <laughs> yes, sir. If you look at the dates, so January twenty third, there's a wire fund sent. The beneficiary is BHR with the account number seven seven two for one hundred sixty seven thousand. And then if you go down, there's a January 29th transaction where funds were sent from, and the beneficiary is Bolo Harvest RST Shanghai for two hundred forty seven thousand to the same account, the seven seven two seven. If you put those together, it's four fourteen eight hundred coming from Mr. Archer's account. Uh, Mr. Logos coming from Mr. Archer's account. Yes, coming from the Rosemont Seneca Thornton account, which I will ask your client about in a moment. But my, we'll go to this original question: is coming from Devin Archer's account. <laughs> I'll come back to that in a second. Well, I'm just telling you, this is Devin Archer's account. It's not mine. I'll get to that. I have no controller. Sir, I would just ask you to let me ask the questions and we can cover that ground, I promise. Okay, I thought you did. Were, were you aware that this 10% equity was purchased in January of 2014 to purchase BHR Partners 10% of Mr. Archer? I'm not saying of Mr. Archer. Were you aware of this transaction? I can't recall whether I was aware of that exact transaction at the time. But again, I'd like to point out, this is not my account. This is not my money. I don't have any control or authority over this account. What was your role in Rosemont Seneca Partners? Rosemont Seneca Partners was my primary business. I was the president of Rosemont Seneca Partners. I'm now going to show you an exhibit, the witness. I've done CEO, director, or something like that. Now I'm going to show you exhibit five, which is going to be the bank documents for Rosemont Seneca Thornton. Now, Rosemont Seneca Partners, Rosemont Seneca Thornton, different companies. We'll get to that. Okay. Uh, by the, in this document, this is going to be now marked as exhibit five. This is a document that was obtained via subpoena related to Rosemont Seneca Thornton. And it shows in this document that, that the client contacts, one of them is Rosemont Seneca Partners, LLC. Do you see where it says that? I see where it says that. And it says IBO, which is the term for intended beneficial owner entity. Okay. Is there as well across from the Rosemont Seneca Partners, LLC? I've never heard the term IBO, but it does say IBO across from Rosemont Seneca Partners, LLC. Can we get more copies? None of us have copies of what you're referring to. So it's fair to say the particular document shows that Rosemont Seneca Partners is affiliated with Rosemont Seneca Thornton, correct? What do you mean by affiliated? Well, it's intended to beneficial owner of, of Rosemont Seneca Thornton. I see what you're asking. You're asking whether the document you put in front of the person that you're asking the question, it has a line that says that. Yes, okay. If that's what you're asking, the document will speak for itself. Go ahead. Yeah, the document speaks for itself. It says that. <laughs> and then I want to discuss the second portion. Another 10% was purchased out of Rosemont Seneca Bohai account purchase another 10% into BHR Partners. Were you aware of that? December 2014, that there was another 10% purchased out of Rosemont Seneca Bohai. I'll get to you in a second. This is, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, for 10% of BHR Partners? No, not directly aware, no. Again, I would like to state for, for everybody here that neither of these accounts were under my control nor affiliated with me. Any of this is outside my knowledge. Well, Rosemont Seneca Bohai, let's just go through the name real quickly. Rosemont deals with Devin, you, correct? Well, pertains to Devin. Originally, Devin's firm was Rosemont Capital. Originally, my firm was Seneca Global Advisors. I changed the name of my firm to Rosemont Seneca Partners, which is not Rosemont Seneca Thornton, and it's not Rosemont Seneca Bohai. If Devin set up accounts under his own name, uh, under those names, they were not at my behest, not for my benefit, and not in I had no c control or understanding of. But isn't it true you received money from Barisma in 2014, 2015 into Rosemont Seneca Bohai account? I don't exa don't know exactly what account. I know the money went to Devin because of issues as it relates to being able to make the wire. And Devin then sent me my portion of my board fee to me. Isn't it true that you received $142,000 from a Kazakhstani oligarch to purchase a car from the Rosemont Seneca Bohai account? I'm sorry. When you say Kazakhstani oligarch, could you identify the person and what makes him? Sure. Kenez Rakashev. Let me finish, please. What makes him an oligarch? The amount of money that he has and his location of where he is. It's not quite what makes someone an oligarch, I would just say. Just, you don't qualify as an oligarch just because you're rich and your geography. It, it's kind of like you have to be in line with the government and sort of in either a control-sharing structure with the government or have control over the government with your fellow oligarchs is the idea. It's not just you're in the upper class of one particular thing. Because as we've seen in Russia, for example, there are a lot of oligarchs, or people would call oligarchs, who get cement poisoning and fall out a fucking window. So, <laughs> I don't know. Like a former oligarch, current splat. Um, all right. Okay. Now, can you ask the question again? Did you receive 142300 payment from Kenneth Rakashev into the Rosemont Seneca Bohai account? Can you show me that document, please? Sure. 
I mean, just as a time-saving measure, if you're going to ask him about something that's in a document, it'd be faster to show him the document. I'm coming back. I'll come back to that. Did you receive payments from foreign sources into Rosemont Seneca Boa account? Again, you say foreign sources. The people that I did business with it were from other countries other than the United States. The answer is yes. I received, but not, I don't know whether they went into Rosemont Seneca Bohai or they went to Rosemont Seneca Thornton. I had no control. I had no authority over those accounts and I have no view inside of it. There's no transparency to me that I know of. Did you receive payments from Rosemont Seneca Bohai account into your account, such as a Wasco PC or other Robert Hunter Biden accounts? I can't say today whether they came from anybody other than Devin Archer. What account they came from, I'm not sure because I had, again, no notion of what uh, name with the name of Devin Archer's bank account, which he named on his own, not me. Devin Archer testified in a private interview that Rosemont Seneca Bohai was a 50-50 handshake between you and him. Is that true or incorrect? Not that I remember at all. No, it obviously was not a 50-50 handshake based on the documents I see here because I did not receive 50% of what I've seen in the documents that have been shown to me. He also said you're a corporate secretary of Rosemont Seneca Bohai. Is that correct? The corporate secretary? Yes, sir. I didn't even know that there was such a thing. Do you have a, the document that indicates the company is having a company? Uh, sorry. Do you have the document? This is local talking. That indicates that that company as having a company so that there would be a secretary. Do you have that too? We provided you uh, the Rosemont Seneca Bohai bank accounts. No, I'm saying in advance we provided those to you. Is there a registration that says, I'm not going to answer your question, sir. We provided the document to you. In addition, I'll say for the record that there's no document that you sent out of the 100, 200 plus documents and thousands of pages that indicates what you just said. Witness. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's no, we, no, I wasn't the corporate secretary of the handshake deal between the two of us. Are you out of your fucking mind? I referred to Devin Archer making the statement. I didn't refer to a document from a bank record. Okay, please continue. Based, I love this shit, by the way. I don't, I'm, if I'm boring you, I'm sorry, but this is fun. Based on the records that we received, you and Devin Archer were unable to purchase the 20% equity into BHR Partners until after your father met with Jonathan Lee in Beijing. Now, this is where they... Uh, use the fact that time moves forward as an indication of uh, causality, right? Um, where there is no correlation, we'll just say, if this happened before this, then this the thing after wouldn't have happened without the thing before, which is the, the idea that uh, apple pie is a gateway drug. It's the same theory as because everybody who's ever done hard drugs has probably had apple pie. And so therefore, apple pie, because it happened before the hard drugs, clearly is the instigator for you using hard drugs there that's a, as un-american as that is that's where the republicans are planting their flag as far as this okay um uh, i can't completely okay um i completely disagree with the characterization and the way you just stated that it had nothing to do with the meeting with jonathan lee mr nadler i can't hear <laughs> just i love it you gotta love transcripts <laughs> all right Witness, I can say for certain I disagree with what you just the way you just characterized that. It bears no resemblance to the truth. My father shaking Jonathan Lee's hand in a rope line in a hotel had nothing to do with my relationship with him. I had an over 10-year relationship with Jonathan Lee. He was a friend. He was also a very astute business person. He was educated in London, and we had become not just friends, but I trusted him to be a very uh, to be a very capable business person. But during the 10-year friendship that you had with him, you were never ap able to actually purchase any equity into BHR Partners until your father met with him in Beijing. I didn't, Mr. Lowell. Sorry, sorry. Just timing wise, you're suggesting that BHR came about at the meeting, at the beginning of their 10 year relationship? I didn't say that. <laughs> that's, the, that's the problem they have. So BHR started in 2017. But what they're trying to do is say that this happened before, uh, sorry, conjured out of thin air. CNN cuts out Trump's speech about what? Sorry. I don't know. I scrolled past it. Rat, sorry. Um, <laughs> Oh, God, he's just this fucking dipshit. All right, sorry, I missed that, Ali Osher. I think that's who posted in there. Um, now, <clears throat> uh, now he goes, I, I didn't, he goes, sorry, you're suggesting, he goes, I didn't say that. It's when they were permitted to invest in the company, when they could put that in that 20% so they could get a 20% equity, did not occur until this meeting between Vice President uh, Biden and Jonathan Lee after he took Air Force Two to conduct his business. If you're saying, uh, Mr. Lowell, if you're saying, is a handshake uh, the meeting? Is that what you're referring to? Yes, sir. All right. I could say for the record, and I'll probably say this a thousand times. My father had absolutely no knowledge of, no involvement in, and had no any way was aware of my business relationship with Jonathan Lee. And I could also say this, is that I did not have an equity stake in BHR until my father left office in 2017 to begin with. I want to know if we could please show this would be Exhibit 6. 
This is going to be an excerpt from your book, Beautiful Things. Now, this is where they, like, the idea that the Republicans think they're going to find a fucking gotcha in his own goddamn book, which, by the way, he wrote in 2020 and released in 2021 when his... uh, 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 All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to step in at that bank. They're the, they're the biggest crime family in the world. They're they're been involved in corruption forever. But he's going to but he's going to explain a fucking crime in in his memoir. The year his dad took office. Get the fuck out of here. All right. I I I mean, this is at a certain point you're like, really? Like everybody, the, Repo- the Democrats in there must be going really, really, really. So here we go. And 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 it's. How they do it is so fucking Republican. That's all I'm going to say. Watch this. Okay. This is going to be an excerpt from your book, Beautiful Things. Available on Amazon right next to The sounds of set- the Sound of Settling by our own Tara Dubler. Uh, We're going to refer everyone to page 122. Sir, when did you publish this book? It was published in the spring. I believe in the spring, early summer of 2021, when my father was first president of the United States like you to read into the record if you could. It's going to be the second, sorry, the first full paragraph. So it begins with, I learned of Bo's tumor. These motherfuckers. It's going to, so it begins with, I learned of Bo's tumor. Fuck you guys. Jesus. Okay. Um, uh, answer, I learned of Bo's tumor just months before I received a call regarding Barisma and Devin Archer. Could you hold a minute until we get a copy? Pause the clock, stop the clock, stop uh, stop the clock. <laughs> I love how, uh, like, he never leaves lawyer mode. Stop the clock. <laughs> Good work, Hunter. Well done. All right, sir, if you could please begin. I learned of Bo's tumor just months before I received a call regarding Barisma from Devin Archer, one of my business colleagues from Rosemont Seneca. Our deal with the biggest potential was a partnership with the Chinese private equity fund seeking to invest Chinese capital in companies outside the country. I was an unpaid advisor in that deal, and to this day, I have collected no money from the transaction. Yet, like everything else, it has joined the ever-swelling club of Trump's conspiratorial delusions from birtherism to QAnon. So they they have him read that sentence because I was an unpaid advisor. And I, he never got any money from that transaction. And, uh, and he goes, there he goes, stop right there. Stop right there. It, uh, in here, you talk about how you collected no money from the transaction. Yes. And during this excerpt, or what you're writing here, you're discussing this meeting with Jonathan Lee and your father and providing an explanation. Is that correct, uh, Mr. Lowell? No, actually. It's the next paragraph where he discusses what you just described. Yeah, I, I can read the next paragraph so that I could, if that's what you're asking about. No, no, just in general, this is what you're talking about. This is what you're referring to. Not in the paragraph you had me read. I did not talk about Jonathan Lee or anything to do with what you just asked. So if you'd like me to read the next full paragraph, I can do that because it gives a fuller answer to your question. You can read the next full paragraph. (laughs) These motherfuckers. Okay. In 2013, I think it was in 2014, but I'm not sure because I think this was a mistake because I'd learned of Bo's tumor just months before. It could be 2014. And I went on this trip, I believe it was 2014. In 2014... Dad asked, it says in 2013, but it should say 2014. Dad asked my then teenage daughter, Finnegan, uh, boy, are they Irish. Can I just say this Irish, Catholic, Catholic, Irishy, Irish, Catholic y people? Love them. <laughs> Finnegan. To join him on Air Force One, or sorry, Air Force Two, to Japan, and then on to Beijing, where he was meeting with President Xi Jinping. Dad often asked his grandkids to accompany him on overseas trips. It was his chance to catch up. I jumped on the plane from Japan to China to spend time with them both. While we were in Beijing, Dad met with one of Devin's Chinese partners, Jonathan Lee, in the lobby of the American Delegation Hotel, just long enough to say hello and shake hands. I was meeting with Lee as a courtesy call while I was in the country. The business deal had been signed more than a week earlier. Lee and I then headed off for a cup of coffee. So I want to refer back to the first paragraph you read where you said, our deal with the biggest potential was a partnership with the Chinese private equity fund seeking to invest in Chinese capital and companies around, uh, around the country, outside the country. Uh, what were you referring to? I was referring to BHR. BHR Partners, correct? Yes. And when you say, I was an unpaid advisor in that deal, to this day I have not collected no money from the transaction. Is that correct? Yes. And when you wrote this, it's approximately 2021. Is that right? I published it in 2021. I wrote it in 2020. What you don't say here is that you, didn't, uh, you did get money from Jonathan Lee, didn't you? 
I believe ultimately, no, I did not get money from Jonathan Lee. I'd like to show you uh, now to show you the bank records. Are you talking about a loan witness? Uh, that's Lowell. The loan? He got money, whether you want to call it a loan or, oh, okay, I'm sorry. You want to call it a payment? Did you get money from Jonathan Lee? Uh, you uh, Did you get Jonathan money from, uh, get money from Jonathan Lee is very clear. I was loaned my money against my equity stake in the company of which Jonathan Lee was the majority partner of. So in this, when you say you collected no money in your book, the reality is that just the year earlier, in 2019, you had received a $250,000 wire from Jonathan Lee, isn't that correct? To send back to him for equity stake in the fund. You never repaid the loan to Jonathan Lee, isn't that correct? Did I repay the loan? Correct. I sold my equity interest in it, as, uh, and part of it is the assumption of the loan. You never paid any money back to Jonathan Lee, did you? What I'm telling you is that I sold my equity interest in BHR, and part of that arm's length transaction is the assumption of the loan. And that is between Jonathan Lee and the equity holder. And the equity holder is Kevin Morris, correct? Yes, it is. What, uh, what you did in 2017, you took your BHR equity, which is being held by Devin Archer in the Rosemont Seneca Bohai account, and you transferred it to Scanadelis. Isn't that correct? I don't know how exactly that, the transaction worked. I don't know how Scanadelis was the holder of the equity. And you sold Scanadelis to Kevin Morris, correct? Yes, I did. And you also have over $6.5 million in loans with Kevin Morris, correct? I do not know the exact amount that I have with Kevin Morris, but yes, I have loans with Kevin Morris. So you've never paid back the $250,000 wire to Jonathan Lee because you then gave Scanadelis over to Kevin Morris, who absorbed the loan, right? Um, did you just use the word gave? Yes. You can answer the question if you can. Say the question again. Maybe you can say it right this time. <laughs> Maybe you can say it the right way this time. Mm. You then took your Scanateles, Scanateles share, yep, which owed $250,000 to Kevin Morris, correct? No, excuse me, Jonathan Lee, correct? There was a debt against the equity that was owed to BHR, yes, or to Jonathan. And then you then sold that over to Kevin Morris, correct? I sold my equity stake, which included a note that was owed to Kevin Morris, in an arm's length transaction that was negotiated by our lawyers and was executed by myself and Kevin. Other things you didn't mention in your book was that your father actually wrote a college recommendation for one of Jonathan Lee's children. Isn't that correct? <clears throat> so this is the jumping around that I'm talking about. They, they hit a dead end, and so they yanked the wheel to this direction. And he goes, I believe he did, yes. And I don't remember the exact date, but I did say this. Uh, is Jonathan, as I said before, was a very close friend because a, uh, became a close friend of mine. And although I have no, not had any contact with Jonathan for a long time, I still consider he and his family to be near to my heart. They have, and I knew his son. There, there was a rule in my family. My dad was often asked to write recommendations for hundreds of people that I'm sure over the course of, that, of the last 50 years. But the rule was that if you're going to ask, they had to be a close friends. You had to know them well. And I knew both Jonathan and I knew his son who was applying to universities here in the United States. Devin Archer also testified you placed your father on speak. May I ask a question? No, not of me. I'm sorry. Okay. You're the witness. I apologize. I just wanted clarification about something, but go ahead. I apologize. Devin Archer testified you also placed your fa father on speakerphone during a meeting with Jonathan Lee. Do you recall that? No, I don't recall it. Is there a specific time? I was with Jonathan Lee for a number of times over the course of 10 years. And as I've said, well, go ahead. Did you ever place your father on speakerphone with any of your business associates? Over the course of the last 30 years, when speakerphone was invented on a cell phone, I'm certain my dad has called me. My dad calls me. I'm sure a lot of your parents do or a lot of you do with your children. And if I'm with people that are friends of mine, I'll have them say hi. By placing him on speakerphone, I don't know whether it's on speakerphone. Devin, I think, uh, what he, did he testify that over the course of 10-year relationship, maybe 10 or 20 times, he can't remember. He can't recall the specific times I put my dad on speakerphone when I was at dinner at a social event. We've talked about this a bunch. I've uh, ad nauseum. Um, my dad would call me and I would be in the middle of a dinner and I'd always answer his call. I always answer his call based on my life experience and you're telling me, so two times a year over the course of 10 years, maybe more, um, or 15 years with Devin Archer, yes, that probably did happen. And why did you place your dad on speakerphone? And the reason I ask is, if my dad were to call me right now, I'm surprised my dad hasn't called me right now. And if he did, I would put him on speakerphone to say hi to you and, the con and Congressman Raskin and everybody else in the room. Sorry, let me roll this down. Um, <laughs> it's nothing nefarious, literally. You understand my relationship with my family? When my dad was 29 years old, he woke up one day, went to work, and got a phone call and lost his wife and daughter. And in that same accident, he also lost almost my brother and myself. And when I was 46 year old, my 47 year old brother died. And in our family, when you have a call from, I call him or he calls me or I call one of my, his grandkids, one of my children, you always pick up the phone. It's something we always do. 
And you can ask anybody that I know. It does not have to do with Devin. If my dad calls me and I'm in the middle of something, I either get up from the table and I answer the phone uh, at the table if it's people that I have a long-term relationship with. That part of it, like the fact that they have to, he has to go back through that shit all the time is so gross. But uh, like the fact that he has to remind them, that's why they pick up the phone in that family. Never mind the fact that he's an addict and at this time he was like recovering as an addict and his dad was keeping track of his addiction and he was worried about it. Some of the people he was meeting just to shake hands. So he's like, he's like, hi, nice to meet you. I'm his dad. Check yourself. And then he would, uh, I have no doubt that as vice president, he, he had the FBI go, check that fucker out. And he'd have every right to, by the way. It's not him just looking into the life of a, a citizen or some shit like that. If somebody's trying to get close to him by getting close to his kid, that's national security. So he'd have every right to look at him. You're going to be, you're going to be friends with a, with a first kid. I got news for you. They're going to look you up. I would. And I think you would too, right? Okay. So then they try to do the jump around. Okay. Uh, I'll show you exhibit seven. It's going to be a bank record from Rosemont Seneca Bohai. Is this from a, the first exhibit? It is. Page one. So I'll say page six uh, of eight at the top. This is Rosemont Seneca Bohai. Sorry to interrupt you, but page six, there are other ones with page six. Is this a different month? Different account. Okay. Understood. Go ahead. It's just interesting. It's on page six. <laughs> They're all page six for some reason. Well, here's a, ba a bank statement. Whoops, sorry. Uh, in the account statement on April 22nd of 2014, there's a payment that a wire that comes into Rosemont Seneca Bohai account for $142,300. Devin Archer was asked about this during his transcribed interview, and he stated that it was he believed it was a car for you, but he didn't know about the transaction. So now I'll ask you, did you receive any proceeds or any money for, uh, for a car into the Rosemont Seneca Bohai account? Mr. Lowell, can I ask you, you have Devin Archer's testimony? He said he didn't know about this transaction. It's his account sending $142,000. And he said, he doesn't know he didn't do that. Can I see what he said? We do have the transcript. I mean, you just characterize it as him saying he didn't know about this transaction. He knew. We'll just give you the transcript and that way you can have it. I'm going to read it into the record while we're doing this. So they hand it over. This is Devin Archer's testimony. This is picking up here why it's in quotes. <clears throat> why did Rosemont Seneca Bohai receive $142,000 payment from uh, Rakashev? It was for a car. Whose car? Also, let me clarify, I didn't, I didn't like do the actual banking. So who did? Sebastian Mont Montazi. And Sebastian, so like, I, I wouldn't have sent those wires or received these wires or like pressed go or he would have had, uh, he would have some rubber stamp, you know, and do it. Hunter interfaced with him. And I know this was for a car. Did Sebastian work for Rosemont? One of, yeah, the Rosemonts. He worked for one of them. I don't know. I forget. You remember which one? Rosemont Realty. Now, Rosemont Realty, you'll recall, is uh, uh, Arena Butina's, uh, or Baterina, the, the mayor of Moscow's wife. That's what she invested in. That's Devin Archer's company. First, Rosemont Capital, then transition to Rosemont Rea Realty. Um, what's the purpose of this wire? It's for a car. For Hunter's car? Yes. Yeah, okay. So what's the question then? Um, my question is, who sent you this money for the car? Devin Archer sent the money for the car from his account. So... The wire is being received into Rosemont Seneca Bohai. So it goes out two lines later. I don't. Who is Novitas? Well, uh, when the wire comes in for $142,300, i have never seen Novitas. But if you're asking me, does this money come from Ken Rakashev? I can't answer directly because I don't have any full knowledge. All I know is this, that the money came from for their car from Devin Archer from Rosemont Seneca Bohai. I assume you're showing me this in this document. Are you saying that all the money in Rosemont Seneca Bohai is Devin Archer's money? Yes. So all of your Burisma payments that you get to Rosemont Seneca Bohai, yes, those are Devin Archer's Burisma payments. Until they're paid into my account, yes, because I have no signing authority. I have no transparency into this account. I have no way of making any withdrawals or making any writing checks from or requesting dollars from. I don't. I don't have any way to do anything with a bank account that is solely owned by Devin Archer. Did you obtain custody of the car that was purchased for $142,300? I did, yes. So you did get this car. I got a car. Yes. You didn't ask him whether, uh, whether he got the car. You asked him whether, uh, you asked him whether or not all the money that went into the account was not his. Do you know who gave, who sent the 142,000 to the Rosemont Seneca, um, Bohai account, the same amount that purchased the car? I don't know exactly how, where that, how that was purchased, but the car was purchased. I took possession of the car. Who sent the money for 142,000 into Rosemont Seneca Bohai account? As far as I know, Devin. 
who sent the money from Novitas into the Rosemont Seneca BOA account that was 142300 Again, I don't know what Novitas is, but I believe that money for the car was sent to Devin, then ultimately Devin pur purchased the car for me. And Devin never told you he was providing the money for the car? No, I didn't say that. I'm saying to you, I'm not, I don't know technically who Novitas is, so I can't answer that. Your question, other than to say my belief was that I do not know exactly who Novitas is. If you tell me Novitas is connected to Ken Ezrakashev, then I accept that to be the fact. I have no issue with this. You're telling, uh, uh, they're telling you is that I received a car and I know why I received a car. I received a car because I was helping. Uh, what I, my understanding was that I engaged with Devin, a way for Devin to engage with me to help his uh, Rosemont Realty. It was payment. It was a cockamamie way to do it, but that's my understanding. That was what my understanding was. Did you ever introduce Kenez Rakashev to your father? Kenez Rakashev met my father, I believe, once at a dinner that I had for the World Food Program. I, I, this, we've dealt with this a bunch too. That's the picture they keep showing that, you know, of, of him smiling at the sinks. By the way, the, the fuck that, it, like, the fact that like Trump and Gates met like a, a human trafficker who was arrested at Mar-a-Lago and got pictures with this person uh, like half a dozen times never bothers these motherfuckers. But one world food meeting with Rakashev and a car later because they bought realty because the guy was rich and looking for a place to spend his money. Like for fuck sake. Like anyways. And that all went through Devin was the thing. He was helping Devin in that regard. Okay. The dinner Cafe Milano. Yes. And I, I need to go eat at Cafe Milano. I just gotta. I, I don't know. I don't even know what they serve. But I'm now now it's my favorite restaurant in the whole world. I'm going there and Comet Ping Pong. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, what about Yelena Batorina? I don't know whether she was at the dinner or not. But is your father, have you ever introduced your father to Yelena Batorina? I don't know if I think I've ever introduced him to her. I think that she was also at a dinner over the course of the time which Devin was engaged with y Yelena Batarina. And that was the part. Devin made all the deals with the money that was transferred was transferred from her to him. And what about her husband, the mayor of Moscow? I've met him. I don't know. I don't know any memory of my father meeting him, but I don't know. And was it Kareem Masimov also one of these dinners? Yes, he was. And did, can I just be clear, when you say one of these dinners, do you want to identify which dinner? Because I think the guest list is different at various dinners. Can you provide us with the guest list at the different dinners where you're, we don't have a written list, if that's what you mean. So this is the fishing expedition where they're like, can you give us the list of all the people who were at dinners with you at something so we can fiddle through them and see if we can find somebody we don't like? Mm-hmm. And they're like, no, <laughs> we don't have them. Why would we? Um, so uh, you can say there were several dinners at Cafe Milano, correct? I wouldn't say there were several dinners. Two? You mean there were two? There were two dinners at Cafe Milano, correct? Well, I had many dinners at Cafe Milano. The two that you may be talking about, but I've eaten at Cafe Milano dozens and dozens of times when I lived in D.C. Um, there are two dinners where your father goes into the different dinners uh, in respect of dinners, and I'm not saying they're all at the same time, but Yelena Baterina, the mayor of Moscow, uh, is one of those dinners. Okay, uh, Yelena Baterina is not the mayor of Moscow. She's married to the mayor of Moscow, and I don't even know if she is at the time. Karim Masimov is at one of the dinners. Kenez Rakashev is at one of the dinners. Is that correct? I believe so, but I don't know which of the dinners exactly, but if you put it in front of me, I could decipher that for you, but I will say this. I've had dozens of dinners at Cafe Milano for dozens of, for many, many different reasons, whether it was just to be with family or whether it was to be with friends or whether it was to be with friends and associates or whether it was to do, for instance, a dinner that was to uh, a presentation for the USUN food program, world food program. And one of the occasions that you're speaking about, the entire purpose of the dinner was to present, and there was a big screen at the end of the room. I got up, made a presentation. Rick Leach got up and he made a presentation about the world food program. Father Alex Carlitos, um, who I've known since I was two years old, uh, is one of my family's closest friends. Xanthi, his wife, Michael, his son, and and about a you know eight or ten other people, including people from the U.S. U.N. World Food Program, was there, uh, were there. And my father stopped by to say hello, and he sat next to Father Alex, as far as I can remember, and that was basically it. I would do that all the time, as it was related to the U.S. U.N. U.N. World Food Program. Was Vadim Pazarsky at one of those dinners? I don't remember which dinner he was at, but I do not remember. Uh, I did not remember for a long time, but I do believe that Vadim was at one of those dinners. Yes. I now want to turn to CEFC. So this is, uh, again, they, they tried jerking the wheel. Did you have the fish or the chicken? You English with your fish and chips, your chips and fish. On the plane, I had the chicken. Um, the, uh, yeah, okay. This, this, is, you know, this is another piece. He jumps right in this. I want to turn to C CFC. So do I. Um, now, this is yet another perfect example of... The Republican Party putting their own blinders on and not understanding how they run into a wall. This uh, this is 
A great example. Now, I now want to turn to CEFC. When did you begin working for CEFC? I officially began to do work for CEFC when, the, when I received a retainer from CEFC in earlier spring of 2017. I now want to show you an email titled H to Zhang Draft. It's an email, an attachment. We received this from Rob Walker's attorney. <clears throat> now looking at this, the first page is an email, and I'll read it into the record. Forward. H to Zhang Draft. It's from Rob Walker to Hunter Biden, dated March 22nd, 2016. And there's an attachment, H to Zhang Doc. And it says, take a look and let me know. Very simple. Okay. Once okayed, I'll send to Joan to sign. But then, below the particular email was forwarded. It's from Rob Walker. Uh, dated March 22nd, 2016. Again, subject H to Zhang draft to James Gillard. It says, very simple, take a look. First, let's discuss who are these people? Who's Rob Walker? Rob Walker is both a friend and a business associate of mine. I met Rob Walker first in 1998. We're both close, personal friends, and eventually over time, we did business together. And he has a company, Robin, Robinson Walker LLC. Is that correct? If you tell me that's the name of it, I don't remember that. I submit to you it is. Yeah, James Gillard. Who is he? James Gillard it was first introduced to me by Rob Walker. And does he have a company that you remember, EEIG, which is an Abu Dhabi company? I didn't know that was the name. I just knew James, and I didn't know their LLC names that they operate their businesses from. And then, if we flip to the next page, it appears to be a letter on your letterhead, dated March 22nd, 2016. It's a draft. Now, this this is where it gets really enjoyable. This is the part where I, I, I got to say, these are the parts I really like. As I was reading through, I was like, ah. All right, here we go. Lowell jumps in. Well, first of all, it's not an accurate statement of what it is. This is a typed address and name. You call it letterhead. It's not signed. You call it a draft. It's not stated his draft. Do you have any indication to Mr. Biden uh, uh, Mr. Biden did this? Do you see the first pages that have to do with, I'm going to get into that. I'll ask him if he did do it. I'm just trying to get background for the record. I just want the record to be clear. Sure, I'll read it into the record. And as complete as we can, since it will be a transcript. And so they're very aware that these guys are trying to get him to say something that, like, if we're if you're looking at it, it would look innocent. But if you're not and you're reading it separately, you know, radio being the theater of the mind. Mm -hmm. um, question. Director Zhang. And it says, uh, TBD, where you put the address. Uh, Director Zhang, I hope this letter finds you well. We anticipate working together on a number of opportunities in the U.S. and abroad. I believe we have presented a collection of projects that parallel the interests of you and your team, and we look forward to discussing them in detail as we await your next visit to the United States. Please continue to coordinate all matters with my confidant and trusted advisor, James Gilear. Best regards. And then R. Hunter Biden. Do you recall sending this, later, uh, this letter? I do not recall sending this letter, and obviously from the email that you've attached, which I appreciate, is that the letter was sent to me, it looks like, right? So someone, it appears to be drafted by Rob Walker. Someone drafted this letter and sent it to me, and I don't know whether I ever sent this letter to anyone, the director Zhang or anybody. Based upon the content of this letter, it would appear that there was some work for CFC being done prior to the spring of 2017. Do you recall doing any work for CFC prior to 2017? I do not. And I don't see, I disagree with the premise of the question you just stated. You said it appears that there's work. It says we anticipate. And this is, by the way, obviously we've established, this is Rob Walker writing this, not me. We anticipate working together on a number of opportunities. It does not say we are working on a number of opportunities. And I neither do remember I signing this, and I'm positive I did not draft this. But it does say, I believe we have presented a collection of projects, correct? I believe we have presented a collection of projects that parallel the interests. Yes, I believe. Do you recall presenting any projects to CFC in 2016 or 2015? I do not personally recall presenting any particular projects, but if James Gillier or Jonathan, excuse me, Rob Walker did, then they very well could have. The chairman of CFC was Yi Jen Ming, right? Again, Yi Jen Ming has a $5 million apartment or had until he vanished uh, in Trump World Tower, uh, or Trump World Plaza or whatever it's called, right across from the UN. Uh, yes, when did you first meet Ye Yi Jen Ming? Uh, after he was friends with Donald Trump, actually. First met Yi Jen Ming, I believe, in February of 2017, which if you're checking your Who's President um, uh, calendar, it's that's it, that's right at uh, um, uh, the official. It's a it's a national holiday of who give a who gives a fuck day because it's in 2017 when Trump is president at a meeting in Miami, Florida. And at some point while you're in Miami, Florida, did you receive a diamond from someone at CEFC or Yi Jen Ming? Yes. 
And I'm sure uh, you all travel, and particularly as it relates to the business culture in China, I could say that. When I first received the diamond, I thought it was an extravagant gift. But at the same time, I know that James, Rob, and myself, who were the attendees at that meeting, not Tony Bobolinsky, by the way, gave Mr. Yi a magnum a bottle of, I don't know, scotch, but 1967 Macallan that ultimately was worth far more than the diamond he gave to us. What'd you do with the diamond? I gave it to my uncle. Your uncle being James Biden? Yeah. Do you know what he did with it? I don't know ultimately what he did with it, but I believe he said he got it checked out and it really wasn't worth much. So, Yi Jinping was handing out synthetic diamonds all over the world, by the way. They, that's why. The Chinese were making diamonds and dumping them on the market at the same time. Nobody will bring that up. That's a total side project. Yeah. Anyways, all right, here we go. Uh, did you ever introduce your father to Yi Jinping? I do not recall introducing my father to Yi Jinping, but I believe that I don't recall any meeting. Rob Walker testified there was a meeting at the Four Seasons with Yi Jinping. Your father and you were present as well was his testimony. Yeah, you don't recall that? What was the date of that meeting? He could not recall the date of the meeting. Yeah, and I do not recall the date of that meeting. And so number one is this. Uh, is that my business with CEFC, which was completely legitimate and completely 100% in line with my experience and my abilities, was done without, uh, when my father wasn't even in office. He was out of office. Had nothing to do with my father. But did your, my father never benefited from, father meet Yi Jen Ming. Can I finish? My father never benefited from my business. My father never made any decisions as related to my business to benefit me. My father was never financially, nor any other way um, of benefit from my business. And the business that you're talking about wasn't even when he was in office. That's not my question, Mike. Well, that, what was the purpose? Question is, did your father meet, I'm not Yi Jin Ming. Not being argumentative, but what's the purpose? If you want to talk, if you want to question my business, if you want to question the business that I do, then we can talk about my business. But what does it have to do with an impeachment inquiry? Your father went while he was running for president and said his family never received any money from China. Your father, yes, has also said, you're right. He's never received, he never interacted with any of your business associates. Is that right? Yes. But if you introduced him to Yi Jen Ming, that would be untrue. No, that's not true. I'm telling you this. The question being asked that you're stating is that my father said that I never received any money from China, the government of China. Unlike Jared Kushner, I've never received money from a foreign government. He hurt. Uh, let's just let that sit for a minute. He didn't say government of China, by the way. He said China, from China. Well, did you receive money from China or not? I did. I received money from a Chinese company. How many millions have you received from Chinese companies? I don't know the exact amount, but I know that it was all completely legal. It was incredibly ethical. And I do know this, is that my father never received any money or any benefit from any of the businesses that I've ever done. Let's talk about who did get the benefit. On March 1st, 2017, State Energy HK Limited, a company called State Energy, deposited $3 million into Robinson Walker's LLC account. Are you aware of that? Is State Energy owned by the state of China? You tell me. You work for them. It's not. No. So who do they work for? All I know is that when I went to work with Yi, Mr. Yi, who was the largest independent company inside of China, the fact of the matter is, is that you can go back and read anything you want about CEFC during that period of time. And the anomaly of CEFC was this, is that they were not state owned. They had taken the place of one of the large state owned entities and had outgrown them. They were a privately held company. They were privately held by Yi Jianming who was reported in many different publications as being the wealthiest man in the world because he was the 100% equity holder of CEFC, not the state of China. And that's why I found that it was possible to go into business with somebody that was looking to do one thing. As it related to his relationship with me, was able to identify natural gas offtake contracts in the United States for export to China through LNG terminals. And as you are well aware, I'm certain of the issues as it relates to our national gas production, the most difficult piece is that we do not have enough LNG terminals to be able to make those export deliveries, which depresses the price of natural gas in the United States. And we're unable to put natural gas into places like China who desperately need it to get off coal. And so did Rob, and again, again, the fucking, remember yesterday when we had these assholes talking about um, th that, uh, you know, Biden cares about the environment. Glenn Beck was saying this. Biden pretends to care about the environment, but he's helping them with fossil fuels. The whole point was to transition away from oil and coal to natural gas, which is less polluting and better for the environment on your way to renewables. There you go. So, by the way, you can only call me Dan's are going to dry my hair is down and slightly shorter. Just saying, it's far too long to qualify right now. I will, uh, I'll, I'll take uh, Mark Slaughter's stunt double. For a thousand. Thanks. All right. <clears throat> Anyways. And so did Wa Robinson Walker LLC. I'm not finished with my answer. 
you're filibustering right now. Did I'm not filibustering. Robinson Walker LLC received. I'm not, I'm totally answering your question. Did Robinson Walker, let him answer the question, Mr. Nazi. Did Robinson Walker, let him answer the question. Robin Walker, let him answer the question. Cross talk. Say that I'm not experienced, that I don't understand, but I'm trying to answer fully. Let him answer the question. I don't want to be argumentative. Excuse me, excuse me, court reporter. Just one, one at a time, please. So at this point, everybody's chattering. S witness, sorry, point, very pointed question. I apologize. Did Robinson Walker LLC on March 1st, 2017, receive a million, three million from State Energy HK Limited? Yes, as far as I understand, he did. That money was then dispersed to you and your different family members over the next two months. What do you mean dispersed? When you say his family members, sorry, what do you mean by dispersed? What do you mean? After the money hit the, let me finish the question uh, to create. Pause the clock, pause the clock. Yes, pause it. But let's have a transcript be as accurate. At the end of the day, I'm sure that whatever happens, you want a clear transcript of your question and his answer. So when I ask for clarification, it's for what purpose? You just used two phrases, dispersed and family. Can you be more specific? Put the clock back on. After the money hit the Robinson Walker LLC account on March 1st, 2017, this is the whole, remember the Venn diagram, or the, not a Venn diagram, the, 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 like the schematic they had that was like bouncing through a bunch of shit, and then it just became China money, Biden. It just went from one to one, because nobody, everybody was like, that sounds like a bunch of shit. Everybody was like, it went from here to here. <laughs> so, um, remember that part? Okay, that's what this is about. After the money hit Robinson Walker LLC account on March 1st of 2017, over a million dollars goes to EEIG, James Gilliard. Robinson, Rob Walker, retains over a million dollars. Then, over the next the following two months, there are over 15 wires that go out to you, James Biden, through BB, JBBSR, Inc., and to Hallie Biden and other Biden accounts that we're still identifying. My question is, what services did JBBSR Incorp Incorporated provide to State Energy HK Limited? Okay, well, I'll start with the other Biden accounts uh, so that you're, continuing to, that you're continuing to identify. I think you've always had the ability to try and identify those with your subpoena power. Those are all me. The million dollars was divided into three ways. Excuse me, the three million. It was a retainer agreement. And I, can I just say, this is exactly how I'm reading this for the first time. But that's what I, that's how I explained it. When they started. They're starting up a business to do this future business. And they gave a retainer for this. The retainer being is if you fuck up or they fire you or they break up the company, you keep the retainer. It's the, it's the sorry for wasting your fucking time money. Okay. That's what this is for. All right. And the more likely they are to be a fuck up or something to fall apart, the more of a retainer you will ask for because it, you know, the rest of the money might not show up and you're going to be putting your reputation on the line, going to like a bunch of places and talking to, you know, people and going, yeah, we got this deal. It's going to happen. You should come in on this. And then you, you get all these people together and then they fall apart and you're like, fuck, I just lied to all my friends and all these others. Like, this is exactly what I said the structure was built on. You know how I know this? Because it's obvious. Literally, the LNG port that he was talking about, the, the fil facility they were talking about, is a $40 million deal. They had a 10% retainer to make the business on purchasing this kind of thing so that they could seed some money to actually do it and start the business and all this shit. All right. And, and it's a waste of fucking time because it's 2017. It doesn't matter. All right. It was a retainer agreement with CFC while we worked out a way in which to become partners through a different entity. And that million dollars that was accredited to me as it related to that, one third to Rob, one third to James, went to me, not my father, not any bank account related to my father. And what I did is I said, like I do with many things that I've done in my business career, is that I wanted my uncle to be an advisor to me. So I sent money to him. I'd been using Hallie's American Express card because I did not have a credit card at that time. And so I sent a portion of that money to her for repayment of the American Express bill. And other family members, are you talking about Venmos that I made to my daughters? No, this account has no Venmos. My question, the next question is, why didn't you, but I'm saying, who are the other, when you say other, why didn't you, okay, I'm just asking, receive, for clarification, the million dollars into your Owasco account or another account instead of sending out individual wires from Robinson Walker LLC, according to Hallie Biden and to James Biden. A real answer, because despite, despite the fact that I certainly didn't look like it, is that sometimes I can be oxymoronically cheap. It's to save on two wire transfers. I knew I was going to send the money to my uncle. And instead of saying, send it to my account, and then I'll figure out how to send it from my Owasco account, business account, to another wire transfer to my uncle or Jim or another wire transfer to Hallie, I just said to Rob, who was, by the way, a friend and associate of mine for over 20 years, please just wire it directly to Hallie. Please just wire it directly to Uncle Jim. But it's all my money and it's none to my dad. 
and it's uh, and it's all your money. But during that time period, you were all uh, going through a divorce. I was already divorced by that time. I was divorced in March 20 of 2017 or earlier, but I've been separated from my wife since basically right after my brother died. Were you concerned that if the money went into your Wasco PC account that your ex-wife at the time would know the money went into your Wasco PC account? Hold on a second. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Mr. Lowe, on what possible grounds, asking about the relationship is between Mr. Biden and his ex-wife, even for the premise of your question, that he was concerned that his ex-wife would find out about it, could possibly be relevant to an impeachment inquiry or an oversight investigation that you announced at the beginning. What's the relevance? It's relevant to know the purpose of why he's sending wires in a manner that he's sending wires. We need to know. And he just answered your question, which had nothing to do with being concerned about anybody, which makes no sense because each wire costs money. So he would send 15 separate wires. He's saying, I want to send two wires. End up sending over 15 wires. If each one costs $25, he or Mr. Walker, Mr. Walker, not me. That's your business partner. So you ripped off your business partner? <laughs> yes, for yeah, 15 chops of $25. No, I'm saying that I didn't double up. Oh, come on, come on. I mean, are you kidding me? Come on. Look, I appreciate the job you have. I truly do. I appreciate the job you all have. But I'm telling you this, is that if you can show me where any money that I've ever um, that I've ever had went to my father, other than, for instance, the repayment of $1,300 for a loan for a truck, okay? Yeah, come on. And this is what I'm saying. You want to talk about my divorce? I was not hiding money. I can absolutely 100% state for the record that in no way was I trying to hide any funds from my wife. And we have a massive settlement divorce that can prove that. Let's talk about agreement. Excuse me. Money went to your father. You also got in August of 2017 a $5 million deposit from a company called Northern International Capital in Hudson West 3, correct? I did not. I did not personally get a $5 million deposit. It went into an LLC, which was a joint venture between my entity, Owasco PC, and Hudson West 3, and Mr. Yee's personal, I don't remember, Hudson West 4, his entity. And that entity, Hudson West 3, of which I do not have control over the bank account, received the $5 million capitalization for the formation of a company that I was just describing to you before you stopped me from finishing describing it. After you get the $5 million deposit into Hudson, after, I love how this, after you get this $5 million deposit into Hudson West 3, you get wires into your Wasco account, correct? The get in your sentence is not reflecting what he answered. If you go ahead and answer the question. You received wires to your own PC, uh, Owasco PC account, correct? Yes. Wires came into my Wasco PC account based upon the agreement of the joint venture that I had in capitalization of Hudson West 3. Hudson West 3 was the entity of which I was a member of and was due a certain amount based upon the joint venture agreement in partnership on a monthly basis. And when you get money or receive money into your Wasco PC account that originated from the Northern International Capital, that $5 million goes into Hudson West 3. Did you ever send money to, wire money to, Lion Hall Group? Yes. My uncle was a consultant to a Wasco PC on the project that it was related to, in particular Hudson West 3. Just so the record's clear, the Lion Hall Group is associated with your uncle, James Biden. Is Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Is it also associated with Sarah Biden? Is that right? I don't know the inner workings of, Iron, uh, of Lion Hall, but I do know it's related to my uncle. Are you aware that the money, some of the money, that you transferred from Wasco PC to the Lion Hall Group did eventually get, make its way over to your father's account? This is the most ridiculous thing I mean so far. Are you saying to me, do I understand the fungibility of dollars? Do I understand that there is a, I mean, what is it? Post hoc ergo propter hoc is it's all based upon a fallacy. I mean, guys, I know this. It is what I was due money for my partnership agreement as it related to my cap the capitalization of an organization that I was working for on behalf of that was a Delaware LLC fully transparently to build an LNG terminal in Monkey Island in Louisiana that I believe the estimates were. Guys, did I tell you about this shit? Please. Did I not? What? Haven't I been for fucking months? I, I, you could more than likely you could put together, but for a couple of details, the entirety of this testimony from shit that I was able to garner just from the testimony of other people and the records available online that they're referring to for fuck's sake. Like, all right, I, I like, that's why I've been so frustrated with this bullshit from day one. Yeah. Monkey Island, by the way, I, I just fucking love that. That's the name of my next punk band. <clears throat> Monkey Island. Oh, God. Monkey Island. LNG. We got more gas than Comer's fathead. All right. Anyways. So let me. And, and again, I love his response to this. This is the problem that they're going to have when people read into this, where they're like, 
oh, he kind of knows how business works. Because this whole thing has been like, he's a crack addict that doesn't know shit. This guy was a, was a maintenance addict. And all the while he was a maintenance addict, he was managing a lot of shit. All right. <clears throat> a, a post hoc ergo propter uh, hoc. I love that. It's all based on a fallacy. I mean, guys, I know this. It is, it is that I was due money from a partnership agreement as it related to the capitalization of an organization which I was working for and on behalf of that was a Delaware LLC fully transparently, to build an LNG terminal in Monkey Island, Louisiana, that I believe, the estimates were, could create 17,000 permanent jobs in Louisiana. That's what I was working towards. And the person I was working with towards that end were my partners in Hudson West 3 and my uncle, who I was paying as a consultant to that. I just want to, you didn't answer the question. Were you aware that that money, no, how could I possibly made it to your father? I don't believe you could possibly say that as being true. I totally disagree with your statement. You're saying that because I paid my uncle from a Delaware corporation that was fully transparent as to the purpose of that corporation that had a business partner that happened to be from China. And then that money moved over to my Owasco PC account, which didn't just have that money, but had other money in it. If you're acting as if it had Burisma money, right? You're acting as if, Jesus Christ. If you're acting as if like there's a dollar here that somehow is traced all the way down to here to repay a loan that you guys say my father made to him. All I know is this. My father was never involved in any of my business ever. Never received a cent from anybody and never benefited in any way. Never took any actions on my behalf in any way. And I can absolutely 100% state that that's not just the case, but in every family member's case. I want to go back to another question that I was asking before regarding your father meeting with Yi. Was your father at the Four Seasons lunch with Yi Jin Ming and Associates in late February, March 2017? You mean other than him saying he doesn't recall that lunch? Yeah, the... <laughs> But does he know it through another source? No, I do not know it through another source. I only know what you're saying to me. And what I will say is this, is that I, I do not contest or would question if Rob walk, Rob has a memory. I don't have a memory of a date on that. All I know is this, my father, uh, if my father ever met anyone that was related to a business meeting, not just Mr. Yee, anybody, my dad has been a United States Senator since I was two years old. My whole life has been this. It is impossible. It's impossible to say if you're close family and you're around people that you're at, you end up meeting. Your children would end up meeting people that you're doing business with. Your children would end up meeting people that you're in Congress with. You would be at a dinner. You'd be in DC together. You would walk into, it sounds like something you would remember. Can you let me finish? Are you going to let him finish the question? Because it's important. And I promise you, I'm not trying to obfuscate. You can even stop the clock if you want. I'm telling you is that there is no, none, zero. There's no connection whatsoever between my father and my business, period. This seems like, oh, Oh. oh, somebody said seems like we can restart the a very important meeting with Yi Jin Ming and your father. It seems like something that you would remember here, sitting here today. It would be a big meeting. Yi Jin Ming travels with a big crowd, correct? He was has an interpreter, right? Why are you putting facts in the record of your question? Uh, yes, he travels with a big entourage. He has a, I don't know. Where is that? I'm trying to refresh his recollection. We're over an hour at this point. You're correct, sir. Okay, thank you. Witness. Okay, thank you, guys. Off the record. All right, we can go back on the record. <clears throat> now, I think uh, this is the part where Democrats kick in. And so it's obviously going to have a different tenor before they go back to this. And I'm, I, I'm, you know, normally I would go to six uh, o'clock. This is, a, I'm, I got to say, I'm almost in perfect time with this. Uh, as far as how much they read it, right? Uh, I jumped ahead a little because obviously they do this reread of stuff. But here we go. Um, I just want to go over a few things my Republican colleagues brought up in their round so that the record is clear about what your testimony is and what the testimony of previous witnesses before this, uh, this committee has been. And so I want to start, if you'll let me, with Exhibit 4, which my Republican colleagues introduced. Uh, Mr. Lowe, could you identify which that was because I haven't marked? Yeah, never mind, I have it. Thank you. Never mind, I have it. Go ahead. This was two pages produced by Morgan Stanley for an account in the name of Rosemont Seneca Thornton, LLC, care of Devin Archer. And I think you testified, Mr. Biden, that you were not on this account. This was Devin Archer's account. Yes. And in response to that, my Republican colleague introduced Exhibit 5, which is another document from Morgan Stanley, trying to suggest that somehow you were involved with this account because the document shows Rosemont Seneca partners on the document. Do you recall that? Yes. To be clear, your testimony is you were not a signatory. You did not have access to this account in the name of Rosemont Seneca Thornton LLC. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. I would like to introduce Exhibit 10. Uh, this is an actual account application and client agreement, which was also provided to the uh, committee by Morgan Stanley for the same account. I think you could see the numbers are the same. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. 
And I want you to turn to the last page of it, signatories on the account. Can you read me the names of the signatories on this account? Devin Archer. That's it? That's it. Does it say Hunter Biden anywhere? No, it does not. So this is this account that was also produced by the committee, uh, committee by, uh, to the committee by Morgan Stanley, but which my Republican colleagues did not introduce, show that this account, as you testified, was Devin Archer's account and not your account. Yes, that's correct. Next, I fucking love this. Oh, God. Yes, that's correct. Next, we discussed, you discussed with my Republican colleagues, the, the entity Rosemont Seneca Bohai. Do you? Yes. Remember that? And I believe you testified that you had no position with Rosemont Seneca Bohai. That was Devin Archer's entity. Yes. And my Republican colleagues suggested that Devin Archer had testified otherwise. Do you remember that? I do. As Exhibit 8, they provided some pages from Devin Archer's transcribed interview uh, transcript, but they did not include page 67 of the transcript. If they had, you would have been able to see the following question propounded by my Republican colleagues during Devin Archer's transcribed interview. So you're saying there's no, he had no, he being Hunter Biden, had no position with RSB, Rosemont Seneca Bohai. And Devin Archer's response, right. So it seems to me that Devin Archer's testimony and your testimony are the same. You had no position with Rosemont Seneca Bohai. Is that correct? That is correct. And then we discuss with my Republican colleagues, Exhibit, exhibit 7, the Rosemont Seneca Bohai account which has some pages from Morgan Stanley, again, referring to transactions in the bank account, Rosemont Seneca Bohai, LLC, care of Devin Archer. And I think your testimony was that you were not a signatory on this account. This was not your account. This was Devin Archer's account. Is that fair? That is correct. Okay. And again, this was covered in Devin Archer's transcribed interview. Page 16 is not included in the packet that my Republican colleagues introduced as Exhibit 8, but if they had, they would show the following exchange. Question. If we look at the top of the page and kind of in the header here, it was... It has Rosemont Seneca Bohai LLC, care of Devin Archer. Uh-huh. Question. Hunter Biden was not on this account, correct? Answer. He was not. He was not on. No, he was not on that, the account. So Devin Archer and his testimony and your testimony is the same, that you were not on this account. That's correct. I just want to be clear so the record can accurately reflect the documents in the committee's possession and what they show, including bank records and the testimony that this committee has received and what it says and does not say. And so the record is abundantly clear. All these entities that have, we've just talked about, Rosemont Seneca Bohai, Rosemont Seneca Thornton, your father had no involvement in any of those entities. Answer, that is correct. My father had no inv involvement in any of those entities. And those entities were not under my control in any way. And your father didn't receive any money from those entities? No. Your father certainly never took any official actions on behalf of those entities? Absolutely not. Mr. Biden, just a handful of additional questions, the first one along those lines. In the prior, can we stop for a second? Sure. The deposition rules state that there's only one allowed one question or one staff question or per round. So I understand this is a joint deposition, right, of the Committee of Oversight Committee and Judiciary, which they have their own individual rules, right. And so it was our understanding that the oversight rules state one questioner. So the Oversight Committee has one questioner and the Judiciary rule states one questioner. And so that's what we prepared for. Had you alerted us ahead of time, well, it's the deposition, uh, deposition regulation, which contemplates joint, you didn't, joint investigative well, can you, can you just show us the part in the regulation that specifies that? Sure. Because my understanding was that of like also. Yeah, it's at the end of the day, may I ask, does it really matter? Well, I don't know if we've actually followed these regulations in the prior deposition. No, we just do our best to follow the rules. So their problem is, is that Democrats come in and each one of them has handled a specific issue. Instead of all of their eggs being in one dumbass basket like the Republicans. Yeah. So fuck off. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, okay. We also, I'll put on the record that we concern that there's been content discussed by members of, to reporters, content of the disposition, and that's a violation of the rules. Sorry, how is that relevant to the discussion about who can ask questions? Well, we just want, can we return to that? To alert all members like what the rules are and we're going to break the rules and the Republicans might want to break them too. Mr. Raskin, do you want to show us the language you're referring to? Yes, thank you. Abby, do you, uh, do you care if they ask some questions? I, he asked the lawyer. I do not. Hold on. We don't care whether or not one, two, or six people ask questions as long as it uh, forwards the purpose of this deposition. Whose rules are they? It's a house rule. Say it again. <laughs> the reporter. Excuse me. Can we just uh, go one at a time, please? Thank you. I feel the reporter in this situation. I, whoever the, re the, the stenographer, the reporter in this, uh, you're doing uh, the Lord's work. And you're, you're carrying a huge burden. 
Um, Mr. Raskin, asshole, with your permission, can we proceed as we understood it? Yeah, it's them, it's item, it's, it's item, it's item five under regulations of the use of de deposition authority. A deposition shall be conducted by any member of committee council designated by the chair, a ranking minority member of the uh, committee that noticed the deposition. When depositions are conducted by committee council, there shall be no more than two committee council permitted to question a witness per round. That would be one. That seems to be actually, just let me finish here. One of the committee council shall, one shall be des designated by the chair and the other designated by a ranking member. Certainly. And so therefore there are two ranking members and there's also two deposition notices that went out. Right. And so notice uh, they go back. This is a big chunk of this. Why they don't go off the clock on this is beyond me. So uh, one is noticed by uh, Chairman Comer. One was noticed by Chairman Jordan. So they basically, they signed, they each had different rules. So they signed off on different rules for whatever, like, because they're fucking idiots. Hunter Biden for president. Change my, seriously. Uh, you want to just, okay. Yeah. If you get, let, uh, <laughs> If you let it go this time, we can discuss it in the future if you guys have a problem. Well, that's the plan. Then, you know, we could use two staffers. And we have no problem with that at all. We understand that it is both judiciary and oversight. Well, okay, okay. Well, honestly, all right. I'm not going to go back and forth. Goldman, if you're releasing the transcript, then we don't need to go talk. Yeah, all right. Then I would suggest resuming now into the, okay. And I don't think accepting it. Like, they didn't block this out. Restarting the clock. There we go. And this will be brief, Mr. Biden. Um, in the first hour of questioning... You were asked some questions about Kenneth Rakashev. Do you remember the questions? Yes. To be abundantly clear, your father had nothing to do with any business engagements you might have had with Mr. Rakashev, correct? None whatsoever. And your father certainly never received any benefit from any business engagements you might have had with Mr. Rakashev, correct? None. Okay. In the prior hour, you were also asked about a supposed diamond you were given in Miami. Do you, Miami, do you recall these questions? Yes. And you stated, started to explain, and I don't know that you got through your explanation, there was a cultural aspect of the exchange of gifts in that scenario. Yes. Can you explain what you mean? Well, if anyone's been to China in particular and other parts of Asia, it's commonplace to exchange gifts at the beginning of any relationship and introduction. And we brought, I was told, a very expensive large bottle of vintage something or other. And at the end of the meeting, Mr. Yi then presented me with an envelope that contained the diamond we're talking about. Okay. And you said you gave the diamond to your Uncle Jim. Yes. And you're aware that your Uncle Jim had that. You're calling it a diamond. I'm actually not sure if it was a diamond that he had uh, the stone appraised. I'm only, I was not aware necessarily at the time how he went about doing that, but he told me that it was not worth much. Okay. Or worth anything. Sorry. I'm going to channel ranking member Nadler. Could we all, and that means like speak up. Sorry, I apologize. Yeah. If we just speak up a little bit, it's hard to hear. No, I include in counsel. I ultimately came to learn that it was not of any real value, uh, whatever that means. Also, by the way, I would like to say that I would be fantastic in any of these committee hearings because there is no way people cannot hear my voice in any room where I am speaking. Even if I'm trying to be quiet, which I'm usually not. So I would gladly volunteer for any part of this, I would love to be the rereader in these situations. If they, uh, did somebody read that back? Loud guy in the back with the long hair. You got it. All right. Glad to do it. Um, I'll represent you or whether you're, um, or you're aware that your uncle testified before the committee last week. I'm aware of that. And I represent that he had had an appraise and said he told the committee it was virtually worthless. Okay. And so it's actually probably not even a real diamond, right? If it, uh, if it was, it was probably just a stone of some kind. Is it fair to say? I assume. I didn't have any knowledge of the appraiser who could speak to that. But yes, it seemed to be the case. I trust my uncle's word on that. And your uncle represented the committee that he actually threw it away because it had no value? Okay, yeah. And in contrast to that, you said, uh, I think you said the first hour, it was a vintage bottle of 1967 bottle of Macallan Scotch. Does that sound right? I do. And I don't remember the year or date, but I'm not, well, I have to be careful. I'm a drinker. I was not, not any longer, but when I did drink, I did not drink scotch. So I don't know. I, it was purported to me a very expensive bottle of, I was shocked how much they said. Can't even remember exactly. Maybe upwards of 20,000. Yes. I think tens of thousands of dollars. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. In some comments to the press, there has been comments that there was more than one diamond or more than one stone you received from the Chinese company. Did you receive more than this one? I don't recall exactly any other gifts, but I don't want to, you know, I'm sorry, to be clear, you mean in the envelope that was given that there was one stone? No. Uh, or in that one? No. In general. Yeah. Okay. Did you have anything? Mr. Biden, you state there's a diamond in the rough here. <laughs> Raskin, well done. I hear what you're saying. There's a diamond in the rough. I get where you went. Nicely done. I I did not involve my father in my business. And you want to state that that was as true as a lawyer in any of your investments, your transactions, not as a corporate uh, board member, not as an artist, never. Will you give us uh, the rationale behind that? Was your father trying to be involved in your business and your legal practice? And so, and you had to keep him out or was it just the assumption both of you had? Yes. I think it's number one, 
just a natural family relationship. I was a professional adult and I had my business and my dad had his business. But there was one thing that was I was fully aware of my entire life is that my dad was an official of the, US, the United States government. And there were very bright lines that I abided to and was very cognizant of. And I had made certain that I never engaged my, with my father and asked him to do anything on my behalf or on behalf of any client of mine. Now that's under oath testimony. And if you're going to talk about like compare this to like awareness of guilt in Trump's testimony in places, uh, that's a, there's a, that is a stark fucking contrast for you. Mr. Raskin, you've been very honest about your struggle with addiction. It's been made public perhaps more so than any person I can remember in our time. And well, uh, Amy Winehouse and at large, you know, why are the name Republicans names redacted? They're not. Um, the, the names that are redacted of the questioner are the staffers for the Republican Party or their counsel that is uh, asking the questions because they're not necessarily elected officials. But where it's the, like, Raskin asks something, he they have stated for the record they are present at the meeting. That when, when, they're, when it's blacked out, it's either a lawyer or a, a staffer for the Republican side. That's asking, I hope that helps. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, you've been very, okay. And we have heard from at least one or two other witnesses that they feel as if some of the political focus on you is an attempt to drive you into relapse. I want you to know, uh, I want to know how you respond to that, whether you know you agree with the people who are saying that, and I hope this process will be conducted at least from here on in in a way that is respectful and dignified. But in any event, I hope that is not a process that has driven you outside of your recovery. Witness, yeah, I appreciate that. And I appreciate the question. It is, it has not. I'm more determined than I've ever been in my life that the number one most important thing I can do, not only for myself, but for my family and for those I love and support me, is to maintain my sobriety. And I don't know. I think one of the things I have not been able to fully comprehend, I'm speaking to everyone at the table here, is at least the understanding of that. At least the understanding of the fact that I am certain every single person in this room has had someone in their life they love, if not themselves, if not personally themselves, that have been the victims of a disease of addiction. And I don't consider myself a victim, but I do know this, is that it's real and it rips apart families. It rips, rips apart communities. It is something that I am, I know for me, I, if, I, if I have a purpose in my life now, that, I, that purpose in life is to be an example for other people that know that uh, have it a hell of a lot harder than I do, even in these circumstances. It's one thing to have to come and face all of you, and that's intimidating. And I can tell you it fills me with anxiety on a daily basis. But I know this. There are people out there that don't have families that love and support them anymore. There are people out there that don't, from the outside, look like they have any hope at all. And all I can say is, is that the one thing that I would hope that you would respect is that struggle. If not for me, at least for the people that are your constituents that are facing the same thing. And I'm not being saccharine, I'm not being disingenuous, and I promise you I'm not in any way saying uh, this other than for this. Everyone, everyone has dealt with this in one way or another. And I have to make my amends. I've made my mistakes and I screwed up. I know that. The world knows that now. The world knows that, that a thousand times over now. But I do know this, is that at least when you talk about it, Give me that benefit. Give your constituents that benefit. Give the people of America that benefit. Over 35 million Americans right now are suffering from addiction, and it's a disease that takes lives every day. And you know it, you watch it, and they are not evil. They are not bad people. It doesn't stop them from being, uh, being bad or evil, and they have to pay for what they've done. If they've done something in addiction that they should have not done, that's, uh, you know, that's my responsibility. But I can tell you that. The only involvement my father, uh, of my father in anything in my life has been as my father, not as a business partner, partner, not as a benefit of my business, not anything. I would just hope that you would respect that uh, what everyone is going through and realize it's not just about me when you speak about the things I faced as it relates to and some of those behaviors in my darkest days. Mr. Reston, thank you, Mr. Biden. No further questions. We can go off the record. Thank you. Um, back on the record. Um, now, I think they go back to um, the Republicans at this point because the, um, the Democrats jump in. I, I, it's kind of a bounce back and forth in this time that they, they let them uh, speak for a little bit and then uh, come back in. Okay. We pulled apart the exhibit, the deposition transcript of a transcript interview of Rob Walker that we were discussing at the end of the first majority hour recording. I'll refer to you line 15. Mr. Jordan asked Mr. Walker and describe for us again, we got into this right at the tail end of our first hours. Describe who was all there. And this is the luncheon at the Four Seasons involving some of the CEFC officials. Mr. Lowell, can you date that for the record? Which is this? Which lunch? And which 2000 when? 17. Fucking 17. Okay. 
We believe it was in February or March of 2017. And Mr. Biden, you had asked uh, someone the, revel the relevance. And Mr. Lowell, no, I asked the question. And he did too. I think he did as well. Some of the testimony we received and some of the documents indicate that CEFC business deals were in fact going on during the year of 2016. And so to the extent your father, former vice president, stopped by a luncheon in early 2017, you know, we're simply just, you know, asking the question whether there was something that was planned. I'm trying to refresh your recollection at about the luncheon you were, uh, uh, which by the way, I love this idea. So the plan was that he would get involved after he was no longer in office. So we can set up a meeting with you and, and Joe Biden, but not as long as he is vice president of the United States or in any capacity a, a representative of the U.S. government. Once he's a private citizen, maybe we can meet. That's the accusation right here. Seriously, that's the accusation. That they had planned this meeting, this 2017 meeting. They had planned this in 2016 by saying, yeah, he can't meet you until he's out of office. That's the most, like, for fuck sake. Yeah. Also, for the record, who was president in 2017, you fucking tool? All right. Now, uh, let's see. Mr. Biden, you asked the relevance, and Mr. Law asked, I think he did as well. And some of the testimony received, blah, 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 blah. as to, uh, and so, to the extent your father, former vice president, stopped by a luncheon in early 2017, you know, we're simply asking, wait a minute. Uh, I'm refreshing your recollection about a luncheon where your dad stopped by. Allegedly. Yeah. Number one, as I said before, I do not recall. I do not recall this, but I don't question Mr. Walker's memory of it. However, if he did stop by, it was in 2017 when he was out of office and correct. I understand what your question is. Well, I guess I just don't understand your question. What's the, well, I'm presenting you the transcript to see if it re refreshes your recollection at all. Just want to talk a little bit more, a little bit more. Sure. Because I think we started just a minute left on the clock in the first hour. Yes, I do not recall him specifically being there. However, again, I don't question Rob's memory of it if he says it occurred. If it occurred, it occurred in, I think he says here, it occurred when it was in early 2017 sometime. I know that the first time that I ever met Chairman Yee was in February of 2017. So if this did occur, it it, uh, it had to have happened after that. Okay. Do you recall any conversation with the CFC officials about your dad? No. Okay. So it was never part of the plan that your dad would stop at the lunch or be part of the business at all? No. How many, do you remember uh, any luncheons at the Four Seasons that involved Chairman Yee and the CFC officials? I do not. Okay. So to the best of your recollection, you can't remember ever being at the Four Seasons with CEFC officials. Again, I don't even know, are they, what Four Seasons are we talking about, first of all? The one in Washington, D.C. Oh, in Washington, D.C., yeah. No, I mean, I, I know that I've had lunch at the Four Seasons a number of times. I don't ever remember having lunch with the with Chairman, with Mr. Yee at the Four Seasons in which my father stopped by. But again, I'm telling you, I don't contest Rob's memory of it. If Rob is certain of that, then it most likely happened. Okay, we talked about Cafe Milano. I think two dinners at Cafe Milano. One was in early February, as I understand, and one was later in the spring of what year? 2014. The second was in 2015. So one was in 2014. The second was in spring of 2015. You remember your dad being involved in Cafe Milano dinners? No. Again, I had many dinners at Cafe Milano. Many of them were social. Many of them were with family. Many of them were a combination of social, family, and business. So it would not be rare for my dad to call me and say, what are you doing? Because between the White House and the Vice President's res residence, literally, Cafe Milano is kind of e equidistant. It's from the back gate. There's a back gate, uh-huh, to the VP's residence. And if my mom wasn't there, if my mom was home in Delaware, he would, you know, stop and have a bowl of spaghetti with me or whoever I was sitting with. Okay. How often did your dad do that? Like, how many times do you remember that happening? I can't, uh, I can't count the number of times my dad stopped to have dinner with me and my family. I he would stop over at my house and have dinner with me and my children. No, uh, but when you were conducting business, well, I wasn't conducting business when I had those meetings necessarily. I was number one. I had a dinner for the US UN World Food Program. Uh huh. Didn't have anything to do with business. Each person around that table, individually and collectively, had the opportunity and the ability to actually do something in support of the U.S., or excuse me, the U.N. World Food Program, and we made a presentation at that one dinner that I'm talking about. I think another dinner you're talking about was actually my actual birthday, and my dad stopped by because it was my actual birthday. Do you remember anything specific from February 4th? You testified this morning at the World Food Program Cafe Milano dinner. What do you remember about the birthday dinner in February? Well, here's what I remember, and to be very clear, is that it was my birthday, and the reason my dad stopped by was because it was my birthday. That's it. Do you remember who was there? I don't remember exactly who was there because it's sometimes conflated by both you guys and sometimes myself. I'm not, okay, I'm not saying who was at, I, you know, what individuals were at each meeting. I've not seen a guest list of both of them as we've talked about a specific guest list. Uh-huh. But I know you were, uh, that there were associates and people that were in town. I know that Devin was 
uh, at both of them? Okay, yeah. Uh, do you think some of your business associates that we've spoken about, Mr. Archer, Mr. Bobolinsky, Mr. Galanis, do you think they had an expectation that your dad had any role or involvement in any of your joint business dealings? Not an expectation from me. And I think you've seen in my communications to them that there was never a single time I can remember which I said, hey, we'll get my dad involved. Hey, let's get my dad on the phone. Okay, you know, let's, you know, what can we get from my dad out of this? Uh-huh. Is that, I'm absolutely certain is that anytime I'm talking about my family in any of those communications, it's to make certain that people know that it's my family, it's not theirs. It's not their name to screw up. It's mine. And so I'm uh, certain that if any of their any of their expectations would not be derived from me. Uh-huh. I mean, you said yourself, I believe, in to ABC that the reason you were picked for the Burisma War was because you're a Biden. I didn't say that. I didn't. I, I Again, I said, just to be clear, if you'd like to read the actual quote, what I think I said, and I will paraphrase, is that my entire life, it's a commonplace name. It is my dad. I live in a state that has 900,000 people. You know, when I got pulled over when I was a kid for speeding, people would go, hey, your dad's going to kick your ass and laugh about it. That's what would happen. And so for me, I've always been the last name Biden. That's been something that's been both credible, uh, both an incredible, number one, uh-huh, more than anything, an incredible honor. And it's been also an incredible responsibility. And as I've said before, I screwed up when I was, when I had an addiction, when I was in the darkest days of my life and I lost my brother and ended up in a divorce and everything fell apart. But one thing that I'm absolutely aware of is that cognizant of the fact that when people engage with me is that they... Are they engaging with me because of my skills? Like, for instance, you guys have gone out and said I have no credibility. No, there's no way that I should have been serving on the board of Burisma. I just read you my resume. I put my resume up against any one of you in terms of responsibility. I don't know anybody that was at that time that was teaching the number one rated course at Georgetown School of Foreign Service and the master's program in terms of foreign policy and advocacy. I literally was on 17, like 12 different boards. I only listed like 10 of them. So I had enormous uh, amount of reasons to be on it. So when I say I'm always rec uh, rec uh, I'm always cognizant of the fact that there is in many instances, uh, someone may have a, an ulterior motive, and it's my job to be able to balance that and create boundaries. Uh huh. Mr. Archer testified about the brand, the Biden brand, and that was, you know, an asset for your joint business activities. That, yes, and you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing I think about the brand. The brand is, is my dad, with the support of my family in particular, my mom, my Aunt Valerie, who's run every one of his campaign, my grandparents, everyone, it's their legacy. Primarily, the name Biden is my dad's legacy, and he passes it down to me. And my brother was alive, and when my brother was alive, my brother, my sister, now to my children, it's our responsibility not to screw that up. It's to live to what I think is the person that I hold in the highest regard of any human I've ever met in my life is my dad. And to that end, is that whenever I, I don't remember any time I talk about it as a brand, but that's my view of the brand. If other people say the brand was something that they could market, it's not. It was not with my without going through me first. And if they did so, they didn't go through me first. Is it fair to say, though, that Burisma wanted to, you on their board because your dad was vice president? No, I don't think that's fair. Again, I really don't. I really don't think that's fair to say that, for that to be the entire sentence. I could say to this, I, I could say to you this, I know why President uh, Kwasniewski of Poland wanted me to be on the board. He was the one who convinced me, ultimately, to be on the board. He's one of the first democratically elected presidents of Poland. Now, this is backstory that I think a lot of us haven't been privy to until this is sort of new information. This is uh, this part of it. Um, he called me up and he told me this. He said, if people in the West do not stand up against Vladimir Putin and Vladimir Putin's aggression and they follow for, uh, they allow for companies like Burisma, whatever you think about Burisma, it was a bulwark against Russian aggression in a moment in time when the single purpose of Vladimir Putin in his taking Crimea and his incursion into Donetsk and the Donbass was to take over the natural gas fields, was to take over the energy supply. And that still remains the single biggest goal. Again, what I say, what I say, what I say, fucking NATO bullshit Catherine the Great bullshit. Once the the natural gas fields had been discovered off the off of Odessa and Crimea, that's when Putin wanted to move in. Instead of pumping it up in the fucking icy fields up near you know the fucking Arctic Circle, they could just get it out of the ground in Crimea and send it right out through the Black Sea. Mm. What I say. You own the Crimean Peninsula, you own 275 miles plus outside of it into the water, and that's where the gas fields they discovered were. And that's when he went in. <sighs> Man, I'm tired of being right. All right. All right, so I, I'm just, am I, come on. All right. <clears throat> it's just so, I just want, you know why I'm proud? I'm not bragging just to brag. It's because I'm not wasting your fucking time. I'm not wasting your time. This is, 
What have I, what I, all right. Uh, that, that would be the biggest insult in my mind is wasting somebody's time. So, um, and not to say that I haven't been guilty of it in my life and I won't be again, but it's something that weighs on me. Here we go. All right. It was a bulwark against this, but the industry. And that still remains the biggest goal. Ukraine is not necessarily for the people. It's for their natural resources. It's for a pipeline to the West and it's to be able to choke off Europe. That's what it's for. And there, were, and there were two gas companies inside of Ukraine at the time. One of them was state-owned, which was highly corrupt and connected to people like Furtash, which was directly going into Vladimir Putin's pocket. The only independent company was Burisma. And Burisma was supplying 60% of all natural gas to power the entire industry in Ukraine, including 78% of the steel mills. And so they needed to survive. And President Kowalski said to me, if that is, ends up being the result, if it shows me that uh, President Kwasniewski uh, who is literally the symbol of democracy in Eastern Europe. And you, Hunter Biden, whose name is also a symbol of freedom and democracy and standing for Ukraine's desire for democratic state against Vladimir Putin, then I was comfortable with that. I was comfortable with that. Who was Alex, uh, Alex Kol, uh, Kodlarski? Alex Kodlarski was an associate of Devon's. They worked together. He had a separate company in which he intro uh, introduced Devon. I believe he introduced Devon to Burisma originally. And what was his role in getting you a, a board seat on Burisma? That he introduced me to Dev, uh, he introduced Devin to the CEO of Burisma. Okay. And as I understand it, you had to pay a finder's fee to Mr. Kutlarski. Yes. And what was that finder's fee? I don't remember the exact figure, but if you have a document, I don't know if it was a third or something like that. Okay. Do you remember your annual salary, salary with Burisma? I think it worked out to be about 65000 per month over five years. Okay. Do you know if your salary changed when your father was no longer vice president? My salary changed when all the board members' salaries were renegotiated. Devin was taken off the board because of an issue that he had legally, and then they renegotiated all the salaries of the board members. And do you know what time frame that was? I don't know exactly when that was, but it was sometime in after Devin's indictment, soon after Devin's indictment. So you remember what year it was? 2017, I believe. Okay, so that was, I think he was indicted in late 2016. Yeah, into 2017. And that, and what can you tell us about Vadim Pizarski? Vadim Pizarski was an employee at Burisma. He was, I think, officially kind of secretary to the board. Okay. Was he your go-between? Was he the person you interface with? Yeah. Vadim spoke English. Mikola and most of the other people and managers did not speak English. All the board members spoke English, every single one of them. We conducted board meetings in English, and it was translated into Russian or Ukrainian for the purposes of Mikola or some of the managers. Most of the people are the engineers who work for Burisma were also all Americans who actually did the drilling and had the prospects for drilling. So their lawyer, their accountant, everybody spoke English. What types of services did you provide to the board? I mean, you were making a million a year in Burisma. What were you doing for that million? Well, um, I don't think it worked out to actually be that. But what I was doing was I was head of corporate governance, corporate governance. And my responsibilities were like any other board member, to attend board meetings, be aware of what the management was doing to try to strive for, you know, accountability, transparency, openness in terms of reporting, to go through the financials, make sure that the financials were certified by a CPA. The whole idea was that it was a private company that was operating in Ukraine for a very long period of time in part of the world, which doesn't have the same high standards the West does. And that was my goal in trying to provide a more Western looking and acting company. How many hours a month did you spend on Burisma work? I don't know, or your work. I didn't keep hours, but we kept a good deal of time. Was it, was it a full-time job? I don't think it was. No, it was not a full-time job. It was a board member seat like anybody a board member sits. I don't think anybody who takes a board member seat takes treat, it takes it like a full-time job. It wasn't employment. It was a board position. Okay. But it wasn't full-time salary. I mean, a million bucks a year is a, uh, oh yeah, pretty good gig. Like I didn't have any, I'm absolutely certain that it was a lot of money. And I don't think though that it stands out necessarily from anybody that's working on a board of a Fortune 500 company that is similar in size here in the United States. It receives a board fee along with stock options. I think actually the truth of the matter is, it's right in line with that. Were you aware at the time your father had a specific role involving Ukraine policy as vice president? I was aware, number one, that it, it, is that is that my father had a specific, a very unique role as vice president of the United States, unlike any other vice president, except for probably Vice President Cheney. He did not take a specific set of issues and stick uh, to those specific set of issues. One of the, he writes about it and has spoken about it in terms of relationship with President Obama, is that he would not be served simply to, for example, uh, be the ambassador as it relates to a climate or uh, to another, to one country. And so one of the roles my dad had, I'm absolutely certain, was dealt with Russian aggression, which obviously pr uh, proves Ukraine. There was some testimony back in 2019, George Kent, a State Department official, yes, testified that there was some concerns about your involvement with the Burisma board may have presented a conflict for vice president. Wait, I'm sorry. Mr. Kent said that to Mr. Biden. Mr. Kent testified. That's not what I'm asking. You're saying that at some point, Mr. Kent made a statement that he, Mr. Kent, felt something. And your testimony, your question is, did he ever convey that to Mr. Biden? Well, that's what I'm ready to ask. Okay, please. Mr. Kent testified 
that he had some concern and other State Department officials had some concerns that perhaps your board membership with Burisma presented a conflict. And they wrestled with how do we how do we raise this with the vice president's office? And ultimately, I believe they sent some emails and Amos Hochstein uh, had a one on one conversation with your dad about this. And so my question for you is, what was your thinking about that question and about the ethics question? I appreciate the question, but just I don't agree necessarily with the way you presented it. I appreciate your question. I don't necessarily agree with the way you present the question is that I don't know, for instance, if Mr. Kent said they expressed that there was a conflict or whether he expressed that there that the appearance of a conflict could take place. I think that's the important distinction. Are you guys still there? I feel like I'm reading this just for my own sake. Are you chat room? You OK? I, I feel like because this is a lot and I find it very fascinating and it's it's pretty fucking great. Um, and it's explaining a lot. Yeah. It's a lot to take in. Yeah. Cool. You good? All right. Cause normally we do clips, but there's, there's no clip of this cause they didn't videotape it. Excellent. Hi. Thanks. So hit the like if you would and share it out and stuff, because I don't know anywhere else that's doing this. You might see snippets, but, um, uh, I'm locking in. Um, I might have to write it out and do the whole fucking thing. And if you have to go, I understand. <laughs> Okay. Uh, let's see. If Mr. Ken's appearance to take place, okay. In terms of whether it was ever related to me, it was not uh, or related to me. It was not related to me by anybody in an official capacity. Amos Hochstein and I have been friends since I first met him in 2007, traveling around Iowa. He worked for Senator Dodd at the time, and I was there campaigning. Oops, sorry, I didn't switch back over. Um, on behalf of my dad, I lived in Iowa for seven months in motels, and Amos and I would see each other often in these events where we would either speak on behalf of the candidate or run into each other, and, and he's been a close personal friend. Um, at that time, I saw Amos, and I asked him. I was getting an enormous amount of incoming, I would say, from the media about, you know, my role in Burisma. Um, I'm sorry, he, and by the way, it's not his fault. He mispronounces it. The Burmese executives, so this uh, Burmese, yeah. Burmese, they say, pronounce it Burmese. Uh-huh. Uh, no one says that, by the way, just for the record. No one. No one ever told Trump that. No one. He he mispronounced it and he tried to fix it by laying it off on other people because he's an asshole. <laughs> just for the record. All right. He blames his staff for how he mispronounces things because he's a dickhead. And he and he's a coward. Fuck him. So anyway, OK, where were we? He goes, uh, let's see. I was very transparent about it. You can recall or remember this was not I did not try to hide it. Hide this. I sent out a press release that day, uh, the day that I joined the board. And I thought I was able to, like, withstand it because of what I said about the reasons that I wanted to join the board. And I asked Amos to if he would meet me for coffee. We met at Georgetown, a place that we that I, uh, that I I know he would go to. I would sometimes see him coming out when I was going in. So I met there at a table. And smart of him to not give it out because I would do my show from there next time very soon. All right. Uh, like, you know, like that coffee shop, whatever it is. Um... He goes, uh, so we went there at a table. At the first, uh, the first thing we talked about over the course of the time was my family, my brother, and what had just, Bo had just died a few months earlier, I believe at this time, and we talked about that. And I talked about the stress and strains that we're putting uh, on the entire family because of it. It was not unique for my family. It was devastating. And when I asked Amos, I said, do you have any advice for me about how I should handle what was very public at the time? It was kind of, you know, an open secret. And I knew Amos had an enormous amount of understanding of the area. And Amos said to me, Amos said to me, you know, he said, any, the, that you have to worry about Hunter, as it relates to this, is the ability, you have no understanding of the Russian disinformation, the way they would eventually potentially weaponize this, he said. So you need to be really careful. And that was the extent of it. Do you know if he had any conversation with your father about that? I don't know if he had any conversations with, I know that he testified here. I don't, I haven't seen the testimony. Mr. Levchesky at the time was under investigation from a number of fronts. Isn't that correct? Not at the time that I, as I understand it, when I joined the board. So just to get the timeline right here, it's when I first introduced, I was first introduced to Burisma as an organization. And Mr. Lovchevsky is a leader of that organization. I was introduced by Devin. Devin said that they, you know, had a whole host of issues. And I was at, of course, uh, of counsel at Boaz Schiller Flexner. And I said, well, if they would like to talk to me, they could talk to me because I know there are people with experience at Boaz Schiller and Flexner that could be helpful. And so they became a client of mine initially at Boaz Schiller and Flexner. And in that time, I asked them, because I wanted to do a background and security check on them to make sure certain that they were who they said they were. And they provided me with a, a Kroll report. I don't, I can't speak about what I did for them necessarily, but in that Kroll report and in subsequent report that was commissioned by Burmismia, it did not have any of the allegations as it relates to what eventually happened in the UK and then eventually was dismissed in the UK. And so that, that's the answer I think to your question. Do you recall it 
December 2015 board meeting in Dubai. Now, this is the part which goes back to the whole, like, you made a phone call and you obviously made him, you know, uh, you made your dad change his mind. And then when we've already, I've already shown you guys, he already had his talking points and his, and his orders from the administration and the State Department. And when Biden got over there, he was, that, that, uh, that uh, Shokin had to go, right? For lots of reasons, mostly because he was a tool of Russia. So, okay, do you remember uh, December 2015 board meeting in Dubai? I do. I believe that was the date of the uh, board meeting in Dubai. So, December 4th, 2015, there was a board meeting in Dubai. Do you remember at that board meeting whether Zlovchev, Mr. Zlovchevsky or any of the Burisma officials raised concern about the pressure he was under from some of the investigations? I know that there, I'm certain they talked about pressure in general. The pressure was enormous from all sides. Uh-huh. For Burisma. They were, uh, literally every inch of territory that Putin was encroaching into Ukraine was a potential loss for them and loss for Ukraine in terms of their ability to produce natural gas and run a large portion of factories. And so in terms of those pressures, now there was also obviously, you know, there's geopolitical pressures that were occurring inside Ukraine, which obviously would affect the company and an, an individual like Zlovchevsky. But Mr. Zlovchevsky at the time was under investigation by the prosecutor general in Ukraine, Mr. Shokin. In 2015? No, that's the exact opposite of the truth. And I think you can go to, I don't know, maybe 15,000 public reports and you can talk to the IMF and you can talk to the, you can talk to the World Bank and you can talk to the EU and the EU Commission on Energy and the EU Commission as it related to democracy. And you can talk to the State Department or any State Department official that testified before your committee, Mr. Jordan, or, or when you were uh, impeachment. And when they, and they can say the exact opposite. Mr. Zlovchevsky was not investigating the, many of the oligarchs, including a company like Burisma at the time. He means Shokin. How about Ambassador Payet? What do you think he would have said? Payet actually gave a speech at the time I joined the board in December 2019, criticizing Mr. Shokin for not investigating, in particular, Burisma. But Mr. Payet also gave a speech where he was very critical of Burisma. Do you remember that? That's what I'm saying. He was very critical of, he was critical of Burisma, and he was in context, Shokin was not doing his job. So I guess the most important point I'd like to add, and for and, and once and for all, here is that we can all agree that there is not a single person other than Alexander Smirnov who says Shokin, that Shokin was fired because I was on the board of Burisma. It's literally the exact opposite. And that's been a fact now since it was first claimed. It's a fact. I'm telling you, it's a fact. And I would really like you to either look at, look at every single report that's out there. Look at Mr. President Poroshenko said. President Poroshenko, Victor Shokin is the godfather to his child. President Poroshenko came out against Victor Shokin and said everything he said is a lie. It's the exact opposite. It, exact opposite was true. Godson to his child, he went on national television here in the United States and said everything is a lie. Every single other official inside of Victor Shokin was prosecuted inside of, inside Ukraine because he was found with cash and diamonds and his chief of staff, who he was formerly his driver, were both prosecuted. And so Victor Shokin was the problem and the entire world community was asking for his removal. So Burisma wanted Victor Shokin removed so that, I don't know, I never, I, I never involved me in any of that. I didn't have any discussion whatsoever with Victor Shokin. I was not a, uh, on, my, uh, on my radar at the time. I had no involvement. But the one thing also to make absolutely clear is that I never spoke to my dad about it, never had any discussions with him about it, because the only honest, uh, honest, the only thing that would be of value would be for Victor Shokin to stay in place, not the opposite. Boom! What did I say? Shokin was not going after Burisma, specifically Zlochevsky, who was not the only owner. And he's the guy that fled once Shokin got out. Burisma, again, is a functioning company. Burisma, it's a holding company. It's not even a fucking drilling company. There's a lot of shit going on there. The board is a, it's a holding company of a bunch of different natural gas industries. Jesus Christ, what did I say? What did I say? Uh, so good. The only thing that would be here of value would be Victor Shokin to stay in place, not the opposite. At that December 2015 board meeting, it's been reported that you broke away with Mr. Pizarski to call your dad. No, I didn't know that was reported. Wait, wait, yeah. Can I see that report? It's the Devin Archer transcript. Okay, so it hasn't been reported. You're now stating something Mr. Archer said. Correct. Okay, now, can you report? Uh, I think that's been reported that Mr. Archer got it. Okay. I'm, uh, I was not trying to make an issue between you and Mr. Archer. 
No, no, I don't have. Can I see what Devin said? Yeah, let me ask you. Page 35, 36. Let me ask you before I see it. Did Devin say I stepped away with Mr. Pazarski specifically to call my dad? That's his exact words. I believe that's his testimony. Okay, let's. I think not. Now, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. He, Devin Archer's specific testimony was he didn't know who they called because he wasn't fucking there. And he was under, he was under oath like everybody else. So if he said he went to talk to his dad, he said he was going to call his dad. And he didn't say that. And other people were like, he didn't say that. Then he'd be in deep shit. So he didn't say that. Let's go. Here we go. But we can look at it. <laughs> I think not. We can look at it. Let's read the entire thing. Okay. If you guys can pull page 35, 36. And I can answer you this is that it never happened. Okay. 100% never happened. I never called my dad. I mean, if that's your testimony, then we, yeah, but let's read it though. We don't, I want to read it just to make certain. <laughs> this is, this is whoever's asking the fucking question does not want to get called out for having misstated testimony. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. hit the like come on thanks blue voter for the super chat and thanks everybody for joining don't forget to subscribe and memberships uh or you can gift them and all kinds of stuff all the stuff i forget to do when i'm busy support the show if you feel like it if you can't i have uh, right andrea have i not the whole fucking time also i would like to say for the record that hunter biden is is as a lawyer tight Dude is fucking tight. All right. If you guys can pull... No, uh, no, we don't have to look at it. No, no, we should look at it. We should read it. No, that's not. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You sure you don't want to read it? Because we can read it. It's right here. All right. Um, okay, 100% never happened. Okay, we don't have to... I want to read it just to make sure. Why don't we read into the record the question and answer so that we can have an accurate statement on what he said, please? Of course. I found it if you want me to. Lol. go ahead. Why don't you read it? This is just a fucking elbow. Okay, so it says, uh, question, what did, start at number 15 or number 16, number 14 here on this page, 36. What did Hunter Biden do after he was given that request? This is your question. And Devin says, listen, I did not hear this phone call, but he he called his dad. How do you know that? Because uh, I think Vadim told me. But again, it's unclear. I just know that there was a call that happened there. I was not privy to it. But what did Vadim tell you about the call? Just that, just that we called DC, but he didn't know, you know, and again, it's not like there was a, there was not, oh, we've got all our problems solved kind of revelation. I was, I was not on that side of the equation, kind of working in the lobbying side of the business. And my point is that number one, this is Devin talking about a call that I made to DC and I never would have called, never did uh, my father on behalf of Burisma and Vadim's Bizarre Sketch for anything. It never happened. Okay. Who did you call? I don't have any idea. Uh, I have no idea whether the call took place. I have no recollection of a call. Okay. There was, uh, that was over 10 years ago. From a, you know, in which I called DC. If I called DC, um, most likely I called back to my office. Most likely, most likely I called my my wife. Most likely I called one of my daughters who were in high school. That's who I would call. I wouldn't in any way call, you know, call my dad to get him to do something that is business. You know, there's ob, it's made, you know, clear by evidence. Okay, is it possible you called Secretary Blinken? No, future Secretary Blinken. Absolutely not possible I called Secretary Blinken at that time. Okay, are you familiar with Blue Star Strategies and when they became a consultant for Burisma? Yes, I am. And how did that arrangement become initiated? Karen and Karen uh, Tramitano and Sally Painter were the two principals of Blue Star Strategies. Karen and Sally had a long relationship with Eric Schwerin, and they were they had a consulting group in D.C. Some of the things that, that Burisma, understandably incredibly, needed in terms of service, I was not willing to provide. One of, the things, uh, one of those things were to do any work as it related to visas that they needed. Number one, I don't have that expertise. Number two, I'd never pick up the phone and call anybody for a visa. Number three, the chances of, even if it was the pr vice president's son of the United States, the Department of Homeland Security, is no more going to grant a visa because I asked them or anybody than, you know, fly to the moon. And so there were things that they needed done. And some of those things were outside my scope and work of work I absolutely would not do. And so I asked Eric if they knew of anybody that they could hire, and he suggested Karen and Sally. And I, uh, who I knew socially and tangentially a few times, and I trusted them implicitly. I thought their work was that they were good people and they knew what they were talking about. And so they were hired by Burisma. Yes, they were hired by Burisma. And do you know what their assignment was? I don't know what their assignment was, but it would deal with things that would relate to any communications with government entities, things like that. Were you involved with setting up that arrangement? No. There was one time I believe I passed the number along to as related to the State Department, but there was never any time which I involved myself in any of their communications other than to make a connection that was uh, making sure a connection was made. 
Okay, mark the exhibit. We're up to number 12. This is an email chain that was uh, initially disclosed by IRS on special agents who came to Congress. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. So the chain begins in the second page of the document. Yeah. And Blue Star staffer is passing along to Mr. Archer a revised proposal. Yes. Which gets gets to Mr. Pizarski yourself and, I'm sorry, to be accurate, can we do that again? You said it starts on second page. Person Lindgren said something to Mr. Archer. Oh, correct. Ms. Painter, not Mr. Biden. You said it starts on second page where this person named Lindgren sent something to Mr. Archer. Ms. Painter and not Mr. Biden. Okay. I just want to make clear that you said it starts on the second page. Well, what I'm sort of introducing my questions. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Pajarski responds to Mr. Archer. You're CC'd on the next email in the chain, which is the bottom first page. Mr. Pajarski takes issue at the bar, uh, Blue Star proposal. Pajarski uh, says in the second line, the first thing is the suggested scope of work is largely lacking concrete, tangible results that we set out to achieve in the first place mostly focusing on the process. And it doesn't offer any names of top U.S. officials here in Ukraine or Ukraine officials as key targets for improving Mikola's case and his situation in Ukraine. Flipping over the second page. If, however, this is done deliberately to be on the safe and cautious side, I can understand this rationale. If all parties, in fact, understand the true purpose of the BS uh, engagement and all our efforts, it's okay and we should proceed immediately. Yeah. So my question is, what was your understanding at the time of improving Nikolai's case? By the way, this seems like he's bitching about the fact that Knowing Hunter Biden doesn't mean knowing Joe Biden. Honestly, they seem to be bitching that there isn't influence. Like they're assuming there will be some and there ain't. Okay. Uh, I didn't have any understanding of that. This is this email, just to be clear, is about the contract the Blue Star negotiated with Burisma. That's it. That's what he's talking about. The scope of their work, not my work. It's just simply about Blue Star, which is global consulting group that deals in issues for both foreign and domestic companies we're, uh, we're doing. Understood. But Mr. Pajarski's emailing you and Mr. Archer. No, 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 no. Just to be clear. He's not emailing, emailing me and Mr. Archer. He's emailing, it says, dear colleagues. Uh-huh. It's this, I believe, the entirety of the board that he's probably emailing. If not, I'm CC'd. Most like I'm BCC'd. So the colleagues that would go to is what he's doing uh, is distributing. These documents are the contract that's there. Okay. And I don't respond to it in any way. Okay. Given the understanding that Mr. Pajarski meant by the true purpose of the BS uh, engagement, I have no idea. I would argue the true purpose of the Blue Star engagement, whatever. I have no idea. Okay. Well, again, remember, just remember also that you have a someone that is using probably Google Translate and half the communications they're doing with me. <laughs> but I don't I don't see anything that varies with what I'm looking at it right now. Okay. But do, I do know uh, that it's about Blue Star. It's not about me. It's not about me or any involvement of my father. Mr. Schwerin in response, he suggests, I would tell Vadim that it's definitely done deliberately. Uh-huh. Do you know what he refers to? Again, I don't know. I'm not part of, actually, I'm neither responding to this. I'm neither responding to this, uh uh-huh, nor am I the author of the original one that it's not on, so I can't say for certain what exactly he's talking about, but I assume it's about the scope of work. Yeah, I think that they're talking about. uh, You may not be on the message that Mr. Archer forwards to you. Yeah, I see that, yes. This is a top word. Hunter, you need to deliver that message. I don't respond that I know of. And Mr. Archer says, I've walked this to the finish. So my question is, what, if you know, is the message Mr. uh, Mr. Archer wanted to you to deliver that he they needed to hire blue star strategies and i've walked us to the finish line but need some support to close what was the issue that they needed to hire blue star strategies that's it but why why was it so important because they had issues that i neither my myself or my just myself that i knew i would have no part of their expectation expectation needed to be set clearly they needed a consulting company in order for them to be able to approach anybody in the united states government that was not me or anybody associated with me what was that what was the plan? They, Burisma, needed help approaching officials in the U.S. government? No. I didn't say that it was surely the U.S. government. I don't know. All I know is they had issues. They had issues related to visas. They had issues. They were a global company under attack from Vladimir Putin. So I wanted to make it absolutely clear. A lot of their issues remain in Ukraine and other places in the region of the world. And Sally and Karen were well-suited to be able to deal with those. That was their job. That was their business. That was their 35 years of experience. Okay, so I marked the next exhibit. Hold on. Before we uh, leave this... Mr. Biden, do you recall receiving this message from Mr. Archer? Do I, I see it in front of me. No, I'm saying when you sent, uh, when it was sent to you, do you, as you're now reading it, do you recall having received it at the time? It was nine years ago. Will you answer my question? I'm sorry, Congressman. I'm going to introduce another exhibit that might refresh his recollection. Let me see. Do I remember receiving this particular email on this particular moment in time? I cannot say that I recall the exact moment that I would have received this email, but I do not contest this email was an email to me. So the next exhibit, what number? 13. So it's number 13. It's the same. Uh, Gates kicks in, tries to do this like, you don't remember this email? It was super important about them hiring a consultant that you said, go get somebody else to do that. I'm not doing that. It looks like shit. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, fucking Columbo over here. Um, I have another dumb question, if I may, ma'am. Just, just one more stupid fucking waste of time. Um, so how many calls do you have with your, uh, with Miss Painter or Miss Tramontano? Well, I guess I had one final call with her. I had a call before that. I can't say for certain, but I said, and what I, I stand by, am I being asked whether how many calls that I had? Yes, I don't know how many calls I had with them. I assume I had one final call with them. Okay. It seems like you were following up on Mr. Archer's advice to try and close the deal. Is that fair? I don't know whether the reason was, but I was in favor of Barisma hiring Blue Star Strategies. And in the engagement process before Blue Star Strategies, uh, Blue Star was engaged, do you specifically remember telephone calls with Ms. Traumatano and Ms. Painter? No, I don't. Do you remember any communication with Traumatano or Ms. Painter? Not directly. Barisma? No, I don't. Or did you go through Mr. Schwerin? I don't know whether I would have say I went through Mr. Schwerin. Mr. Schwerin had his own relationship with them, and I trusted him implicitly when he would communicate with them. Speak up. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, tab 14. So, do you know if Blue Star had been specifically working on improving McCullough's case with Ukrainian officials or U.S. officials or any officials? I have no idea. I don't I don't recall in any way exactly what they were working on at this time. Do you remember at that time in 2015, the Ambassador Pyatt had been critical of Burisma? I only remember because it was, I think, reported in major U.S. newspapers. At that time you were on the board, did your Burisma colleagues mention anything to you about your concern about Mr. Ambassador Pyatt's comments? No. <laughs> Not that I recall. This is a two-page document. It's it's an article from the Ukrainian press that a Blue Star staffer forwards to Ms. Traumatano and Ms. Painter. Yep. And that gets forwarded along to Eric Schwerin. The head of the article is the Interior Ministry in Ukraine confirmed that Zlichevsky is no longer wanted. Uh, now that you see this, I'm sorry, is he on this email? He's not. Okay. So this is neither to me, from me, or CC. I'm not on this end in any way. Correct. Okay. Do you recall that, that the Interior Ministry at the time was investigating Zlichevsky? No. I mean, you were on the board, so I knew I was aware of the issues they had, but I was not involved in anything that related to any of the criminal pressure that they were under related to prosecution, either in Ukraine or outside. Okay. Ms. Painter forwards it to Schwerin, like I mentioned, and she indicates we won and in less than a year. And I'm just wondering if you know what she's referring to. No, I do not. And again, I'm not on this email. This email wasn't sent to me. I'm not CC'd on it. I'm not BCC'd on it. I don't have any any look into this email. We are a board member of Burisma. Yes. And you helped broker the Blue Star arrangement. So you think I think it's fair to ask you the question. Well, I would just look at the headline. The Interior Ministry in Ukraine confirmed that Zlochevsky is no longer wanted. I'm thinking the Blue Star strategy is saying that the company that they represent is, you know, got a good headline. Okay. But you don't know what Ms. Painter means by we won in less than a year. I think it's probably, if I read the article, it was attached to it. It says that an advisor to the Minister of Internal Affairs, I can't pronounce the name, so I won't try, confirmed the a former Ministry of Ecology and Natural Resources is no longer wanted. He stated this on channel TV channel 122, uh, 112. And it goes on to say, yes, in fact, today it was implemented. MIA performed in function, but that's the article. And so she's saying, I'm certain that is that I think this goes down. Prosecutor General Yuri Lutsenko told about the disclosure of the gas train which carried blah 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 so i think the good development for internally it, i think it was a good development for internally inside of ukraine in some way for burisma um next exhibit 15 what's the number 50 this is a giant text pack prepared by the irs investigator summarizing in many cases quoting whatsapp message do you have any underlying uh, do you have the underlying message we have this document it's what we have i want to point out for the record that that is all you know that we have uh, great reservation about the accuracy and completeness of what two IRS agents who have decided to go on television try to promote what they believe should happen to Mr. Biden as having a complete record. And when there have been records, they have not been complete. And when they make summaries, they are often quoting from texts or communications which appear to have been altered by those other than themselves. So with all that, you can certainly ask your questions, but I do not accept the premise that you're about to ask him is either an authentic or authenticated or a complete document. By the way, this is how they handle the, the alleged laptop as well. I know I'm over time by about 15 minutes. I, can you guys dig for a little bit longer? I won't do the whole thing because it's, it, it's you know, uh, yeah. Hal used to give library speeches every Tuesday when he was 11. I did not. When I was 11 at the library, I was a dungeon master. I'll, I'll have you know. Thank you, chat room. There you go. Look at this. I've, you've been, if uh, yeah. And the nice thing is, is you can... You can always bug out and come back later. If this is too much, you can always go you know, mark this moment for yourself. It's totally fine. All right. <clears throat> uh, da, da, da. So, yeah, in regard to the laptop, um, Abby Lowell has been very careful, and so has Hunter Biden, to say, we don't attest that any of this shit is real. We'll answer questions about shit around that time, but it's, we're not 
verifying that these are actual communications because then you can just, it's too easy to throw in a fake communication in this big pile of shit and then say all of it's true because we said part of it's true. And so forget it. Okay. With that in mind, let's go. Okay. Just to set expectations here, I'm going to refer to three. Okay. And then we're going to this page. Okay. Page three. I'm going to refer to three sort of topics. Okay. Within this giant document, not 148, we're going to go through every page. We're not going to go through every page. I'm sort of managing your expectations here. Thank you. I'd like to turn to page four. It's a message dated July 30th, 2017. It's about halfway down the page and begins WA message with SM. And that's the stands for sportsman. And that's what they call you and Jow. Um, have you ident uh, have you identified the one that I'm referring to? It's down the page. It's the only one for the 30th. Correct. Okay. Yes. And so the text, according to the IRS, the federal investigators say, Z, please have the director call me uh, moment James or Tony or Jim. Uh, have them call me tonight. I'm sitting here with my father and we'd like to understand why the committee has not been, the commitment has not been fulfilled. I'm very concerned about the chairman has either changed his mind or broken our deal without telling me or he's unaware of the promises and assurances that have been made and not been kept. Tell the director I would love to resolve this now before it gets out of hand and now means tonight. And if Z can get a call or a text from anyone involved in this other than you, Jong, or the chairman, I will make certain that between the man sitting next to me and every person he knows and my ability to forever hold a grudge that you will regret not following my direction. By the way, um, Again, I'm surprised Trump wouldn't quote this in the art of the deal. Um, all too often people make mistakes. Sorry. All too often people make mistake, uh, make mistakes. Oh, all too often people mistake kindness for weakness. And all too often I'm standing over the top of them saying, I warned you. From this moment until whenever he reaches me, it's 9.45 a.m. here. And I assume 9.45 p.m. there. So his night is running out. Jow responds, copy. I will call you on WhatsApp. You respond, okay, my friend, I'm sitting here waiting for the call with my father. I'm sure, I sure hope whatever it is you're doing is very, very, very important. Jow says, hi, Hunter. Is it a good time to call now? Hi, Hunter, director did not answer my call, but he got the message you just mentioned. Yeah. Do you have any recollection of sending these? No, but I've seen this. And is there a question? Yes. Does he have any recollection of sending this message? And I do not, but I do know this. I have now seen this, which has been presented I would say two things about this message. Can you speak up? I would say two things about this message. The first thing is, is that Jow that uh, this is sent, uh, uh, the Jow this is sent to is not the Jow that was connected to CEFC. <laughs> okay. Which I think is the best indication of how out of my mind I was at the time. Again, I don't, my addiction is not an excuse, but I can tell you this. I'm more embarrassed of this text message. If anything, if it actually did come from me, that any text message I've ever sent the fact of the matter is that there's no other text message you have in which I'm saying remotely this. I, and I was out of my mind. I can also tell you this. My father was not sitting next to me. My father had no awareness. My father was not aware of my, the business I was doing. My father never benefited from any of my business that I was doing. And so I take full responsibility for being an absolute ass and idiot when I sent this message, if I did send this message. Okay. Um, when you say it wasn't Jow from the CEFC, who, would you speak up please? Which Jow are you referring to if it wasn't from the CEFC? The number that I believe it was from was Henry Zhao. Zhao is a very common, it's not a surname, it's a surname in China. I mean, obviously very common surname. And I, like an idiot, idiot directed it towards Henry Zhao, who had no involvement, who had no understanding or even remotely knew what, who the hell I was even talking about. Excuse my language. And he seems to, no, 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 no. The Zhao, it's different. You're conflating now. Okay. And why this report from the IRS is absolutely wrong, there's two different messages. The Jow that calls me is not related to the message that was sent. I speak to him the next day. They're two completely different sets of messages. One goes a number because I made the goddamn, excuse my language again, because I made like an idiot and I was drunk and probably high, sent a ridiculous message to Jow, to a Henry Jow. But the next day, I speak to Raymond Jow, who has never received the message that Henry Jow got. So that's why this report is very misleading in many ways. That's exactly why I raised the point before I decided to ask you a question. The IRS agent I gave took two different times and two different messages and conflated them. And that's what he's explaining. And I can, we can show you that. I can also show you that on that message, there was never a Chinese flag and a picture of it. I was, uh, and I think it was, as I think was shown on the oversight committee before. Okay. Because they, that's when they made up the, the pictures that they put on the floor. Yeah. They, they, uh, they were holding up and showing examples of it or on a screen and it had pictures of Hunter Biden from after, from like last year. Yeah. Could this be the legal version of Knives Out? Okay, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, the point where the, the important thing is, is that the that he was high and he was conflating his jowls. There was Henry and Raymond Jow. There were two different people, two different deals. 
and he he was because he was talking in terms of Z and last name, and he was high. He conflated those. That's the argument. And he was like, we can show you the rest of the messages if you're talking about this kind of, uh, you know, in the way I spoke to them about that day. But I don't know if I sent this message, but we did talk around this shit and I fucked those up. All right. Uh, okay. Going to refer to your page nine, third message. This is four. It's page four. Page number four. At the end. Where's the page? It's at the bottom. Now I get it. Okay. Uh, page number. It's dated. August 27th. August third one down. Dated the 27th. Got it. 2017. At precisely... Go fuck yourself a clock. No one cares. Uh, it's a message between you and Kevin Dong. Who's Kevin Dong? Kevin Dong was the ultimately ended up becoming. He was Mr. Yee's representative in the United States and was part of the Hudson West 3 group. Okay, yeah. August 27th, 2017. You wrote, I will pick you up at 12 p.m. in the lobby of your hotel. The luncheon will start at 12.30 p.m. Where's the luncheon, Kevin? My uncle will be there with his brother. Brother is in all caps. Would you like to say hello to the chairman? He is here to visit my daughter. Um, do you have any recollection of sending this message? Again, I don't have a specific recollection of ever sending that text, but what I do see and what's produced here, if it's actually valid and, cert and verified, is that my dad was, what I think I'm saying is that my dad was in town to visit my sis, excuse me, my daughter, who was at Columbia Law at the time. My uncle was also in town. I was going to lunch with Kevin Dong. It was a chance to miss meet Mr. Yee, uh, join us for lunch. And I said, well, maybe we'll stop by. That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. That never happened though. Okay. So when you're indicating that your your dad was possibly going to stop by and you put brother in all caps, yeah, referring to, again, I just want to be clear, would there be something wrong if my dad was in New York when he was out of office and he wasn't a candidate for office and I didn't think he would ever be a candidate for office ever again and he was in New York to visit my daughter and I was going to lunch with some of my business associates if I told he and my uncle to stop by and have a bite to eat? There is. I don't understand how this rises to the level of supposed inquiry we're in right now. What is What is the issue? I mean, he... What's the issue if he's out of office? Now, I do see an issue if there is, if this was in, you know, a certain other date when he was in, in office or he was president of the United States. But you said while he was running for the president, he's never been involved in. It. This is within your business, 2017. Yeah, but when he was running for president, he was, he was never going to. When he was running for president, you said he was never involved with any of your business activity. He was not involved with any business activity. Would you call it involvement if my dad was in New York City at the same time I was in New York City and having lunch with some of my business associates and I said, hey, dad, come by for lunch? Who wouldn't do that? Are you saying you wouldn't do that with your father if you knew he was in uh, town at the same time? Well, I don't think that the witness you were. No, I'm being serious. Like, this is great because this is this is Hunter talking like, no, I'm being serious. Not a joke. Would you uh, not allow him to come to lunch with you and Mr. Jordan if you're discussing things as related to impeachment because your dad was a prosecutor? Yeah, well, yeah. Would you do that? I don't understand it. Why, uh, my dad was a biophysicist. Okay, your dad's a biophysicist. Oh, your dad's a biophysicist. So I don't think anyone would want to. Well, again, we would talk about, you know, other things he could somehow influence you. Let him ask a question. But I think it's fair to ask because I don't think most people would have their dad come to a business meal with, well, that's not true. You know that's not true. If he was in town at the same time and I was having lunch with people that I knew that were buying and I said, Dad, I'd probably invite my daughter too. Okay, why wouldn't I? Okay. I mean, I, I really mean it. Never did that in my whole life. My father, you never invited your father to lunch. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We're going to mark. Can I just, can I just tell you this? No. Can you read the whole thing? You can read it. <laughs> well, just remember that it says at the end, if it's complete. So please give me the location time. And it says Jim. So Jim's involved brother. If he is, if he is the coming, uh, if he is the coming, just wants to say hello and will not be stopping for lunch. You missed that part. <laughs> This is Lowell. Abby Lowell, again, we salute you. Just hanging in there while, while, while Hunter's getting as pissed as all of us would. Lowell's like, hey, you missed a spot on that message. Can you read the rest of that uh, at the end? If it's complete. So please give me the location time. And it says Jim. So Jim's beloved brother. If he is, if he is coming, just wants to say hello and will not be stopping for lunch. You missed that part. Question. Fair enough, but the point is we're injecting. I mean, fair enough. I mean, isn't that the whole thing? Isn't isn't that the whole thing, is it not? The whole thing is that the former vice president has come to meet potential, but he didn't, number one. You know that he didn't. Number two is that you know that I never involved him in any business. Number three is, well, he never benefited from my business. Number four, you know that there's no evidence of any transaction where I sent money from my dad or my dad took action to benefit me or any of my business. You know all of those things. But you look at one text message out of context, and then and when I say 
hey, my dad's going to be in town. He's also visiting my daughter. I'm going to have lunch. Maybe we'll have lunch together because it's also with my uncle. I'd love to meet my new partner. You say there's something wrong with that? I really mean it. He's out of office. Question. I mean, I think it raises questions. No, he's out of office. You're saying he can't do that. So when you, when Jared Kushner flies all over Saudi Arabia, picks up $2 billion, comes back, puts it in his pocket, okay, and he's running for president of the United States, you guys have any problem with that? The clock has stopped. <laughs> anyway, no, the clock had not stopped. It, it, the weird thing is, Gates wanted that to not be counted in the record as because he ran out the fucking clock. The clock has stopped. Anyway, no, the clock has not stopped. You guys have a problem with that? I'm asking. I have one more question before our hour's up. It's unbelievable to me. You said there's one more. Go ahead. So my dad can't go to dinner. We're running out of time. Before we get into the third one, I'm giving you Exhibit 16. I'm sorry. What'd you say? We do have a problem with that? Let the record reflect. <laughs> I'd love to hear the answer on that. When we'll deal with the influence peddling, we'll ask. That's Kilmer. When we deal with the influence, the China money. Isn't that what this is about extensively? Comer, by the way, that's what, what you're saying. So I just, one more question before our hour's up and then we'll get a chance. The witness, you're really going to do that to have them? You're saying that what you're going to do is you're going to open an investigation in Jared Kushner alongside of what? The things because I will say, we may ask you, is that <laughs> Comer, he has the same attorney. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Mr. Lowell, Mr. Comer, you are absolutely wrong. I represented one person at the time for a stupid investigation as to whether or not he had been involved in something called Russian interference. I have not represented him on any other matter. And to say that we have the same attorney is really just another example of how you say things and you pretend that they're real because they come out of your mouth, but they tend not to be. So I take offense at what you just said, Mr. Jordan. Let's go back on the record. <laughs> if I could, uh, it's so fun. So uh, just Mark W16. Did we stop the clock for some reason? We got four minutes left. So I mean, he's at 57. He's 56 and we're stopping it. You're stopped. Let's keep going, please. Go ahead. No, actually, his time was an hour. But regardless, I'll say it got more than an hour. Let's finish this exhibit, please. <laughs> exhibit 60. Expectations is from James Gilliard to Tony Bobolinsky. Rob Walker and yourself, have you seen this email before? I have. I've seen it, I think, as well as yeah, we all have. 8,642,300 times. Okay. And you expect we'd ask you about it here today? Of course I did. Yeah, of course. Yeah, at the bottom, I skip to read the whole email, if I may. At the bottom, it says, at the moment, there's a provisional agreement that the equity will be distributed as follows. Uh-huh. 20 to H, which presumably yourself. Is that correct? Yes. 20 to RW. That's Rob Walker. Yes. 20 to James Geller. Yes. 20 to TBS. Tony Bobolinsky. Yes. 10 to Jim is your uncle. Yes. And 10 to be held by H, which would be you, for the big guy, which presumably is your dad. Question mark. Correct? Question mark. Question mark. Not only question mark, but all I know is, is that number one, there's only one agreement that includes Tony Bobolinsky that is executed, that is signed by me. There's only one message that I had as it related to any involvement that I had with Tony Bobolinsky, James Gilliard, my uncle, Rob Walker, and it did not involve my dad. There's an executed agreement in which I got 20%, Jim got 20, Rob got 20, Tony got 20, James Gilliard got 20%. Nothing to do with Joe Biden. And the only agreement that was drafted before had 50-50, and I was, I was the 150. I was 50, and Mr. Yee was the other 50. The only company that ever existed that had any involvement with Mr. Yee was never actually an operating company. It was a company, Hudson West 3, in which I own 50% with Mr. Yee owned 50%. So this idea, because James Gillier goes out and he says to Tony, you guys have uh, seen the co communications of Tony. You've seen the communications of Tony. I told Tony literally weeks after I met him, he was out of his mind that he was going around trying to promote the idea that my dad was somehow going to be involved in this. And that's why I never did business with Tony. That's why Tony is a bitter, bitter man that did not get on a deal, get in on a deal that he wanted to get in on because I thought that he was both incompetent and an idiot. And he's proved himself to be so by the complete misstatements that he's made. I do know that Tony said he was never at a meeting with Mark Meadows at a rally in, I forget where it was, Missouri, and that he never wore a ski mask until the next day. You got a picture with Mr. Meadows behind a car with Tony Bobolinsky with a ski mask. Did he say that under oath, Mr. Comer? Did he tell you that under oath? Because he was under oath to the FBI. He was at a meeting with Yee Jet, with, uh, he, he also said under oath to the FBI that he was at a meeting with Mr. Yee in Miami. And then he said, he said uh, it under oath to the FBI as he went in, but it was, uh, that was a 302. Oh, wait a second. Did he come? He contested the FBI, got it wrong. You guys are going to tell me the 302s are not. You're going to tell me that uh, you can't test, trust a 302. We're going to tell you, but you can trust a 1020. 
You guys are actually going to tell me that you're going to tell, you can't trust a 302, but a 10, you can't double stamp a triple stamp Lloyd. You can't double stamp a triple stamp. Eh. Okay, by the way, real quick, uh, chat room, if I may, um, just in relation to this, just because I have it and I feel like, uh, you know, the dunking moment coming on. Let me open this up. Uh, there we go. I'm going to close this. And where are you? Motion, open up again. Yeah. Um, close that. Okay. And then go to, I think it was in the morning show that I put this in. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, Bob Linsky versus reality. There we go. Yeah, here you go. How about this? This is what he's relating to. Ladies and gentlemen, this is this is specifically what he's relating to. This is Tony Bobolinsky meeting with Mark Meadows, exactly where Cassidy Hutchins said they met. This is him wearing a ski mask. He's wearing a he's wearing like a balaclava. He's wearing it pulled up. He doesn't have it over the top of his head. The top of his ears aren't covered. That's why he's saying I wasn't wearing a ski mask. He's trying to dodge. He's wearing a fucking black hat pulled down to here and a fucking gator is what he's wearing up to his face. So fuck off. Um, but he this is him meeting in secret. This is where uh, Mark Meadows had passed him something, more than likely uh, either an envelope of money or actual instructions. Um, just for the record, this is what he's referring to. Okay. Did he say that under oath, Mr. Comer? You betcha he did. Yeah. Um, but it was a 302, back in the 302, da, da, da. Witness, should I uh, not believe the credible FBI? Should I not? So you're saying the FBI are liars. I thought you were, I didn't think you. Alexander Smirnoff, who has Russian uh, contacts, is not a liar. Before we go off the record, I want to, want to, no, let's say it on the record for this discussion. Well, let's talk about it. So you're telling me, Miss Green, and this is, oh, this is fucking, I thought you were, you, oh, this is fucking where Marge jumps in. Can you tell me that, Miss Green? I said it was their most credible informant. So, truly not be able to believe that that, so you would believe, so should I not believe the credible FBI? Should I not? So you're saying the FBI are liars? I thought you were, I didn't think you, Alexander Smirnov, who is a Russian, who has Russian contacts, is not a liar. Before you go off the record, I want one last question. Wait, no, let's stay on the record for this discussion. Well, let's talk about it. So you're telling me, Ms. Grain, you don't trust the FBI note takers, six of them, six of them. Are you a businessman? Are you involved in government, Mr. Biden? Here's what I am. I'm both an attorney, a businessman, and a concerned citizen, Miss Green. That's what I am. Just an average citizen. So just one five. I love how she thinks just an average citizen is like a slam or like, oh yeah, just an average citizen. Sure. But one final question, because our round is up, and I know everyone's disappointed by that. But the reference is to the big guy. You would agree it's a reference to your father. I truly don't know what the hell that James was talking about. All I know is what actually happened. All I know is that what was executed in that agreement, the agreement didn't have anything to do with my father. My father's never been involved in my business, never benefited from my business, never taken an action or benefit me or any of my businesses. And by the way, you'll notice how they were like, you know how it started. Like, I never even met these folks, but he's never, now he's never benefited financially. He's nailing it all down. And I love Gates and, and Green both also kicking in on this after the Republicans had this thing about, we're only supposed to have two questioners per round. That's the rules because because they were worried that Goldman and Raskin and other people were helping Hunter Biden, you know, clarify things and it was annoying them. So they jump in uh, and 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 they're like, you can't jump in and help him like that. And then Green and Gates are jumping in to try and do this dunking bullshit. Um, uh, is that the case, though? Why is Gilliard drafting something like that? Because I think it was just as Rob Walker said, I think it was a pie in the sky like Joe Biden's out of office. Maybe we'll be able to get him involved. Remember, again, is that Joe Biden, for the first time in 48 years, is not an elected official and is not seeking office. Thank you, fucking God. The one window when all this shit happens where they're like, aha, is the the smallest window of time where Joe Biden is not in office or running for office. It's, it's literally like a 16-month period. That's it. The only time these meetings happen, the only time any of this stuff happens, they're like, oh, this looks sketchy. Promises, promises. And you made, it sounds like you were setting up meetings for when he got out of office. Yeah, because he can't meet with you when he's in office. So if you're going to meet with him and it's going to happen, it sure as shit isn't going to happen while he's the vice president or while he's a, an employee of the federal government. This is so stupid. God damn. I love this and hate it at the same time. Okay. 
Um, so, uh, he goes, uh, he goes, so James probably is like, wow, wouldn't it be great if a former vice president would be in our business together? I say, and I say, you're out of your mind. My dad knows less about doing cross-border blah, blah, blah than he does about, I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. So I shut it down. And the evidence of me shutting it down is the actual things you have as evidence. Remember that. The agreement, the executed agreement, the executed agreement to create a company that has never operated, that's what happened. That's the evidence you have. You have the evidence of the executed agreement between Hudson th West 3, me and Mr. Yee. You have that. Nothing to do with my dad. Zero. With that, you're shaking your head. And I, uh, uh, your head, and I apologize for that. Not you, behind you, Congresswoman. Is that you keep shaking your head. But you explain to me how I'm wrong. Explain to me. I would really love you to explain it. This is the deposition of you, not me. It's Harriet Hagman. Fucking Harriet Hagman's back in the back shaking her head. Ow. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. This is not my deposition. This is your deposition. You're the criminal, not me. You're the criminal, not me. I was shaking my head because I am disgusted. I am disgusted. <laughs> no, you keep shaking your head. I'm not, I'm truly, no, Congresswoman, she said what she had to say. We're ready to go off the record. I'm a, you're off the record. No, everybody's off the record. I'm off the record and you're off the record. I'm Harriet Hagman. And you're off the record. So. <laughs> so, back on record. All right. You guys, take, you need, anybody need a pee break? Uh, hit the like, subscribe. We're going to have to do this in fucking chapters, I think. Because this isn't really a normal show. But we're getting through it. We're almost there. If you can hang. If you can't hang, uh, come back later or whatever. But uh, uh, thank you, for Fred Bear, for the super chat. Uh, Imperial 56 says, uh, you're doing great. Please keep reading it all. All right. Uh, thank you for the super chat. I'll keep doing it. If you guys want to super chat and, and let me know to keep going, you deserve it tonight for sure. Oh, thank you, Sandy, for the super chat as well. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll do it anyways, but if you, you know, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and, uh, subscribe while you're at it. Like, subscribe, thumbs up, bitty, bop, bitty, bop. <clears throat> all right. Back to the transcript. Uh, um. And for the record, I will be sitting in the back, and I will not be taking any guff from you, Mr. Man. I'm from Wyoming, where men are men and sheep are scared. All right. Um, we can go back on the record. Good afternoon, Mr. Biden. This is the Democrats questioning, so it's going to be a lot more nice. It's going to be a lot cleaner. Uh, I want to go back to Exhibit 16, which is the last exhibit from my Republican colleagues introduced to the email from James Gilliard to Tony Bobolinsky, ceasing Rob Walker and you, in which he is a question at the end, H, uh, 10 held by H for the big guy? Question mark? Yes. I just want to be very clear. This is an email sent by James Gilliard. He's the one making this suggestion, posing this question. Yes. This is not from you. Yes. Uh, you never suggested that your father become involved in your business dealings with CEFC. I never suggested that. That never happened. And I think during your round of questioning, you talked about how, you know, this idea that he would join this kind of, is kind of crazy and you would shut it down. And I wanted to ask you, kind of, why was that your view? What, 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 why was that your view? Well, it was my view because my father's never been involved in any of my businesses. He's never taken a role, never taken any stake in any of my businesses or benefited from any of my businesses. It's just so, it's, just something that I would not do. And I would particularly not do it at a suggestion of people that, that I had very tangible relationship with at the time. There's just no truth to it. There's no reality to it. Mr. Roy, I hate to ask you this. Yeah, yes. Yeah, sorry, I apologize. There's no reality to it, no truth to it. Um, uh, now, Tony Bobolinsky provided the same tech, uh, some text message. And actually, let me correct myself. Some photographs of a BlackBerry purporting to show black yes yeah, so pictures of s screens of other devices he would not turn over to the fbi fuck that dude tony bobolinsky is the george papadopoulos's of carter pages he didn't provide his entire phone we've asked for it he refused to provide it he just provided a certain number of screenshots Mr. Law, are there are are they screenshots or are they photographs of they're photographs of a screen? Okay, and it's an important distinction. They are not from the device, so you can't check that they're actually real to the device. They're just pictures of another device, which doesn't produce prove that the original device existed at all. But there you go. All right. Okay. So we don't know what the full content of these text messages, but we received a few. 
And I want to talk about just two of them, which we'll, I'll mark. And they're exhibits 17 and 18. I'll pass around exhibit 17 and 18. So the email we're just looking at, 16 from James Galliard, was dated May 13th, 2017. I'm sorry, I'm just getting set up here. 18 or 17, we're talking about. This is 17. It starts with brother, please. Got it. Then let 18 is later, bro. Okay. So these two photographs of a telephone that Mr. Bobolinsky provided to committee Republican staff appear to be dated May 11th. And Mr. Bobolinsky represented under oath that that was 2017, so just days before the email we were just looking at. Do you see that? Yes. Now, these messages are from Mr. Bobolinsky's phone, and they're from James Gilliar. So the only two people on that chain are James Gilliar and Tony Bobolinsky. Do you have any basis to disagree with that? I have no basis to disagree with that. You're not in this text chain, right? Not that I know of. Okay. And Mr. Bobolinsky testified similarly that it was just him and Mr. Gilliar. And so I want to read you the first one, 17, which is Mr. Bobolinsky purportedly telling Mr. Gilliar, brother... Please listen to me. You have to open your eyes a bit more and not take things at face value with these guys. They are calculated and they are running multiple horses in the same race and covering all their bases. And Mr. Bobolinsky represented they here is talking about CEFC and Chairman Yee. H and Biden should have been ins been insulted. They weren't invited. The BS about the G fund is is just that BS. Um. And then there's this other text message from James Gelliar, Exhibit 18, in which he tells Mr. Bobolinsky, later, bro, man, you are right. Let's get the company set up, then tell H and the family the high stakes and get Joe involved. Now, were you aware on May 11th at the time these text messages were being sent that Mr. Gilliar and Mr. Bobolinsky were having this conversation? Absolutely not. And is it clear from reading this that what they appear to be discussing between themselves behind your back is a plan to try and convince you to get your father, Joe Biden, involved. It, involved. it appears that's the case. Do you recall them bringing this proposal to your attention? No, because the, I would have shut this down faster than anything. And it's one of the reasons why I have no faith in this person that I had just met, Tony Bobolinsky, who was presented to me as some Wall Street whiz kid that was going around throwing around my name, and throwing around my family's name. And shortly after these messages, you, in fact, ceased your partnership with Tony Bobolinsky, James Gilliar, and Rob Walker. Yes? Um, yes. Uh, with regard to CFC, is that right? Yes. Why is that? Because I had no faith in Mr. Bobolinsky. I think you can uh, see of the documents that were sent to us in preparation for this, there are many instances in which I call Mr. Bobolinsky out for what I would call complete absurdities. One of these would be this absurdity, this idea that Mr. Bobolinsky was somehow going to take control of the Biden name and then have control of a company and then go out and do whatever the hell he wanted to do without obviously something that I had zero interest in being involved with. And this venture you had with Mr. Bobolinsky and others, it never got funded, right? That's exactly right. No money actually came in. That's exactly right. You did at some point, though, through an entity called Hudson West 3, go into a venture with CEFC in 2017, 2018. Is that right? That's right, yes. And in that venture, you were working with your brother, Jim Biden, my uncle. Uh, your uncle, sorry, Jim Biden. Is that right? Yes. And why did you decide to go to do that venture with just your uncle? Because I lost complete faith in Mr. Bobolinsky. I did not find him to be credible. I did not find him to be competent. I found him to be arrogant. I found him to often not tell the truth or the, uh, the full truth or the truth at all. And therefore, I had no faith to have him as a partner in any business. And so therefore, I told Mr. Gilliar and Mr. Walker I was going on my own. I was, if they wanted to join me, that was, there, that would be fine. But I would not be involved with Tony Bobolinsky. Now, what did I tell you guys about this shit? Where he was, uh, you know, where Bobolinsky is pissed because he got kicked to the curb because he saw dollar signs that he was going to exploit as like, I'm on this team and I've got, he had this rich dude that he used to run the guy's business. And then he went off and did his own thing with the guy's blessing. Which, by the way, I'm sure if they, I'm, they're never going to get that guy, you know, under oath talking about his relationship with Bobolinsky. But I wouldn't doubt if he was fired, right? That wouldn't surprise fucking anybody. And so he's looking around for a, he's a, he's a barnacle looking for another fucking whale. That's what this is. <laughs> yeah. Um, now he goes, uh, and therefore I told Mr. Gilliar and Mr. Walker I was going to go on my own, but I would not be involved with Tony Bob. And you. And did you trust your brother, your uncle, uh, your brother, your uncle, Jim Biden, and go into business with him? 100%. I trust my uncle implicitly. And he's not only my uncle, but he's one of the closest, my closest friends and mentors and confidants. And trusting him also means that you trusted him to not to stupidly suggest that your father was in any way involved in your business deal. No, he would never do such a thing. Why? Because I've known my uncle since the day I was born. And I know that my uncle cares about my, how he represents his name and how he is 
how he's been anything, the most protective person in my family, to all of us, to all of us with the last name Biden, and even the ones who don't have the last name Biden that are blood. That's why. And the fact that the matter is that your father was not involved in this business venture in any way, right? Exactly. The bottom line is, at the end of the day, not even at the beginning of the day or any day, my father was not involved in any business that I've ever done. Mr. Goldman, can I jump in? Are you done whenever you're done with the line of questioning? Sure. I just want to read you a quote from the Wall Street Journal in an October 23rd, 2020 piece entitled Hunter Biden's ex-business partner alleges father knew about venture, which has a quote from James Gilliard in which he says, I would like to clear up any speculation that former Vice President Biden was involved in the 2017 discussions about our potential business structure. I am unaware of any involvement at any time of the former Vice President. The activity in question never delivered any project revenue. Involvement at any time of the former Vice President. Do you agree with the statement by Mr. Gilliard? That's an accurate statement. These two text messages are dated May 11th, according to the date here, May 11th, 2017. Do you have the email that James Gilliard sent to Tony Bobolinsky and CC'd you on him, Mr. Walker and the Republican Council went over? I do have it in front of me. I think you're referring to Exhibit 16. I don't know. Um, so these two text messages where James Gilliard and Tony Bobolinsky are scheming to get your father involved happened on May 11th. And... And then what is the date of this email where James Gilliard suggests an equity distribution of similar division that was in the original plan that you, Rob Walker, Tony Bobolinsky, and, Jay, and James Gilliard, and then adds 10% for your uncle, and then Gilliard suggests, with a question mark, 10% held for H by the, for the big guy. What's the date on that email? That's May 13th, 2017. And so that's two days after this text conversation between James Gilliard and Tony Bobolinsky, right? That appears to be correct. Yes. And you didn't respond to that suggested equity distribution, did you? No, I did not respond to that. And then you entered into a formal agreement with your partners uh, for, was it Oneda? Yes, Oneda. And then uh, to hold equity in Sinohawk, that would be the partner too, yeah. But your agreement was splitting up Oneda, yes. <clears throat> with these same business partners. That is correct. And the agreement was sig signed officially and had 20% for you, 20 for Rob Walker, 20 for Gilliard, 20 for Tony Bobolinsky, and 20% for your Uncle Jim, right? That's correct. Do you remember approximately when that was signed? I don't have it, if you don't. Um, probably would have it here. I do. May 23rd, I believe. So it was 10 days after this email. Yes. And you had mentioned that you were suspicious of Tony Bobolinsky because you didn't trust him and you didn't think he was credible. Were you conscious of this or his efforts to try and get your father involved? No. I was not fully conscious of any efforts that they other, supposedly. I don't remember if they ever read this email that I was CC'd on. If I ever read this email that I was CC'd on. But they never, they never spoke to it to me about it, they would have known to never suggest it to me. Rob Walker has known me since 1998. And if Rob had talked to them beforehand, he would have said you're out of bounds. And so I don't have any recollection of them particularly proposing that. But to answer your question, the thing that concerned me about Tony Bobolinsky is that number one, his background did not match what he told me his background was. There was no record of his background in terms of business or otherwise, why he would be a good partner. And he was never willing to expand on that with me. And the second biggest red flag was the business partnership that he had proposed, proposed that he would ab he would have absolute and complete control. He, he even put that in the agreement, something to the effect that he was going to have control of the brand, meaning he would have control of Oneida. And that he that what I soon learned was that he meant he could use the Biden name anywhere he wanted to. And I think there's a communication that you have. I use very, very, very colorful language with Tony Bobolinsky. I think at some point I even offered to give get into a wrestling match with him, which would have been very, very stupid because he was supposedly a good wrestler. But the point being is that I did not trust him, and that was clear at the outset. And while I entered into that agreement, quickly it devolved into shouting matches between me and Tony, and I said, I do not want to have anything to do with you, Tony, and that's how it ended. And was he bitter about ending it that way? He was very, very bitter. And according to Rob, he made threats at the time. He made threats afterwards. He said he would get his revenge and things like that. According to Rob at the time, I think the exact words were, excuse my language, you have no idea who you're fucking with, uh, just so the record is complete. I'm going to pass around his exhibit, May 19th, uh, 19, the May 22nd, 2017 agreement, limited liability company uh, agreement, Oneida Holdings. And I'll direct your attention to the signatures at the end of the schedule one and two. Yes. And those signatures represent the entity. So it's you as manager of GK, Tim and Jin, Jim Biden as manager of Sino Atlantic Solutions, Rob Walker as managing director of Robinson Walker, James Gilliar as managing director of Aid International Holdings Limited, and Anthony Bobolinsky as managing member of Global Investment Ventures, LLC. Is that, I, I got to say, some of these fucking companies sound like they're generic for that purpose. So they just, um, it's like, it's like James Bond walking around with universal exports business cards. Um, yes, those are the five partners. Yes, there's no secret big guy anywhere in the email. No, there's not. There's no secret additional partners. No, there's not. Joe Biden is not anywhere in this agreement. No, he's not. And uh, GJ10 Magin uh, LLC, that's your entity. 
That was the entity that was suggested that I create for the purposes of entering into this agreement at the time. Yes. And just to be clear, Joe Biden had no interest or involvement in GK Temujin LLC either. No, he did not. And if you turn uh, the schedule, it shows the shares of each partner, 20% share. That's exactly right. So there's no additional 10% share for anyone there. That's right. And when you're discussing uh, Mr. Bobolinsky wanting to have a greater say over the company, if you turn to page eight, article four, management, do you see under section four, manager votes? Yes. You see where it's, uh, you see it says, each manager shall have one vote weighed as follows. The GKT manager has one seventh. Yes, that's you, right? Yes. Sino Atlantic, one seventh, and that's your Uncle Jim. Yes. Walker manager, one seventh. That's Robert Walker. Yes. Aid International is one seventh. That's Jim Gillier. And the GIV manager, three seventh. That's Tony Bobolinsky. Yes. So Tony Bobolinsky had three times the voting power of that or any other partner in this venture had under this agreement. That's exactly right. And you viewed that as a problem, right? I viewed that as a very significant problem. We, we want to go through one more text message, which again is a photo of a BlackBerry. Mr. And again, that was what I was telling you about. Like Bobolinsky was looking, he, he was, these guys were fucking pork chops. This motherfucker was looking at Hunter and, and Jim Biden and, and Gilliar and all these fuckers as fucking pork chops. And he was like, I'm going to be able to outvote these motherfuckers and have a default where if, you know, if the vote split 2-2, two, two, I have three votes automatically and I'm going to like own this vote every time. And he could just run all over the world and hire bankers. <clears throat> um, okay, we went through the text message of BlackBerry photo. Okay, Mr. Lowell, with your understanding, as I pointed out, that we have great concern about the authenticity and completeness of what Mr. Bobolinsky says he took a photograph of, of a device which he says is broken and has not provided for anybody for forensic an examination. With that, please ask your question. Yeah, because this, again, fucking pictures of pictures, you assholes in 2024. God damn. We got, we got pictures of a, I, got, I took pictures of a drawing that I made on a thing that says China money. Yeah, I like to put it, exhibit 69. <laughs> All right. I'm going to read the record here. It says here, it, it says, hey, Tony, this is a text message from you to, again, a group titled the Oneida Holdings Team. The list of individuals in the team isn't fully clear. It's clear James Gillier is part of it. Beyond that, it's obscure. The text message uh, from you says, Hey, Tony, I have an idea. In light of the fact that you are, uh, we are in an impasse of sorts, and both James Lawyers and my chairman uh, uh, gave an emphatic no, I think we should all meet in Romania on Tuesday next week, and then it continues on. Do you recall this text message? I do not recall the text message, but if I don't have any issue with it. I, I want to focus on the language my chairman that you use. Yes. Um, there have been allegations that you said my chairman was a reference to your father. He's talking about Yi Jen Ming. Do you have any response to those allegations? Yeah, it's in reference here to the chair. My chairman is clearly the two different chairmen. If you do business and you've uh, ne ever been to China, anyone that is, whether you're the, you run a popsicle stand or you run a multinational corporation, you're refer referred to as the chairman. And in CEFC, there were two people that we regularly refer to as, as chairman. One was Chairman Yi, who was the titular chairman of the company, and the other was Mr. Zhang. Mr. Jo uh, chairman Zhang, also when you meet with him, you would refer to him as Chairman Zhang. Tony and Robbie, uh, and Rob, excuse me, Tony and James were talking to John. I was talking to Yi, which is one of the conflicting things between us to begin with. That's the chairman I'm referring to. Was it your practice to refer to your father as my chairman? I don't know that I've ever, ever referred to my father as my chairman. So it's fair to say the suggestion that my chairman here somehow refers to Joe Biden is completely baseless. Yes, it's laughable. <clears throat> Just one question of nicknames. I've not seen your father referred to as the big guy anywhere else in this record. Was that his nickname in your family, the big guy? No. Did you ever call him the big guy? No, I never called him that. Okay. I think Mr. Swalwell has a few. <clears throat> Just one last thing on this text message. It says in the beginning, in light of the fact that we are at an impasse of sorts, is that a reference to evolving disagreement that you and Mr. Bobolinsky had about the division of shares? Yes. As well as your concern about his working with him? Exactly. And I don't, what is the date of this? We don't have a date on it. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. So there was constant friction between Mr. Bobolinsky, myself, and my uncle, who, like the three sevenths that everybody else got one seventh, it just didn't make sense to us. And we were at a constant impasse, whether uh, together and constantly fighting. Mr. Swallow, I can tell you the date wasn't any time recently because this is from a BlackBerry. They don't use those anymore. We might get the pager code later from the majority. <laughs> He's just being Swalwell, such a dick. I love it. Anytime your father was in government prior to the presidency or before, did he ever operate a hotel? No, he's never operated a hotel. Okay, so you never operated a hotel where foreign nationals spent millions at that hotel while he was in office? No, he has not. Did your father ever employ the Oval Office, any direct family member to also work in the Oval Office? My father has never employed any direct family members to my knowledge. Well, your father was president. Did anyone in the family receive 41 trademarks from China? No. 
as president of the leader of the party uh, and the leader of the party, has your father ever tried to install as the chairperson of the party a daughter-in-law or anybody else in the family? No. And I don't think that anyone in my family would be crazy enough to want to be chairperson of the DNC. Has your father, uh, even in his time as an adult, been uh, ever uh, in his time as an adult, been fined three hundred fifty-five million dollars by any state that he worked in? No, he has not. Thank God. Anyone in your family ever strike a multi-billion dollar deal with the Saudi government while your father was in office? No. That's all I got. Thank you. We can go off the record. Thank you. We can go back on the record. Okay. And I think this goes back to... Um, th- yeah, I think this is the Republicans kind of finishing up. Okay, so we might be there. I think they have one back and forth. <laughs> Swalwell just sitting there just to dunk. Uh, and I got to say, for all this talk about, like, Hunter being kind of, um, you know, defiant. I would argue that Swalwell's shit was way more defiant than anything that Hunter said. I would argue that even when Hunter was combative with with Marjorie Taylor Greene because she's gross, um, that he was like, no, let's just talk about this shit. You want to talk about this shit? Let's talk about this shit. All right. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah, so they're back on the Republicans again. Do you recall, just while the exhibit has been passed around, do you recall responding to Mr. Gillier's message about the 10 being held for the big guy? I do not. I'm sorry, do you mean responding to the part of it in further the chain where there's a subject? Do you have a document? Yeah, we have a document, so I'm pulling it out. Okay, let's look at the document. A couple days later, you responded to Mr. Gillier, where it says beyond office space, final word. No, 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 sorry. A few days later, Mr. Biden, Biden responds to Mr. Gillier. He says beyond office bait is the first response. Did we give you the wrong one? No, it's on here. I think you're, so it says this, hold on, I'm sorry. On the bottom of the, sorry to be, you gave, you have, you gave me a document that has four pages, 10% of it, uh, 10% of one uh, is the last of it. And then you asked Mr. Biden whether he's rep- responded a few days later. And my first response is that I see from Mr. Biden, he says beyond office space. Is that what we're responding to? Yeah. On May 16, 2017, at, at who gives a fuck a clock from Hunter Biden to James, Tony Robb regarding expectations. That's his response, first response. Maybe I'm just not reading correctly. The witness. No, you're reading correctly because that's the next response. Indeed, we have uh, we did have two different documents. I apologize for that. In the sake of expediency, we'll just we'll have a couple of responses for you. But in none of them does it dispute the ten held for the big guy. Is that your recollection? I don't see that in these responses. The responses have been able to find. We don't see anywhere where you responded. That's crazy. What is ten being held for the big guy supposed to mean? Question mark. Yeah, question mark. No, I don't. There's no document in front of me that says that. But do you remember any communication where you did try to disabuse Mr. Gilliar? No, I'm not even sure whether I full, ever fully read this. All I know is my response has nothing to do with my father. It has a zero. My response doesn't mention any additional determination percentage that would go to my father or anything. Okay. The only document that I do have is an executed document, which has 20% for me, equally divided amongst the five partners. doesn't include my father. Mark the next exhibit. It's some of the photographs of Tony Bobolinsky's BlackBerry device. These motherfuckers, man. Allegedly, his BlackBerry device. While we're, if you, you know, if you're going to walk up to the bell, ring the bell. Prove it's his fucking device. He can't even prove it's his device. He won't turn it over to anybody. Jesus Christ. He could have bought the fucker off of eBay, typed the shit in himself, took pictures of, of the screen, and tossed it out. I'm serious. It's 2024, motherfucker. Forensics or it didn't happen. Good Lord. Mr. Bobolinsky represented to us that these were exchanges that he had between you and some of them involved Rob Walker. And he says he photographed his BlackBerry and to the extent there is not a year listed, he advises they were in the year 2017. Okay. Do you know the month? And there are, I believe it was the, it has the month of the day. Got it. Oh, okay. So this is when I first met Tony. Okay. So I'm going, the third page from the back of the pack is a Rob Walker message. Counting three back. It's not the pen, penultimate. It's the one before the penultimate. Mr. Lowell. The one says Rob Walker. Would you tell me the first line, please? No. When he says, uh, his chairman, he was talking about his dad. Okay. Can I also, before you start asking questions about this, you stapled these photographs together. Yes. How? Some of them have dates, and here's the date, May 19th. The other is May 2nd. What is in between those two dates, and is this a complete set of these exchanges? So we're going to ask some uh, about some of these photographs separately, and we thought just for the ease of discussion, we would make it all one exhibit. So <clears throat> on the one you're talking about, when Rob Walker is talking this one, it's dated May 19th. Day of May 19. Who is he talking to? Tony Boblinski, but not Mr. Biden. Correct. Okay, keep going. And it responds a message that is one page before the Democrats used in the last round. Mr. Walker says, when he, meaning you, said his chairman, he was talking about his dad. So I just wanted to get your reaction to that. This wasn't us, you know, making the chairman equals his dad. This was Rob Walker. This is where, to the extent the Republicans, the majority gets that, this is where it came from. Okay. 
So from a third party that was talking about another third party that was not involved in me in the discussion, making a judgment about what I was talking about, now you have my answer under oath that I did not refer to and have never referred to my father as chairman. You have my answer under oath that my father was never involved in any of my business, including this. You have my answer under oath, under penalty of perjury, that I was not speaking about my father. Okay, you, have you ever spoken to Mr. Walker in any way that he thinks the chairman met your dad? No, and I don't know how or what Rob would have been reading into that. Maybe he read it incorrectly. Okay, but Rob is somebody that, former business partner, you have a lot of respect for Mr. Walker. He's a, yes, I'm very close with Rob. Just in May 19th, 2017, when my dad was neither elected to an office nor running for office, he misconstrued something that I said to a third party. Okay. Then finally, I'm going to turn you and turn your attention to the first page and this WhatsApp message between you and Mr. Bobolinsky. I think it's real important for all these, uh, uh, all these to say each time that these are not WhatsApp messages between me and Mr. Bobolinsky. These are photographs of a broken screen of a BlackBerry cell phone that we have no forensic value, and I have no idea where they came from. And Mr. Bobolinsky has refused to actually give you any forensic copy of this. That's what I think is important. Boom. Okay. I know you think I'm being pedantic here, but I'm not because it's really important. So the first message says, the first alleged message, because a message would be something conferred to someone else that was part of a communication, whereas a, uh, a, a, a message made for a movie, for example, that's not really a message. It's the characters don't exist and they're not really reading it. They're not, there's not a message going from one character to another. It's in the script. So the prop that's made is not technically a message. It's just prop message. Just to clarify, so the prop message <clears throat> um, says, "Morning. Let me, please let me know if we'll do early dinner with your uncle and dad, and where also the, the, for document translation. Do you want it in simple Chinese traditional? You respond. Not sure on dinner yet. And whatever's the most common for a Chinese legal doc. Yes. Do you remember this exchange or what was going on between you and Mr. Bobolinsky at this time? Yes. This time was the first." Have I ever met Mr. Bobolinsky? We had a prior relationship with Mr. Gilliar. I believe we were introduced either the night before or the day before. I don't know the exact date. I'm certain in some of these documents it's there. And I was in Los Angeles for business meetings. My uncle was also in Los Angeles for business meetings. My father was going to speak at the Milken Conference in Los Angeles regarding the cancer moonshot. And the night before, I believe I had dinner with Mr. Bobolinsky for the first time and was introduced to him. And I said to him, that let's meet the next day. And did Mr. Bobolinsky meet with your father during that trip? He met him in the lobby of the hotel, I believe, was the, the, the Beverly Hilton. Yeah. My dad's flight arrived at 11 a.m., uh, 11 p.m., excuse me, 11 p.m. We were in the lobby bar with Bobolinsky having coffee. And your uncle as well? What? Was your uncle there too? My uncle and myself. I think my uncle was also staying at the hotel. And so, yeah, I know if you go further, it says, but I think that the reality is that didn't. Anyway, my dad went and shook hands with Tony. We, they talked about, I believe at the time, I don't know whether it was Tony's father who was suffering from cancer and his sister was suffering from cancer and he invited him to the speech at the Milken Conference. Okay. Do you remember anything else in that conversation with Mr. Bobolinsky had with your dad? No. Then the next morning, did he have a chance to meet with your dad as well? I believe that he went to the actual speech that my dad gave. And did you witness any communications between the two? No, I did not witness any communications that I can remember. But it's possible they did speak. Well, it would have to... Um, it would uh, have to happened literally in between the time my dad went up to speak in the hallway. I don't know if anybody has ever been to the Milken conference or the conference similar to that. You walk in, you go to make your speech, you speak to people in the hallway, you speak to people after they make, uh, after he makes a speech, it comes down from the stage. But no, there was no meeting per se. Mr. Biden, you don't need to repeat it, but if you could speak up, I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice a little bit here. <clears throat> and Gates jumps in. So Mr. Biden, I'm going to draw your attention back to Exhibit 21, and this appears to be a discussion about the big guy in your subsequent correspondence. Why do you protest this 10% for the big guy? Well, you say I didn't protest. You don't have an email necessarily from me. Did you protest the 10%? If I had seen it, uh, I'm certainly that I would have done so. I would have picked up the phone and said, you're out of your mind. I literally probably didn't know what he was talking about because number one, if you look at it, the percentages are all wrong to begin with. The percentages were wrong that I would never go into business partnership with my uncle in which I got 20%, my uncle got 10. He would be a partner in it. That's number one. Unless your dad was getting 10%. No. Let's go back to the reference to the phone call. That's not what it says in there. Excuse me, Mr. Biden. I was in the middle. You asked him a question. Do you want to know the answer uh, or do you want to make a speech? Mr. Lovell, uh, Mr. Lowell, I have limited time. I'm going to ask the question. This is not a public hearing. If it was a public hearing, I'm aware, Mr. Biden. Uh, my next question is to you whether or not you placed any phone call or engaged in any effort to protest 10% for the big guy. I do not know. Uh, just I do not remember seeing this until it became part of every story that promoted about this. I don't remember if I picked up the phone 
or what I said, but I know that I would have absolutely objected to it if I saw it, which is evidenced by the fact that my father was never an equity holder in any business which I was involved in with Tony Bobolinsky. Yeah, I guess the question is whether or not you received that information and protested in some way other than in writing if you didn't protest it or if you don't remember. Am I to understand your testimony correctly that you do not remember whether you or not you protested this concept of an agreement to give 10% to your father? Again, I can't answer that question other than to say is that if I had read it and understood it to be my father, I would have protested. However, how often do you reply to emails that you don't read? At that time, I think I replied to a lot of emails I don't fully read. And you have whatever. You have all my emails. You have every email that I've ever written and ones that I never wrote. Mm, that's fascinating. You have emails that I, every email I've ever written and ones that I never wrote. And so I can tell you that many times you miss something. You don't see it. But regardless of anything, I can tell you this. My father was never an equity holder in any business I was ever in. Whatever was proposed never occurred. What was proposed here occurred during 2017 when my father was neither in office nor a candidate for office. So explain to me, I'm sorry that I didn't live up to the standards that you created about my response to emails, but it didn't happen. So I obviously objected. It seems odd that someone is articulating a family member's yours getting part of a deal. You know, in the context of this impeachment inquiry, have all of these protests about that, but you can't recall whether or not those ever materialized. Mr. Gates, in 2019, is that a question or a statement? I really mean it. Is that a question? We'll move on. In 2019, did you drop your laptop at a repair shop? Not that I remember, no. Did you ever have a laptop in 2019? I've had many laptops. Did you typically keep a separate laptop for work or personal, or was it usually one laptop you operate with? I don't know. I think there was a distinction between necessarily work and personal. Did you ever recall having dropped off a laptop at a repair shop? He asked and answered, Mr. Gates. No, Mr. Law, I asked if you recalled in 2019. Now I'm asking if you ever recalled it. I'll point out that, as I said, um, there are litigations about that issue, and I'll give you some leeway. But one thing I discussed with the staff is that we were, uh, weren't going to get the claims in litigation by the people that are both suing Mr. Biden and vice versa. But ask your question. Mr. Lowell, I'll, let, I'll tell you what. If I ask a question, you believe you've negotiated the scope of how to just indicate such. Well, it depends on where you go next. Did you ever drop off a laptop at a, at a repair shop? I dropped off a laptop at a repair shop that was literally three blocks from my office in Washington, D.C. If I was ever going to repair one, I would have walked up the street and dropped it there. Did you ever uh, drop off a laptop in Delaware? The Apple Store in Georgetown. Yeah, my question is about Delaware. Did you ever drop off a laptop in Delaware? The largest Apple Store in America is the highest grossing and largest Apple Store in America is the Christi uh, Christiana Mall. If I was going to drop off a laptop, I don't remember doing that, but if I was going to drop off a laptop, I would have gone to the Apple Store, which is seven minutes from my parents' home. Do you ever recall leaving a laptop at a repair shop? I do not. On your laptop, did you have any kind of login credential? Just the typical, you know, like when you log into your, yes, of course. Do you have two-factor authentic authentication? I don't know. Did anyone else have access to your laptop, legally or illegally? I'm just asking the question in the broadest term, Mr. Lowell. <laughs> I, don't not, uh, I do not know if anyone else had access. And what do you mean by access? Did they have access to my passwords? They actually have physical access to my laptop. Did anyone else use your laptop? Well, at the time, three daughters and all teenagers. I had a niece, nephew. Did they use your laptop? I'm certain at some point. Did they have separate logins or do they have your own login? Well, they would have had separate logins, I believe. I don't remember any. Have you seen, have you seen the coverage of this laptop? Reports to be yours that was dropped off in Delaware, right? Yes, yes, I've seen coverage. In any of the coverage, have you seen any correspondence or other material that you know to be fabricated or false? So yes, I do. <clears throat> what? And I can tell you in particular, there's a fabricated conversation between me and a supposed Secret Service agent in a hotel room in Los Angeles. That Secret Service agent was, has sworn an affidavit and attempted to sue the Daily Mail and the New York Post over the fact that he's never met me. He's never had any conversation with me. He's never involvement with me. And he's never had any association whatsoever. And he swears, other than that conversation, are there any others that you recall? Yeah, there are many others. I can't go through all of them right now. But yes, there are many different things in that that are either that are either fabricated, hacked, stolen, or manipulated 100%. Just list them for me. I got to list you all of the... We'll refer to you to the litigation in Delaware where that can be found, including Mr. Costello, Mr. Giuliani's statements. That's exactly what they did. Yeah, and all of those things you have in those documents. Is, and then Gates, yes. and by the way, um, like that in and of itself, they're not, he's not copying to the fact that this fucking shit ever happened. And I would like to argue that in a lineup, John Paul McIsaac, the guy from the Delaware repair shop, who just happens to know Rudy Giuliani's lawyer and is, and is a total trumper, magically receives a laptop from a guy that, um, you know, that vaguely looks like Hunter Biden, but then to that guy, mm, to that guy, so would Don Jr. I'm dead serious. Don, John Paul McIsaac 
could not tell the difference between Hunter Biden and, and Don Jr. in a lineup. Dead serious. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. And neither of those two human beings, as far as I know, have ever been five inches from his fucking face where he got a good look at them. So it does, yeah, for the record. Um, okay, is Bar- Burisma a corrupt company? I do not believe Burisma is a corrupt company. So you take exception with Jeffrey Pyatt's criticisms of Burisma. No, I don't take exception with Mr. Uh, Ambassador Pyatt's criticism of Burisma at that time. I think there was an enormous amount of pressure that Burisma and the Ukrainians were under, and Ambassador Pyatt was doing his job in criticizing Ambassador Prosecutor Shokin for not doing it, going after the people that were perceived to have been involved in corruption in Ukraine. And the people associated with Burisma got into legal trouble. That doesn't flavor your view of them as a corrupt company? Who's that? I'm asking you. Who are the people you're talking about that got into legal trouble? Anyone. Name one. Can you name Can you name who got in trouble, please? You ask the question, who are you referring to? Who? Zlovchevsky. Okay. <clears throat> Zlovchevsky has never been indicted. He's never had, he's never been prosecuted. He actually was, Mr. Gay, actually investigated. Yeah, I didn't say prosecutor indicted. Uh, what was the question? Investigated, like the people were, like those people were investigated. Yes, and there was no prosecution that were ever brought against them. Um, how many stones were you given by the Chinese? <laughs> As I recall, one. What value did you bring to Burisma? I'd love to, again, read you the entirety of my resume. No, that's the things you did before Burisma. I mean, when you were working there. Well, that's the value that I brought to Burisma. The things that I did before, my experience, the vast experience I had. I was over thir- uh, I was on over 13 boards. I was the chairman of the board of the largest humanitarian organization that supports the largest humanitarian organization in the world. I was the vice chairman of the board of the largest national uh, passenger rail system. Mr. Biden, I don't need you to go back through your resume. You just asked. The question is, how do you deploy the experience for a million bucks a year for Burisma? How did I just deploy the experience? By serving on the board in a transparent and ethical way, providing the best advice I could give, just like any other board member on any other company in any other organization, that's how you provide value. And the value of your experience, the value is your ability to then transfer that experience into real world action. But you didn't have any experience as an energy executive, did you? Well, I would. I would like you to understand what a board is. If you look at any board, most boards do not pick board members that are necessarily members of the particular industry which they are in. What they do is they pull from different areas in which there is need. They don't need anyone to tell them how to drill natural gas. What they need is someone to be able to help them with oversight and accountability and to do corporate governance. What they need was someone like Alan Apter, who is not an energy executive, but a lawyer in working at what needs you fill. What they, I'm not finished, what they needed was someone like Kofor Black, who had a wide range of experience in foreign policy and in that area of the world. What they needed was like someone like President Kwasniewski, who, was, who had a real understanding of the issues and the pressures they were under at the time, none of which were energy executives. And I don't. I, wouldn't cha- I would challenge you to look at the Fortune 500 companies. What needs you fill, Mr. Biden? What need did you fill? What need was corporate governance. And I was in a, a council of Bois Schiller and one of the big, best law firms in the world at the time. You know I uh, specialize in corporate governance. I was the chairman of the corporate governance on the Amtrak board. Were you on drugs when you were serving on, as the Burisma board member? I'm not objecting to that. Hold on. One of the things that I spoke to your staff and just asked about whether it's outside the bounds. If you want to spend the next part of the last hour asking about drug use, go at it. It's outside the scope. It certainly has no relevance to an impeachment inquiry, nor does it have anything to do with oversight of ethics legislation that may address family members of the president, the uh, president's or vice president. So go at it. But it's outside the scope and you're wasting your time. Were you on drugs when you're on the Burisma board? Um, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Gates, look me in the eye. You really think that's appropriate to ask me? Absolutely. Of all the people sitting around the table, do you think that's appropriate to ask me? Yeah. Are you going to answer it? You, Lowell, you don't have to answer it. I'm not going to answer it. I've been explicit about, so you're telling me, I'll answer this way. I've been absolutely transparent about my drug use. Again, I spoke to you earlier this morning about that. I'm sorry. I'm an addict. I was an addict. I have been in recovery for over four and a half years now, Mr. Gates. I work really, really hard at it. Let me answer. I work really hard at it under an enormous amount of pressure. Was I an addict? Yes, I was an addict. What does that have to do with whether or not you're going to go forward with an impeachment of my father other than to simply try to embarrass me? Mr. Biden, why? Why? We're asking the questions, not you. So I guess I'm, and by the way, uh, he's being asked by, uh, questions by a guy who's under an ethics investigation by the his own beloved House Republicans for doping um, teenagers and fucking them and flying them uh, over state lines. So sex trafficking, human trafficking, drugging underage girls, providing them with fake IDs, doing drugs himself, bragging about it. Um, yeah. So 
That's why. That's why Hunter Biden said that, for the record. <clears throat> so I guess I'm trying to get a timeline for your addiction, because in this testimony, you seem to take accountability for some actions and not others. You say your addiction is the reason why you're unable to be accountable for the junk message that you sent. I never said I'm not accountable. And so, excuse me, Mr. Biden, I'm going to get a timeline of your addiction so we can ascertain which message you sent might have been impacted by addiction, which weren't. It's not to embarrass you. I wish you well in your recovery. So let's get over there. When did you first become an addict? We're not going into his addiction. So we're not going to tell us when, Mr. Biden, I can answer that question, um, was uh, was and wasn't on drugs and when we're going to figure out his influence peddling. <laughs> Just drop influence peddling. Just introduce the term. So, you know, we're in the middle of his influence peddling, whether he was peddling it while he was fucking high or not. Uh, if you've ever been in a 12-step program, okay, okay, Mr. Gates, if you're going to continue to go down this road, I'll answer it this way. I don't think anyone ever begins, has a start date for their addiction. If you've ever been to a 12-step program, you know what you do. You give your history, okay? You go in, you talk about the first time you ever took a drink, first time you ever became, uh, 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 that I became an addict or an alcoholic. That is the time. Over the course of ten, my years of my life, I have many instances in which I've gone and had long stretches of sobriety in which I was adhering to whatever program I had or whatever support I was getting, and I was doing that. Does that addiction impact your judgment? You're not letting me answer fully. I think addiction impacts everyone's judgment, of course. Does it affect your impulses? Yes, I'm not a doctor. What do you mean impulses? Does it affect your memory of events? Yes, I'm certain it does. I'm not certain you can read in any, I'm not a doctor, but I can tell you from experience that addiction affected every, you know, <clears throat> you could stop, you got your answer, every portion of my life. And so since your addiction affected every portion of your life, did every portion of your life include your business activities? In what way? In any way. Well, be specific what you're asking, because I can tell you this, if there's something called a high functioning addict in which you can, what did I say earlier, guys? What did I, I mean, I just, how good, how do I just, I, am I just going to keep being this good at it? I am. I really am. All right. <laughs> uh, in which you can actually go to a board meeting, you can actually participate in the board meeting that you can actually provide. Are you a high functioning addict? I think I was until I wasn't. And were you a high functioning addict while you were on the Burisma board? I don't, not, not the entire time I was on the Burisma board, no. Were you a high-functioning addict when you were working on the CEFC deal? Yes, probably. But again, have you ever bribed anyone? No, Mr. Gates. Have you ever solicited a bribe? No, I've never solicited a bribe. Have you ever uh, had anyone solicit a bribe from you? No. <clears throat> you work globally, so you're familiar with Foreign Corrupt Practices uh, Act, right? Yes. And under the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, you can actually be guilty of paying a bribe if you pay money to a family member, right? Excuse me? Are you going to indulge in a discussion of what the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act does? I'm going to ask a question. Is your background in Foreign Corrupt Practices Act? My background is I'm a member of the House Judiciary Committee. And I've allegedly doped a teenage girl and flew her to Georgia for a sex party where I uh, had to crush and snort Viagra and drink energy drinks to keep up with my own prurient desires. Um, <clears throat> I know that particular... Uh, I know that. Apparently not reading the Foreign Corrupt Practice Act. Look, are you familiar with how family member payments on uh, can function as bribes? Yes or no? I'm generally aware of the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. I have no specific knowledge of the actual statute. If you'd like to put the statute in front of me, I can read it. But we can both give you... That's a great idea. Do we have that? Can we follow up the correct act so we can do this for real? How many LLCs do you manage? I'm sorry. Are you done with the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act? Are you done interrupting my questions? I thought it was between questions. It wasn't. Okay. So let me ask you about your LLCs. How many LLCs do you operate? Currently operate one LLC. And how many have you operated? Did you operate when your father was vice president? Hold on. I have a list. Do you have a list of my LLCs? No. Okay. So I know this. More than 10? No, definitely not. I know this. It was when I first went into business for myself, I created an LLC. I believe the first LLC I created was called Owasco. That would be where my equity would be. Any business person knows that when you do that is not... Uh, uh, what you do, you do not do business in your own name. You create a limited liability company registered in a state. Most do in Delaware, Nevada, or other places. I'm going through the ones. You just asked me a question. I just want the number. I don't need a description. I don't have a number off the top of my head. You said definitely not more than 10. That answered my question. So have you ever had a meeting for a real estate investment fund at a Chinese embassy? How does that answer the question? I don't understand. You asked me how many LLCs I had. You don't have to understand my questions. I was going to go. Through, <laughs> you don't have to understand my questions. Well, that's helpful. I was going to go through the LLCs I had. You just had to answer. I, I do have to understand your questions. Isn't that the point of asking questions? Is the question the person is going to answer it understands it? What do you mean I don't have to understand it? Mr. Biden, did you ever have a meeting with your investment fund at the Chinese embassy? No, I did not have a meeting with my investment fund at the Chinese embassy that I remember. I know exactly there was, I met the ambassador, the Chinese ambassador. I don't remember exactly. Do we have a document you want to show me? No, I just have a question to ask you. I just answered it. Okay. Do you recall a meeting April 28th at the Chinese embassy? 
What year? 2011. No, I don't recall that at the top of my head, but I'm going to mark Exhibit 23 and email, provide a copy to you. Okay. Uh, I had no investment fund in 2011. So this purports to be an email from Marvin Langview, Hunter. This is to confirm that you, uh, that the DCM, uh, Minister Dung, pronounced Dung, asked through a call that I received from Mr. Tao for you to come to the Chinese embassy and meet with Minister Dung for half an hour on Thursday, April 28th at 5.40 before our dinner. Does that refresh your recollection? Yes, I know exactly what this is about. Okay, well, what was the nature of this 30-minute meeting that you had with the ambassador? Well, uh, to go back to my LLCs, one of the business I had was an investment advisory firm that was licensed with the SEC and which is operated by a woman named Arlene Bush, who had 35 years' experience as an alternative investment advisor. And Eric Schwerin, who's the president of the company, I was the majority equity holder in that company. And what we did is we advised large institutional alternate investment funds on that were seeking capital. Um, and Mr. Lang, Marvin Lang, is a pretty world-renowned hedge fund operator that, excuse me, a private equity, realty, private equity investor that has billions of dollars under management. And he was going, at that time, like many other people around the world, wanted to uh, create a contact with potential investors inside of China. And I introduced counsel. You didn't provide the document in advance. Where is this from? I have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea. Okay. I have no idea either, so keep going. Okay. But anyways, it's that's the... So what was the business meeting at the Chinese embassy to raise funds for a business venture while your father was vice president? No, it's not. That's not what he said. That's not what I said at all. I said that Mr. Lang had an operating business, which was an alternate investment advisory firm that was operating under the SEC and a Eric Schwerin, who was licensed with as a Series 7 and Arlene Bush, who was also were introducing Mr. Lang to potential investors. Mr. Lang, Chinese investors, right? Or American investors? No, American investors, too, globally at that time. If you remember, Mr. Gates, you may not remember, but at the time, China had said that we were going to begin to invest outside with private money into both alternative investments and infrastructure projects. It was a big reawakening. It was a new day for China-U.S. relations. And many large institutional investors were seeking potential investors out of the largest country in the world, our biggest trading partner, everything. Didn't it strike you as odd that you're the son of the vice president and you're having this investment meeting at the Chinese embassy? They could choose to invest or not. It was Mr. Lang's fund. It was an investment for me. I was... What was the 30-minute meeting about beforehand, before the dinner that reflected this? About that. Okay. So was that a different subject than was covered at the dinner? No. It was the same issue that was covered at the dinner. I arrived early, went to pay my respects to Mr. Dung, who was the ambassador to the ambassador at the time, uh, Mr. Dung. Uh, I came to pay my respects before that dinner started. And so then there was no, it was very traditional, unique contents in the pre-dinner meeting and dinner. None whatsoever. And again, everything China does to have uh, does not have to be somehow criminal behavior. I don't understand, really. Did you ever get your dad's keys to any office you had? No, I never did. Uh, I'd like to mark exhibit 24 as this exhibit we've seen before. It's 24. I'd like to see it. This is the office space that they were supposedly sharing. And I don't know why this is This is one of the things they hang on to. It's fucking weird. <clears throat> I'd like to see it and take a moment to look over it. Of course. This email has been provided just in a different format. So uh, what is it in an R that you provided? Um, we have it in tab 507. In fairness, though, the agreement was that. I have no idea. Um... I understand. We did not hold you to every document, but I see that Mr. Gates has a number of documents sitting in front of him. The last time he asked for one, you said you have no idea where it's from. One of the reasons we get the documents in advance is to see if we believe them to be authentic and in providence, etc. I'm just proceeding as you're allowing this to go. Keep going. Understood. I just want to make note that I mentioned that members can come with their own documents, and they apparently have. So I guess, does this document refresh your recollection vis-a-vis -vis giving your dad keys to your office? Number one, it does not say I'm giving keys to my dad. I asked, and when my dad left office, I had an office space in Georgetown. And at the time, this was one of the time when I was in active addiction. My lease was up for renewal, and they were not going to renew my lease. And I said to them, look, I'm not going to be the sole person that's in this. I want it for the Biden Foundation, and this could be office space. It was a beautiful office space. It could be for my mom and dad. It never occurred. It didn't get, I didn't get the lease. I was, I was left the office, and no one in my family uh, or anyone else, including myself, ever got a key to the house in Sweden again. Um but it was your plan to have keys for them should they that lease be consummated. Literally, it, as I just said, it was not. It was my addicted brain at the time. It was a way to get my, I was going to redeem myself. I was going to show everybody that I was okay, that I wasn't out of my mind in the midst of addiction, and that I was going to do what was I was going to do to get my mom this beautiful corner office that, that was there, and she would love it, and they'd be okay, and everyone would go back to normal. And my dad was out of office now, and we could all do things as a family. And it just, you know, it was pie in the sky ridiculousness. They never took an office. They never got anything. And I didn't, I didn't even remain in that office. 
I guess the committee is trying to understand how to parse testimony where you say your father had nothing to do with your businesses. And then this email, how your testimony, uh, the way you were going to redeem yourself was by bringing your father into this office space and show your mother how to, great the corner office was. Motherfucker, he said it was for the Biden Foundation. How is that weird? He just told you. All right, understood. So does this strike you as your uh, intention? I guess you're confused. I must be about the actual de- evidence. My dad never took an office with me. No, but you were contemplating it in this email. I contemplated, contemplated a lot of things during this time. And that's what, because earlier you said, my father, firewall, nothing to do with my business. Now you're contemplating giving keys to your office to redeem yourself. How is this contemplation? Let me ask a question. How is contemplation of something evidence of involvement? I alone contemplate. I contemplate that one day you and I are going to be great friends. Is that ever going to happen, Mr. Gates? I don't think so. Hope springs eternal, Mr. Biden. No. Well, if you keep talking like this, I don't understand how it possibly could, because I don't think you're understanding and you're not uh, we're not on the same wavelength here. Contemplating is not involvement. Right. But it seems to speak against the bright line system you testified when Mr. Raskin was asked a question. My dad was out of office. The bright line that you had bright lines. My dad was out of office. So it's okay to do business with your dad when he's out of office is your testimony. Jesus Christ. Yes. That part, like, for fuck's sake, how many times? How many fucking times? Oh, yes, right again. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> oh, God. What a douchebag. That was all your dad was. So it's okay to do business with your dad when he's out of office. You're done. Of course it would be okay to do business with my dad when he's out of office. With the Chinese and with Burisma? This is about doing business with the Chinese. I wanted it for the Biden Foundation, for it to be housed in the office space I had. I just contemplated that. Seems like a distinction without a difference. There's a difference between the Biden Foundation and doing business with the fucking Chinese? The cancer moonshot and fucking Burisma? That's a distinction and a difference, you dumbass. Oh my God. Stop. Sorry. I didn't hear what you just said. I'll strike that because it was fucking dumb. Wait, the Biden Foundation is not a distinction with doing corporate business? Is that what you said? No, that's not what I said. Oh, okay. All right. I'll, I'll get to my next, my last exhibit. It's 25. Can we read it for a second? Sure. So the records show we had not been provided this advance. It's a multi-page purported to be some text exchange. I don't understand what XR Vision is on the third page, so where it indicates it's from. It's It has some name that's blotted out in the front, and then the next page, there's a red line in the second, so I just need to read this. I have it. I mean, generally I have it, but go ahead. Why is this clock stop? Because we're waiting for you to tell us you're ready to proceed. Okay. The clock is not on when you're reading a new exhibit that you've been provided in adv- haven't been provided in advance. We stopped it when you were making your statement about the document. So, did you send this message to your daughter? I don't know. Again, I don't know where you got this text message. I sent many messages to my daughter, but I have no reason to believe that you would. I don't know that I'm reading over it. It's a. I'm going to draw your attention to this third, fourth paragraph. It's going to be the same shit about it, half the fucking, half your money shit or whatever. Yes, first page. Sometimes Pop can't help himself. There's literally not a single brain cell he has used considering the impact <clears throat> would be on me or anyone else. His factoring in the family had been simply to gauge whether any of us have screwed up so bad that it would diminish his chances. He cannot say over and over again, and it's true, that there's nothing any of us have done that even impacts the voters. The voter in the margin and say that the skeletons of family, uh, and say that how the skeletons of the family may make it hard. It doesn't say skeletons. Gates says it does. It says skeletons. Capital S. Okay, my apologies. Skeletons of his family may make it hard for him to put us through the ringer in the pursuit of his office. It sure it's just pure bullshit. Continues regardless. He he's still using it line by proxy. He doesn't say it himself that directly, but all of his advisors do. Do you recall sending that? No, I don't recall sending this. But I can tell you this, Mr. Gates. Number one is this. This is me supposedly to me uh to my daughter, February twenty second, twenty nineteen. I'm literally on a daily basis trying to kill myself. It had nothing to do with business. It doesn't have to do with anything. It's me contemplating, it's me complaining in every different way, shouting out at the world and literally in complete and utter agony. And my beautiful daughter is literally trying to save my life and reach out to me. And I go on a tangent and a tirade and I act like a child. And I say things I would never, ever, ever, ever want to be read because they don't resemble anything resembling the truth about the way I think about my dad, who literally was also at this time trying to save my life. And so I don't know what you're, tra- what you're trying to get at here. I was just asking you sent the message. It sounds like you do remember sending it. My question is, that's not what I said, Mr. Gates. Uh... Mr. Lowell, literally no. You can keep stating his testimony for him or let the transcript state his testimony, but don't mischaracterize it. Well, it certainly seemed like he uh, he remembered it. A lot of things seem things that uh, 
a lot of things seem things to you that nobody else in this room uh, would seem to be the truth. <laughs> okay, Gates. Which advisors are you referencing? Do you have children, Mr. Gates? What? What's that? Do you have children? It's not about me and my family, Mr. Biden. It's about your... I'm trying to get to the point, Mr. Gates. Um, I'm asking you a question about uh, which advisors you're referencing. If you had a private message in your worst moment with your child, is this private... Uh, you mean his... Uh, I don't think he has a real child, but you mean the one he oddly adopted from the neighborhood who also has parents but lived at his house? Hmm. Um, is this a private message you sent at your worst moment? How does this have anything to do with, I want to know which advisors you're talking about who are warning you that your corrupt activities might have impacted your father negatively. Again, I apologize. I don't want to get emotional about this because I'm not. And I apologize, I really do. Is that I cannot verify the forensic certainty of the message because you have not provided me with any forensic certainty. I don't know whether it was manipulated or not. I don't know if one word was added or another taken out. I can't, neither can you, and neither can anyone. And that's the point, because I do know other text messages were manipulated. I do know that we're for certain, it's like, it's like he's been listening. And if, and, uh, if, if people have been listening, and I, I think that they have. Mm. I appreciate it. I, I, I know I'm not the only smart person in the world, but I do know that I've been on this beat longer than fucking anybody else. And, and I, I have to believe that at some point they paid attention to some of my videos about this shit on how to go back against this because it sounds very familiar. Um, <clears throat> I don't know whether it was manipulated or not. And Abby Lowell is very smart, so I, I, I won't take credit for it. I'm just saying, <clears throat> you're welcome. So, <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Um, and that's the point because I do know other tech messages, were, text messages were manipulated. I do know that we know for certain that there's a guy named, and there's a guy named Smirnoff who's going around and making up lies. There's a guy named Gal Luft who is going out and making up lies. You've exceeded the scope of the question, Mr. Biden, and I only have another moment. So I'm answering it in full. Yeah. So did any of your father's advisors speak to you about your conduct being problematic for his political ambitions? No, never, never. Those are my questions. Mr. Biden, Harriet Hagman. For, oh, God. Mr. Biden, Harriet Hagman from the state of Wyoming. Nice to meet you, Congresswoman. Can you, can you hear me okay down there? Can the court report? Can you hear me okay? I can. Harriet Hageman, H-A-G-E-M-A-N, state of Wyoming. I have a couple questions that I could go over with you, and they're going to be some of them that are sensitive. I'm not going to ask you those questions to embarrass you or cause you any heartache. I'm asking you questions because I think that the timeline we're dealing with here is very, very important. You have repeatedly pointed out to your education, your background, your history, your experience, and your resume as the basis for your qualifications to work for Prisma, the richest man in China, Romania, etc., 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 correct? Yes. Okay. You also stated, I believe in your book, that you had a raging crack cocaine addiction during the time. And I'm trying to be sensitive. <clears throat> during the same period of time that you were working for these companies from 2003 to 2009. Is that correct? No, not completely. Not the entirety of the time. And if you read the book, it provides a general timeline of when the acute addiction to crack began and ended. But I believe that if the book was around 2003 when it began, when in 2019 you recovered since then. Is that fair? Uh, n n not even remotely close. Okay, can you tell me the timeline then? No, I cannot tell you the exact timeline, but I did never use crack in 2003. I, my, I began, I think, it says in the book, I think sometime in 2016 or so. Okay, you've confirmed that those addictions, those addictions today, correct? Uh, which addictions are you talking about, ma'am? That you had crack cocaine addiction today, correct? You've confirmed that, correct? Yes, today, correct that, yes? <clears throat> Congresswoman, He's made a long statement saying he was a high functioning, not high functioning, his areas of sobriety. He, I would rather you not testify on his behalf. He can either tell me whether I'm correct or not. We'll just have him answer the questions. Okay. 
What the? Oh. Okay, miss. Thank you! <clears throat> Sorry. So! What, what I want to find out is during the time period that you've been working for various companies, you had addictions that you confirmed today correct. <clears throat> yes, I, I think the most acute addiction that I had was alcoholism at that time. All right! So, between alcoholism and crack cocaine, you had those addictions during the time period you worked for these companies correct. Um, not, not the entirety of the time, but some of the work that I did, <clears throat> well, that, well, I would say that we are familiar with the laptop and we've indicated that we believe these things are on, on here. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. What? Uh, what? That are not accurate. Okay, I'm sorry. W what laptop? The laptop that was dropped off with the person in Delaware. That is... Have you... The subject of your lawsuit! This, uh, by the way, can I just say at this moment... Can I... Can I... I'm gonna totally fucking take credit for this next line. Have you seen that laptop? me have you actually seen that laptop well no but i have seen things from it N no i i know but have i'm asking have you actually seen the actual laptop no i haven't but i don't think for purposes does anyone know the existence of an mr biden actual laptop mr biden for purpose of my question today i do not need to i'm i'm sorry have the physical laptop in front of me if you cannot answer my question please say so and we will move on <sighs> miss miss hagman i'm not being i'm i'm not in any way so i'm sorry i'm trying to answer the question i've never all right! I've, uh, I've never. Well, I would like you to focus on answering my questions. So in terms of what we have seen through some of the photographs, the information from the laptop, from the information from your book, I would say that I don't believe that that represents someone who would be responsible, considered professional for any multi-million dollar international deals focused on corporate governance. Would you agree with that? <clears throat> Again, I think that uh, addiction is a very difficult thing to be able to define. And I think that uh, there are moments of time when you can be fully competent. And I think there are a lot of people around this room who suffer from alcoholism that are still in this room and they're still functioning. Ah! Then let me ask you a question this way, Mr. Biden. Just by virtue, I'm answering the question. Mr. Biden! Miss Hagman! You're not answering my question! I promise you. You're filibustering. I'm answering the question. So here's my question in terms. I don't know why you're being so hostile. I'm, uh, I'm trying. In terms of your qualification expertise, did you tell your handlers and people you work with the Burisma, the Chinese company, etc., of your addictions? Um, what do you mean by handlers? People that you work with at Burisma. Oh, you call them handlers? Do you have handlers? No. But I think you do. Well, that's, uh, that's... So let's go ahead. I guess that's your opinion, I guess. But I'll restate the question, Mr. Biden. I'm trying to answer your question. Um, Let me restate the question. Uh, Congressman, I don't want it. Your attorney apparently, whoops, sorry. Your attorney <laughs> apparently does not like um, to interrupt, but if you're going to ask a question, please let him answer your question before you interrupt him. You, you interrupted me, so I am. So let's not interrupt. Restating the question. 
um, eat, uh, each other anymore. That's a deal. That's a deal. <laughs> okay. All right. So, my question for you in terms of your qualification expertise, did you tell the folks at Burisma, the Chinese company, Romania, etc., of your alcohol and drug addiction? I uh, don't remember if anyone actually told me, uh, I actually told you directly about it, but it was uh, at the end, it was fairly obvious that I had a problem. Okay. So, you know, at the end, what do you mean at the end? But before I got sober? And when would that be? I, again, I, I feel like I have to explain what addiction is. You don't have to explain addiction. I'm asking for dates. Okay. Uh, I don't have... Because if you understand addiction, you don't you don't have any necessarily any dates. The the one thing you, you you remember is this: you you remember the day you quit. You remember the day you first started when you were 11 years old and you had your first drink. And you don't remember all the times in between in which you weren't an addict and which you were sober and which you tried to get sober and which you had long stretches of sobriety during that period of time. I mean, everybody knows this. Everybody has someone they love through that's gone through this. It's Mr. Biden. I'm answering the question. I'm using your terminology. I'm really trying to answer your question. You said at the end. And I said, what did you mean by at the end? At the end. Yes! Um... The date that I know I stopped using drugs and alcohol. And when was that? Uh, that date was officially, I think, not, I think, it is June 1st. Of what year? 2019. Well, you've testified today that you were serving on the board of Burisma in a transparent and ethical way to quote from you and that you were providing oversight and accountability in corporate governance. Again, quoting from you, don't you believe you had a fiduciary responsibility to inform Burisma and the other folks that you were working with about... Uh, okay. About your addiction. <clears throat> Thank you for your question. Um, I would ask this question. Do you think that every colleague of yours or anyone that you work for that's, uh, that's an alcoholic, which I can guarantee you at least 30% of the people you serve with uh, suffer from alcoholism, that they're either in recovery or active addiction. Do you think it's incumbent upon them, if they suffer from alcoholism, that they immediately resign? <laughs> that wasn't my question. <clears throat> Well, I'm answering. Would you please read me back my question? That that's how that's exactly how I'm answering your question. Oh, can't read back the question. Well, then I'll state it again. Uh, I will say this is that I have a fiduciary responsibility to do my job. Based upon that, it's not necessarily that because you're an alcoholic or because you're an addict, whether you're in recovery or otherwise, that you, you need to leave your job. I didn't ask you whether you had to leave your job. Fiduciary responsibility. I asked you whether you had fiduciary responsibility. Of course, any board member to provide any notice has fiduciary responsibility. Please let me answer my question. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Did you have any fiduciary responsibility to ask him of your question due to your addiction? <clears throat> I had fiduciary responsibility to complete the work that they required of me at times that I did the work. And is that what you, and you're again, an expert in oversight and accountability and corporate governance, 
Yes. And you're not aware of what your fiduciary and ability responsibilities would be at all. I never said that I wasn't aware of my fiduciary responsibilities. I'm saying that addiction is something that is not necessarily pinned to a time. It's transient. During that period of time, which I served on the board, I was constantly in recovery and constantly failing and constantly back in recovery and constantly failing. It was not a secret. I've been in recovery since 2003, Ms. Hagman. And I'm trying to answer your question. In that period of time, I had gone through long stretches of sobriety. They knew that when I went to a, my business partner knew that I went to rehabs and I went to over a dozen rehabs toward the end there. They all knew that. I had to pay for it out of the insurance from Rosemont Seneca. All my partners there knew it. Rob Walker knew it. James Gillier knew it. All the people I worked with, Devin Archer knew it. They all knew. And there were other people that knew. And like people that are alcoholics or addicts is that you can either make a go of hoping that they can get better or you can just say, no, like, hold on, my, oh, pardon me one second. Uh, my girl's calling me, but I don't have my phone in the room. Hold on, one, pausing. All's well. By the way, if you need a great show to see while you're in Las Vegas, please check out Ladylike at the Virgin Casino. Uh, it's my girl's show, and I'm very proud of her for putting it on. She's there. They had an issue with one of the, they had to swap out a performer, so they had to do work for that and stuff and whatever. Anyways, hi. Um, <clears throat> I had to make sure that I didn't need to, you know, cut in, you know, she, she's going to like come back and I had to make, you know, I want to make dinner for her or something like that. Yeah. Anyways, Hi. I have a super phone. Yes, I, I I I can answer I can answer phone calls on my watch because I'm cool like that. 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 I'm cool. Like Let's get back to my questions. All right. Um. <laughs> Hunter finds lives out. You're doing coke. Not anymore. You aren't. Um. Let's see. Uh. Where were we? And like people are addicts, say recovery would say. All right. Does they include your fellow members or anybody employed by Burisma or some of the other companies or any companies you work for? Yes. Countries. I'm sorry, what countries are you testifying? Oh, sorry, that was that was Mr. Lowell. He doesn't look like that at all. Countries? I'm sorry, what countries are you testifying to? Romania. I never I never worked for Romania. Okay. Uh, um, no, 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 not okay. I never worked for a country. I'm not Jared Kushner. I never got money from a country. I, not one foreign government ever gave me money. Guys, none, not zero, not one. Then let me re-answer that question. <clears throat> yes. Were the folks at Burisma, were they aware of your uh, addiction? Yes, Devin Archer was fully aware of my addiction, and he was fully aware of my attempts to get in recovery, and... But then what about the gentleman? I'm trying to answer the question, Miss Hagman. Sorry, one second. What about the gentleman from China? Was he aware of your... Whoops, sorry. Was he aware of your addiction? I can let someone go the clip. Wrong face. Sorry. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm doing. Fuck. <clears throat> yeah, take two. I'm trying to answer the question, Miss Eggman. What about the gentleman from China? Was he aware of your addiction? I, I really thought we weren't going to interrupt each other. I'm, I'm telling you, yes, because, the, because I was on the board... Devin Archer was on the board. James Thornton, I mean, excuse me, James Bulger was also on that board. They knew I suffered from addiction. They knew I was in recovery. And yeah, each one of them knew. And how did this addiction manifest itself in terms of your ability to function at your job? What are you are doing? Over the course of time of my addiction, it manifests itself in many different ways. Sometimes it was completely debilitating. Sometimes I could function higher than I felt like I was when I was sober. Sometimes it made me feel like I could do anything. Sometimes it made me feel like I could do nothing. 
It's that it's the nature of addiction. It's the nature of drug addiction. Sometimes it kills you and sometimes you're dead. <laughs> and you are suffering from these kinds of issues at the very time when you are working for and the board of say again, for example, could, uh, could you repeat the question for me? Yes! You were suffering from these problems during the very period of time that you were on the board of directors for Burma, for example. Uh, I was suffering from addiction. As I said to you before, the first moment I took a drink, I would categorize myself as an alcoholic and, and an addict. And then uh, that began with my first drink when I was 11 years old. During that period of time, I've uh, gone between recovery and otherwise. Right now, I'm sure you're happy to hear that I'm clean and sober. I've been clean and sober since June 1st of 2019. I remain so today. And I hope and pray on a daily basis. I give gratitude to the fact that I have regained my life and every single mor morning that I wake up and I hope to remain sober for the rest of my life. But all I know is, Mr. Biden, I have today, Mr. Biden, during that period of time. I'm not going to drink today and I'm not going to use today. During the period of time that you were working for Burma, Miss me, Miss me, was also the time that coincided with your father being vice president of the United States, correct? Y yes. Mr. Biggs, thank you. Uh, thanks for being here today. Did they just get rid of her? They just dumped her at that point. She just, correct? They just, <laughs> they, they scrub her? Yes. Mr. Biggs? <laughs> and uh, that was immediately followed by like, <laughs> All right, so uh, and then they go into uh, Biggs and scene. By the way, I think that that's that bit alone is worth the, the subscription, a like, a subscribe, or something. That's going to be a single clip by itself. Hunter Biden versus Harriet Hagman. <laughs> Oh, shit. All right. <laughs> Hold on. I got to... This, this picture is bugging me. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit better. All right. <laughs> uh, how's that? How, how's everybody doing over on Instagram? Well, okay. You did pee a little? Mission accomplished. That's all I'm saying. Mission fucking accomplished. Um, <laughs> Mr. Biggs. Thanks for being here, Mr. J uh, Mr. Biden. I would just say I'm going to ask you uh, certain uh, questions. If he doesn't know or understand the question, uh, uh, he is free to consult with you. Uh, uh, that's not the way it works, Congressman. But uh, give it your best shot. That's the way I'm going to ask him. To, I'm going to ask him to jump in when it's appropriate for him to jump in. That's right. Okay. He's because he's my legal counsel. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You ask a bad question, I'm going to ask you to clarify it. I'm going to ask you about Exhibit 12. Thank you, Exhibit 12. So when you get to Exhibit 12, this is a series of text messages here, emails, I'd say. Yeah. And I just want to make sure I understand this because one of the items mentioned here is U.S. publicity or in private communication comment expressing their positive opinion. Is this what BS was supposed to do in support of Nikolai Burisma and the highest level of decision makers here in Ukraine, President of Ukraine, Chief of Staff, Prosecutor General, etc.? Who was the Prosecutor General at that time, if you know? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that's choking. <clears throat> Okay, who was the prosecutor general at the time, November 2nd, 2015? I'm not sure. Okay, tell me about Devin. How long have you known Devin Archer? I've known Devin since 2007, 2008, maybe earlier, maybe 2006. 15 years or more, probably something like that? Yes. And he's been your active business partner at various enterprises over the years, I assume? Not necessarily business partner, but Devin and I tried to attempt to do business together. We were closely integrated. We tried to do a lot of business together, yes. Um, and Mr. Archer currently is, he's been convicted. He's waiting. I think he's trying to appeal, but he's also... Uh, reported to the Bureau of Prisons sometimes fairly soon? Yeah, that's true. 
And that's something that has arisen out of something I think that is often referred to as the Indian bond scheme. Are you familiar with that? I'm familiar that he was indicted and is going to be serving a prison sentence soon. Regarding the Indian bond scheme, no, I have no knowledge of the Indian bond scheme, but I've read the... Are you familiar with a company called Burnham? I am. Do you have any active participation in Burnham, uh, either as an equity holder, director, or officer? No. I don't think that ever came to fruition. I think that there was a proposal that I've been a part of that, but it fell apart uh, um, in all of this. <clears throat> so you never actually had any relationship to any of who were in Burnham trying to use pension funds to... No. Okay. And you're familiar with Jason Galanis, uh, John Galanis, Frank Galanis, Devin, and others? No, I know the name because it's been reported in the press. I think 10 years ago for 30 minutes, I was introduced to Jason Galanis, and that's only the only time I ever recall meeting him. So 10 years ago for 30 minutes. Okay, yeah, very good. So now I want to go back to Devin Archer again for a second. The Dubai telephone call that you indicated you did not call your father, but when Devin testified for us in front of us, he talked about this meeting that was had, and there was, I think, there was a dinner meeting. It was you, it was Levchevsky, the Secretary of Burisma and Devin were dining at a hotel in Dubai. Does that sound familiar? Yes. And Devin's testimony is that there was a discussion that the problems that Zlovchevsky was having with Shokin and the Prosecutor General in Ukraine. I think the transcript specifically said pressure in general. Pressures in general. Yeah. He indicated pretty clearly it was coming from within Ukraine. Do you, do you remember that? I'm sorry. Can you read that one, please? Do you remember that? No, we're going to read. We don't have time to read it. Let's go. Um, well, then don't characterize it unless you're willing to show us the place you're referring to. Then you can look at it. You can look at it later. Here's what we're talking about. Here's what we're talking about. Do you remember the dinner? I would rather look at it after you ask me the question about it. So I, you already looked at it once. Mr. Pig, there are literally 2,000, 8,000 pages of documents you've given me. I've looked at over 27 exhibits today. This is earlier today. Over 400 pages you've given me. Let's answer the question. And you want me to recall, let's answer the question. Okay, I'll answer the question. I think you can answer the question. Okay, what is it? You had a dinner. Those are the people who were at the dinner I just mentioned. I don't recall the actual dinner. I know that if we had a dinner, the dinner was most likely with the entire board and every other board meeting. If we went other, uh, to dinner afterwards, it would be four or five board members and some of the senior management, including Nikolai. So you had a dinner. You think it's bigger than Devin testified to, but that's fine. Yeah, I don't exactly recall. Yeah. But I'm under the impression, listening to you right now, yeah, that you don't specifically remember a dinner with Slavchevsky was saying to you, I need some help, and you, and you left and maybe made a call to Washington, D.C. It's not that I don't remember that. I can say emphatically that I never, ever picked up the phone to call my dad to tell him anything. So, so on behalf of Burisma. I didn't ask that question, though, did I? Well, I thought you did. I said you called Washington, D.C. I don't recall calling Washington, D.C. So your testimony is contradictory to Devin's. Is that fair to say? I would say that my memory is definitely contradictory to Devin's as it relates to nine years ago, a dinner and a phone call that he was not a party to. So Devin testified, and this is why it's important that we have the transcript in front of us, Mr. Biggs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. That's great. It, it, brilliant. Do Hagman and Flappers? I can't because it's only a, I can only do it on the show. It's special. Um, I'm sorry. That two of my ch my chat windows are in different. One's very far behind. I, I'll bring it forward. Um, Burisma. <clears throat> it's important to uh, have the transcript in front of us uh, because he does not say that he was a witness to that phone call. What he says is that I walked away from the table, and what he assumed was that I called DC. Well, Devin's assumption was wrong. I did not call DC. Who'd you call him? I could have called my, my, my wife. I could, I could have called anybody. You remember who you called? I have no idea about a phone call or otherwise. Neither does Devin Archer because he wasn't there. He self-admittedly wasn't there to witness a phone call. Right. So what we're getting at is you're telling us you can remember everything else about that. I did not say I remembered. I don't even remember the dinner. You don't remember. Well, then why are you testifying about it? Why did you say I can't remember it? Because, because you asked him a question. You asked him a question and Devin said there was a dinner. I'm saying I don't have any reason to believe there wasn't a dinner because at every board meeting, on every night that we were on a board meeting, we would have dinner together. So was there a dinner? Of course. So I'm testifying. All that I know is I don't recall a phone call. I know there was never a phone call to my father. I can say that under oath. Okay. And finally, is this, is that I also know by the testimony under oath of Devin Archer, he says he was not a witness to any phone call. Right. So you can all, you also testify that the book, the book was wrong. Your book was wrong. It was printed the wrong date. You testified that. No, no, actually it was right. Oh, it was actually right. But that's not what he, he testified to, Mr. Lowell. He said he wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. I thought because, no, no, no. Well, we've had the transcript to look back. I mean, you literally rely on the transcript. Well, luckily we're still here. So let's ask the question. When is the date that in his book, which he's talking about, is either 2013 or 2014? Is that the one we're talking about? Yeah. Let's go back to the book. Can we go back to the uh, exhibit? But regardless, uh, is this, is that I'm sorry I missed in a 270 page book, a typo, if it is such a typo, I have no idea. 
What is the 2013 date? Unbelievable. <laughs> How is it unbelievable, Mr. Biggs? I really don't understand. I'm not surprised you don't understand. So why are you not surprised? I really, is that, so here we go. Do you have the book? Yeah, we do. Okay, what's the right year? 2013, dad asked my then teenage daughter Finnegan to join him on Air Force Two to Japan. So this isn't even, we're not even talking about the same time. This is the, this is the transcript. I thought this was 2013. I was confused. I thought this happened in, so you're 2014. But I don't want to interrupt you, but I'm going to, you're confused. You were confused earlier today about your, when you, when you testified by your questioning, you're telling me you were just talking about a board meeting with Burisma in Dubai. Yeah. And then we moved on to this. Oh, we hadn't even moved on to it yet though. What? Yeah. Yeah. We had the question. You said this morning, I want to make this as clear as I possibly can. This morning, you testified, in my understanding, that your book was in error. In fact, I wrote it down when you said that date was in error. No. In your published book, is that what was wrong? If we, we will, I'm sure we'll have the transcript in 24 hours. But to clarify, I will make absolutely question, yeah, clear. We were doing questioning here. We were asking other questions related to other dates. There have been many, many dates thrown around today. I think probably a thousand times somebody has asked me about a date, time, this, this, and the other. This was... When I was reading this, it said 2013, and I said, is that right? Okay. I'm not sure if that's right. I thought it was a trip to China occurred in 2014. All right. I'm still not certain the exact date it happened, but it's not a, you don't view it as materiality. I get it. Whether it happened in 2013 or 2014. So I want you, I want to ask you, do you view that as materiality? I'm, I, I'm sorry. And now we have to tell you you're over your hour and uh, I, I'll give you two or three more minutes. I'm just, according to Mr. Green, uh, to Miss Green, the rules matter. They throw it back at Marjorie. Thank you. We're done. <laughs> I want to ask you one more question, though, with regard to the messages. I guess not. I guess not. <laughs> yeah, with regard to the messages, which are apparently, they look like photos of screenshots of a BlackBerry, right? Roughly speaking. You've seen a number of, yeah, that, that's what I'm told they are. Yeah. By your own admission, correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, the reason I'm asking yet, yeah, yeah, is because you went ahead and answered questions about those as if the contents were accurate. For instance, the conversation between Gilliard and Bobolinsky, et cetera. And I assume that when you were accepting with some of the modest amount of skepticism, the veracity, actually, I made an objection and said that because it is not authentic and is not complete, we don't know what it was. I put that on the record so somebody like you couldn't do what you just did. And I said, I will allow him to answer questions with the premise that we don't know that they are authentic or complete. And you can go back to the transcript for that as well. Yeah, do you? Tony didn't turn over his phone. I'll let you ask him that, but let me, I don't think he's talking to me. <laughs> They're not ta ta on talking terms anymore. Yeah, it looked like they weren't on talking terms early on either. But the question ultimately boils down to this. Do you question the veracity of those communications of those uh, evidence? I absolutely, I question the veracity of anything that comes from Tony Bobolinsky, including a photograph of a screenshot of a broken phone from nine years ago or six years ago or four years ago or whatever it is. I absolutely question the veracity of everything that comes out of Tony Bobolinsky's mouth. So your position is that those are not accurate at all. No, I didn't say that. I question, and I feel that I have the right to question the veracity of anything that comes from Tony Bobolinsky based on this. Tony Bobolinsky has a 302 in which his account from it is absolutely different from the six FBI agents that took notes during that, in which they said he was at a meeting in Miami that he was not at. That's why, one of the reasons, I have a problem with Tony Bobolinsky's veracity because Mr. Bobolinsky gave in to you and said that he never had a meeting with Mark Meadows uh, at a rally with Trump and wore a ski mask. And it seems as if Miss Hutchinson came up with a picture of Mr. Bobolinsky in a ski mask at a rally for Mr. Trump, which, by the way, is right here. I just like to say I have that on hand because I'm cool like that. <clears throat> That's why I question the veracity of anything Tony Bobolinsky has said, among other things. We're at time. We're up on our time. Mr. Biden, I think we have one member with one other question. I understand the scope of the rules. Would you be willing to allow, if we're done, Mr. Fallon to ask a question? This is Jim Jordan. I know, but is that, are we done for the day? Uh, why don't we turn around and let the Democrats go? And no, if we're done for the day, we had intend to have three rounds. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We had intended, as the agreement says, to have three rounds. We're going to let, we'll let this go further as your last round's time. That's fine. If you have a member to do that. We have a couple of members with a question. Let's do that. Fair enough. I understand. Very short questions. Okay. Mr. Jordan, and do we want to allow, I think we should allow our hours up, let the Democrats go and have a couple more questions from Republicans. <laughs> yeah, we want to let the Democrats ask their questions if they have questions. No, you said you have a couple of Republicans. We do that. We do. But if you guys have a few more to wrap up, I think you guys can go ahead. Yeah, I don't think we're going to have, if this is a wrap up, yes. Mr. Rasmussen, we're not going to have many questions at all. Did you need a break? No, we don't need a break. Let's wrap it up. 
Majority members, uh, you have one, please. Just a couple. Yeah, please go ahead. Thank you. Mr. Biden, just as far as addiction goes, my father was an alcoholic for 30 years. He passed away two years ago. His best years were his last 30, and he conquered it in 92. So I'm very sympathetic with, appreciate that, your plight. Yeah. And I don't think it was rather demeaning for a colleague across, uh, I think, and I did think it was rather demeaning for a college across the aisle to question you bring this up or try to instigate what we want to force you, push you into relapse. I think that's beyond the pale and that's the exact opposite of what we want. But I was quoting a prior witness who said that. Okay, we can read the transcript back to you. That's fine. So you said at 11.59 a.m. that the purpose of my life is to be an example for others and that you have to make amends. And being familiar with, via my dad with the atonement and amends in 2014, which is important, 12th row. Uh, in 2014, did you pay your taxes in full? I'm sorry, Congressman. One of the areas that is part of your agreement is that you're not going to be able to address issues that are subject to litigation that is occurring. And consequently, counsel, I believe that's a, I'm sorry, let me finish. Go ahead. My point, because this is something specifically, uh, I specifically talked to your counsel about. So if you want to ask him how much money he made, if you want to ask him how much uh, he made his, how he made his money, if you want to ask him any questions about the underlying facts, that's fine. If you ask him about when he paid his taxes, how he paid his taxes, whether or not he gave, he bought a gun, whether he didn't buy a gun, that's outside the scope of your agreement. In 2014, this is this is beyond the statute of limitations. And the point is, so he cannot be he cannot be tried for that. So I'm not doing this on the basis of whether or not he could be or not charged because your view of the statute of limitations is not something I could take to court. I bet. <clears throat> I will tell you, though, that it's part of the agreement that we made. Ask him about what he made. Ask him how he made it. Ask him, well, okay. So ask him about what he did with his money. All right, counsel, I get it, I get it. But if you're asking about his taxes, you're not going to direct my inquiry. I understand. So I'm saying that if someone outside the statute of limitations, you're not going to be tried for it. There's, uh, But there were back taxes owed. Part of that amends or atonement would be to pay those taxes. I think that would be moral. Is that your statement? Is that a question? Both. Do you agree with it? My intention is, in everything I do, is to make amends for where I hold responsibility and make good where I can. Okay, thank you. Would you agree, I think we can get a, uh, agree on this stuff, that in fact, Jesus Christ, um, that your dad became vice president of the United States in January 20th, 2009. I would agree with that. Okay. That part of his portfolio, with the also agree that he became president on January 20th, 2020, which I think a number of you don't agree with. I didn't like to see it, but I agree it happened. Yeah, okay. It's a fact that part of his portfolio as vice president in the Obama administration was Ukraine. Would, yes. Would you agree on that? Yes. That Burisma, as you mentioned, and I think we can agree with uh, because you had it in your testimony, was a large energy company in Ukraine. In fact, you stated it as one of the two largest. Yes. Okay. That the same energy company hired you on the board for, say, roughly $65,000 a month for five years was the original agreement. Yes. Okay. It's a fact that in 2015, U.S. Ambassador Gre Jeffrey Pyatt gave a speech in Odessa. They're covering this ground again. But I think they're trying to get him to slip up by redirecting it and just going, get a, what you'd call like a yes parade. Yeah. Uh, you're going to get up tomorrow to announce the big show dates on Steph's show? Um, I think we're doing it Monday, not tomorrow, unless they move the date up on me. I gotta, do I have to check my text messages after the show? Shit. All right, here we go. We're almost done with this. We're near the end. <clears throat> we made it. I mean, you're doing great, by the way. And thank you guys for all the super chats and support. Oh my gosh, Tobias, thank you. The informative and hilarious, it's the Sparks way. Thank you for the Canadian funds because we love Canada. For your scene of Hagfish and Hunter, hilarious. Thank you, uh, Bethany, for that as well. Thanks, everybody, for the likes as well. Um, really appreciate the, the help. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, same energy. They come and pay. Okay. Yes. It is in fact, 2015, you said this. Yes. Who did that? Oh, that Pyatt. Yeah. Pyatt. Yes. Jeffrey Pyatt. Yes. Yes. And Slavchevsky for the record was the, was the head of Burisma, the CIA, CEO. Yes. Okay. And the fact that Victor Shokin was a Ukrainian prosecutor, we agree on that. Yes. He was investigating Slavchevsky. I do not, whether or not you think he did it well, he was investigating Slavchevsky. I do not know whether he was investigating Glovchevsky. Okay. That's in fact uh, what the, the, that is, that it's a fact that the vice president, your dad, advocated for Shokin's firing, gave a speech indicating he wanted him fired and that he indeed got him fired. I think that that's the public knowledge. Yes. Public record. All right. And it's a fact that Shokin was fired. It's a fact that he was fired. Glovchevsky was never investigated again and it has, he was charged with no crimes. Do you agree on that? Yes. Okay. Do you see how that could be viewed as a conflict of interest? As I pointed out before, is that one of the things that in everything that I do, I do everything in the area uh, my father has influence over, which is almost ubiquitous, is that I try to minimize the conflict where there could be. And the way that I did that was, number one, making certain that I never had any discussion with my father or anyone in the administration asking them to do things on my behalf. The best way for my, for the benefit, I'm sorry, I apologize. Yeah, for the benefit of anyone that I was working for, or any board that I was serving on. 
I think the best way to avoid the conflict, you've been to not take the job at all. He didn't say it was a conflict. Thanks for sharing. Um, uh, would we agree that in February 2014, Yelena Baterina, the wife of former Mayor of Moscow, gave 3.5 million to companies you were involved with? No, wait, wait, I'm sorry. Last piece, company he was involved with? You want me to get the, no, I got it. It's Rosemont Partners Seneca. Yeah, listen, I had nothing to do with Rosemont, whatever entity, the reality, uh, the realty or whatever it is, that was Devin's. I never received a dime from Miss Baterina. I didn't have any involvement with her in any way. Okay, that was Devin's re relationship. I think that she made an investment into, according to Devin, into actual commercial property. Okay, so I can rephrase the question. She gave $3.5 million to Devin Archer, one of your... She did not give $3.5 million to invested, whatever, wired, transferred. I know, but the words matter. Okay, they really do matter, wired. Because no one was given anything for not anything. Well, that's what you said. According to Devin, in his testimony, I believe, was that she sent Devin $3.5 million to invest in commercial property in Brooklyn and then received the return on those investments. She didn't give him anything. It's not the same. And Devin was one of your business partners. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and then a few months, uh, or a few weeks, months after that, Yelena Baterina attended dinner at Cafe Milano and your dad was there. I don't know the timing of it, but I do know that she was at a dinner. I do believe that. Okay. Because I remember you a couple hours ago, you said that stopped uh, over at the dinner while she was there. I think that was my birthday. My dad stopped. And then Kenneth Rakashev, the fellow uh, from Kazakhstan, wired Devin $142,000. I think that mistakes the record. Devin Archer sends money to car dealer, not to Mr. Biden. Yeah. If you look at the record, okay. But then you kept the car, regardless. Is that yes, I kept the car. Okay. And then Kenneth Rakashev had dinner with your father shortly at, thereafter. I don't know if it happened uh, before that or after that. I have no knowledge of that. Anyway, I would say to you is that Kenneth Rakashev was a guest at the dinner that I had for the presentation about the World Food Program. My dad stopped by. I never did anything on behalf of Kenneth Rakashev or asked anyone to do anything on behalf of Kenneth Rakashev. And then, the spring of 2014, one of the Burisma executives, Burisma executives, Vadim Pajarsky, who you'd uh, already been working with now on the board, then they, after they hired you, Vadim Pajarsky had dinner with you and your father as well. He did not have dinner with my father. I said this. He did not have dinner with your father many times before. He, my dad did not come for dinner. He came and sat down at the presentations. He sat down next to Father Alex, who he's known for 42 years, who is a close family friend. And I believe he probably had a Coca-Cola and a bowl of spaghetti, maybe. And then got up and gave Xanthi a hug and Michael a hug, walked out, shook hands to the people who were sitting at the table. So he ate there. Most people would define that as having dinner. Well, uh, he said he's not sure that he ate. I'm not sure that he ate. I'm sure. Uh, I'm not sure he ate. Well, well, he's had spaghetti. I said he might have had a bowl of spaghetti. So he might have had dinner. Okay, my bottom line is this. Is that my dad, yes, attended in one form or another as he stopped by, whatever you want to characterize it, but for nothing other than to say hello to the people around the table and particularly those related to the World Food Program. Do you see the pattern here, though? No, you dumb motherfucker. All right, that's me. That's my interjection. I mean, people give money to either you or your business associates and then they have access to your dad. Also, this is after he's out of office. Thank you for... Uh, um, all right, last question. Thank you for indulging me. Are you aware that your uncle, the pattern that I see is that you literally have no evidence whatsoever. Well, I'm getting to that too. Of any corruption of, on any part of my father. Therefore, what you're trying to do, there's no question, is that you're trying to make every single thing in business that I was ever involved in somehow corrupt. That's what I see. Are you aware of a canceled check that your uncle, Jim Biden, no, gave your father for $200,000? No. All right, it's out in the public. I have no knowledge of it. Do you have? Yes, we have a copy of it. I'd like to see it. All right. I mean, if you're going to ask him about it, is it a question? Does he know about it? No, I have no knowledge about it. Never mind. Okay. If he has no knowledge about it, I don't need to see it. Yeah. All right. There's a canceled check for $200,000 from Jim Biden to Joe Biden. It says, what's the date? March 1st, 2018. It was from AmeriCorps. Wired 200000 to Jim Biden, your uncle. That very same day, your uncle cut your father a check for 200000 for the exact same amount. It's been... I've seen public reporting and my, it said loan repayment. And I believe there's another one for $40,000 saying loan repayment. So my question would be, if there's indeed a loan, which has been claimed by the administration, why wouldn't the president just produce the original loan, the check? It's a check. If my loan my sister 200 grand, she pays me back. I produce $200,000 and we would all eat crow. Why do you, you guys think you, uh, that's never happened? Have to be kidding me. He's released 27 years of his tax returns. You defend a man that won't release his tax returns and is the last, least transparent human being on the face of the earth. 
and Mr. Trump, and you're saying that he should bow to you because you're in proper process and somehow bend to you and do what no other president, let alone your president, your supposed president, would ever do. I don't, to produce a check, look, I do not, to produce a canceled check, speak to my father. I don't speak for my father. I do not speak for the administration. I do not speak for his lawyers. I can only speak for myself. I have no knowledge or understanding of any view of this into this whatsoever. None of it. I have no idea. Whatever it was was between my uncle and my dad. All I know from the public reporting is that my dad loaned my uncle money and supposedly my uncle paid him back. That's all I know. We're over an hour. We'll take a little break and then we'll let the Democrats have their hour. Off the record. We're back on the record. Um, Mrs. Spart. I'll just be brief for the timeline. Shh. <laughs> I bet that was Marge. It just says voice because the person writing it down doesn't know who it was. Shh. Mr. Swallow, for the record, can we get the order so that it's clear and there's no more? So, yeah, it's yeah, it's not on the record. You say it on the record so we can finish this, please. We're not doing it on the record, Ms. Sparks. Go ahead. No, say it on the record because we're afraid it's not going to be, they're not going to stick to it. No, it's okay. Ms. Sparks, go ahead, please. Okay. Just for the timeline, Mr. Biden, when was the time you first met Mikola Zlovchevsky? First time I met Z uh, Mr. Zlovchevsky is at the, I believe, after joining the board, the first board meeting. I can't remember when it was, but if you do, do the, do you know the, when was the time of the first board meeting? Do you mind if I ask? Yeah. I believe May of 2014. May of 2014. I believe so. I believe. Okay. I'm not positive. Were you aware that Mikola Zlovchevsky was in 2010, after President Yanukovych, who is right now residing under Putin's protection in Russia, he was the natural resources minister, eco ecology minister in charge of overseeing energy ministry, in, including Burisma, where, yes, were you aware of that? And I'm also aware that he resigned in protest from that administration. But he actually wasn't resigned. He had another position in that administration as security advisor. And actually, his allegations, a lot of corruption allegations were correct, connected to licenses that Burisma was getting at the time when he was minister. You ever heard that or not, including some of the licenses in Crimea and other areas? And again, those were your characterization of them. It's not my understanding of them. But I, So you don't acknowledge that he was working in the administration of President Yanukovych? No. What I know is that he resigned in protest. And that's what I was told. And that's what he said. And and that he resigned in protest in the Yanukovych administration. So he, okay. What about when you were actually getting with this board meeting? Uh, that, were you aware that Burisma was under investigation in the UK for money laundering investigations, including some of the 23 million of assets were frozen? Were you aware of that? When I joined on the board, I was not aware of it. And I think we went through this question before. And what I know, there were two reports done by multinational security forms. One of them was the, a Crow report and one of them was a Nardello report. Neither of those reports at the time that I joined the board. So you were not aware of those investigations in regardless. Not when I joined the board. Based upon, but later you became aware of this. Well, when they, then it became public. Did you take any actions? Did you talk about uh, that with anyone in the United States? With your father, anyone related to the situation? No. No discussions with anybody in the United States or anybody in officials whatsoever about that. Okay. Did you meet with President Poroshenko or any of the prosecutors? Have you ever met with them on issues in Ukraine? I've never traveled to Ukraine. I've never met with any, okay, Ukrainian officials. What if, what about Yuri Avenushin, Konstantin Konchenko, or Andriy Kicha? Have you ever, no, none of this name. So were you aware that Prosecutor Shokin opened investigation in Burisma in 2015? Were you aware of that? I was aware of that. That Prosecutor Shokin, no, I'm not aware that he opened. You're not aware of that? No. Uh, were you aware that when all these investigations were abruptly closed, at least one of them was settled through tax evasion in 2016, but a lot of them, it was an enormous amount of investigations were closed. The director of Anti-Corruption Action Center said the proceedings led the prosecutor general's office were not just shut, they were intentionally botched. Were you aware that the anti-corruption agency in Ukraine was shocked on closing all this investigation? Again, I'm not aware of your characterization of that, and I know that I have a very different characterization of that, but yes. So you still believe that, you know, Mikola, Mikola Zovchesky is fighting for freedoms against Putin is really a high integrity person from your understanding. No, that's your, you said it was your, uh, it was your word that that's your characterization of that. No, that's your, your characterization was early. I just tried to clarify. I'm sorry, Congresswoman. Is that your characterization? That's not his characterization. It's okay. It's okay. I understand. Yes. So what is your characterization then of Mikola Zlovchevsky? I don't, at this point, after six hours here, my characterization was made clear in the 3,000 other answers I gave. I can't speak to it. I would never, ever challenge, and I mean this sincerely, your deep knowledge of what has happened in Ukraine, what is happening in Ukraine, and the struggle that Ukraine is having right now against Vladimir Putin. And I appreciate the way you speak about it in other, uh, on other things. So I appreciate your opinion about that. That was my characterization. 
Why do you think that was the main function you were hired by uh, McCullough? What do you think was the main function you were hired by McCullough Zlotowski to do, really? I think I've answered that question a number of times. Was it to help with Ukraine? Did you uh, Do you have a deep understanding of Ukraine? Was the main reason he believe, you believe he hired you? I think it was a deep understanding of Ukraine as many people in this room. I studied the region in my, in my entire life. So you don't understand all of the corruption investigations. That's your characterization. So maybe it's not as deep. Congresswoman, I don't. Sorry. Okay. These statements that you're making, I disagree with your statements, but I want you to, well, these are the statements of fact. To know that I respect your, well, maybe you have interaction uh, on more facts next time. Thank you, though. Mr. Gates, thank you for being here. Oh, they're fucking still going with these assholes? Uh, thank you for the witness. Maybe we can work on the same time next Uh same side. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mr. Gates, thank you. Mr. Biden, you ever received a payment from Russia or any Russian business entities? No. No Russian business entities. No, not that I know of. Okay, great. I think we're on exhibit 26 now. 26. Let me know you have a chance to view that, Mr. Biden. Yes. So does this purport, do you recall receiving this e email? No, I do not. Is it an email or, oh, okay, email. Yeah. Is this your email address, right? Biden at rosemontseneca.com? That's, that was an email address. Yes. Okay. Was it your email address at the time in 2015? I believe so. God damn, this is fucking tedious. Okay. So does this period of time match the time when you were meeting at Cafe Milano between your father and Mr. Pajarski? Mr. Gates, at this hour, I don't remember exactly when it was, but if you tell me that it matches the time, I will trust you're being accurate. And the email reads, Dear Hunter, thank you for inviting me to D.C. and giving me the opportunity to meet your father and spend some time together. Yep. It was a real honor and a pleasure. So the email goes on to request coffee meeting with you. Did that coffee meeting occur? If a team was in D.C., he was in D.C. on Burisma business or for other reasons. Of course, I've met with him. He was the secretary of the board and basically the translator. I'm just asking you to recall this particular coffee. No, again, meeting this reference. This is almost 10 years ago. I don't specifically remember that coffee. I have no reason to suspect this isn't accurate. And since Vadim is literally writing you about meeting with your father at this time, you were paying, uh, they were paying you a million bucks a year, right? I don't know. Again, timing this, but I think that, again, we've gone over this and over this. But Vadim is talking about this the night before. He attended the World Food Program dinner at Cafe Milano. My dad came to that and stopped by and said hello to people who were there that, that he had a long-standing relationship with. Vadim was one of the people sitting at a table. He said hello to them. He didn't have a meeting. They met, which is very, very important distinction with a difference. Please tell me the difference between meeting and having a meeting. Okay. So out in the hall, when I went in the room, I shook hands with one of the Capitol Hill police. I met the Capitol Hill police officer. The next day, there may be someone who will say, it was nice to meet you. It does not mean we had a meeting. Do you understand that now? I understand that. And that's what I'm talking about. That's your appreciation for it. So that's not my appreciation for it. That's the exact definition of what it would mean to say I met someone. I've met many people in this room, but we haven't had a meeting. Yeah. And so coffee or no coffee, do you recall with Vadim? I'm sure we probably had coffee with Vadim. Afterwards, I probably said Vadim more than one time while he was here. Okay. And what did you discuss? I have no idea. It was nine years ago. It was a particular, at a particular meeting, at a coffee. I have no clue. But I'm sure you don't think the emailing uh, by, uh, you don't think that this email talking about your dad from someone paying, I just told you exactly what it is. Excuse me, Mr. Biden. I'm asking the question. I thought you were making a statement again. It was just, no, going to answer it. No, my question is, do you believe that this writing reference is meeting your father was worth uh, M-E-E-T? No, it doesn't say a meeting with my father, Mr. Gates. Okay opportunity to meet your father. It says, meet my father. I just explained to you the difference between meeting someone and having a meeting. But does this, what don't you understand? Fuck, this is, uh, this is asinine. Jesus Christ. Mm. Yeah, and I, I, I too like Hunter. He's funny. Um, all right. Does that, I mean, he's, uh, he discussed business with you. Do you believe that? Depends on what was discussed. It came, uh, if he came in this room, okay, Mr. Biden, um, and shook everybody's hand as he would, because you know, as you guys uh, have to do it yourselves, you walk these halls, you go to events, you go to dinners, you go to dinners for, you know, everything under the sun. You sit at a table, you're at a table, 14 people. It was nice to meet you. It was nice to meet you. Does it mean you had a meeting? It seems as though if everyone you've ever been to dinner with, you had a bribe. It seems as though you had a bribe. Excuse me? If not a meeting, is this, does this consummate your bot, your bribe? Mr. Gates, do you have evidence of a bribe that, I'm sorry, could you, does this writing consummate, does this writing consummate a bribe, Mr. Biden? I would love to see evidence of that. Okay, let's, show me the evidence of that. Well, it, I think the only person, I'll move on, that you believe that has the evidence of that is a guy named Alexander Smirnoff, who's locked up in LA right now. Um, I think he's in Vegas still, but okay. 
Uh, or maybe not. Maybe they moved him already. Indicted for lying on behalf of Russian intelligence. Well, that's the only person that I know of the supposed evidence of a bribe other than Mr. Gal Luft. While your father is president. Excuse me? Hold on. Come forward, Miss Green. Miss Green. While your father is president. Um, okay, that's pretty interesting. Okay. That's pretty interesting. Anyway, I apologize. It's the end of the day. Maybe. Um, I think there's a distinction between meeting someone, shaking their hand, saying hello, and having a meeting with someone. I think that in my world, but when someone is paying you a million bucks to facilitate their goals, okay, it seems that you're eager to, eager to involve your father. Is that not what that email seems to demonstrate? No, I demonstrate. No, I categorically disagree with your characterization of that. Okay, I'll move on. Um, God damn, this is just fucking tedium. Let me know when you have a chance to review it, Mr. Ryan. Okay, I've seen every read it. Okay, and do you, what is this email? It looks like an email from Eric Schwerin. I have not seen this email before, but it says the pages are blanked out. It's June 10th, 2010. It says, your dad's Delaware tax refund check came today. I'm depositing it in his account, writing a check in that amount back to you since he owes it to you. Uh, don't think I need to run it by him, but if you want to go ahead, if not, I'll deposit it tomorrow. Okay, yeah. So why did your dad owe you his ref refund check? I think Mr. Schwerin testified to this length over a period of, I don't know, four, five, six hours in which he handled basically bills for my dad for things. And in this instance... I think that Mr. Schwerin wasn't able to get in contact with my dad over, I think, literally, the whether it was to pay the people that take the garbage from the house in Delaware or whether it was for pool service and they had a back due and he couldn't get in touch with my dad. They were going to end the service or something, so he asked me if I would pay it. I paid it. And then my dad's Delaware tax refund check came in for $1,640, and Eric said, I'll just send you in repayment because you paid the pool service guy. Was it maybe the pool? I'm generalizing, but yeah, something like that. Fucking hell. Since you guys are using a pool service example, is it safe to say, for in the sense that you're, be you're being paid back um, for having fronted some sort of cost for... I didn't say that, Mr. Gates. Well, no, I'm, I'm trying to understand it. But I don't know. I don't know what the exact detail is of it, but I know it was something completely innocuous. I mean, what are you saying? Number one, it's 2010. I have no involvement with anyone you're talking about there was any relationship with. You have no involvement with Mr. Schwerin? I'm involved with Mr. Schwern. I'm saying, okay, any of the other questions I've received today about any other foreign business? But I'm asking you this question, Mr. Biden. Let's focus on this question. Okay, what? I just answered the question. Okay, so I just answered the question to the best of my ability. I have nothing else to say to it, on it. Uh, and so off, how often do you pay your father's, I have no idea, pool service or other types of expenses? I believe far, far, far and few between. And just like a normal son would take care of something for their dad if their dad, or their dad would take care of something for their son. I mean, literally it's, yeah, I think there's a whole lot of dad taking care of. Well, listen, Mr. Gates, stuff for his son, if you do. But I'm asking about this tax return. If you do, then point to me another place where you see that. And I'll, a, am I somehow paying my dad? But I'm telling you, I'm just wondering why he owes you money. What? I'm wondering why Mr. Schwerin thought your dad owed you money. Have you ever gone to dinner with your dad and he's paid? This is not about me and my dad. I'm asking, have you ever been out to dinner with your dad and he paid? Me and my dad are, are not involved in international bribes, Mr. Biden. It's a normal question. Hey, 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 come on. Well, I'm not involved in international bribes. That liter that is literally slander. Just ask the question. I'm I am asking the question. We're already determined. We've already determined that you're making statements. I would like everyone to stop and and let a question be asked and an answer given, and that includes you, Congressman Gates. Please let him answer a question. If you're going to make a speech or make an allegation of bribery. You can do that, and you can do it on the floor, and you can do it today. But it's not really a question. You know the point. So why don't you keep going? Happy to. How many times do you pay your for your dad's household expenses? I don't know. I can't answer that. More or less than 10. I can't answer that. More or less than 20. I'm under oath and I'm not going to answer with any specificity or generality whatsoever. I don't know. More or less than 50. Again, Mr. Gates, I can't answer with any specificity. So why don't you go uh, to 100 or 200 or 500 because the answer will be the same. I do not know. Yeah. Okay. More or less than 500 times you pay expenses for your dad. Go to 1,000. He doesn't know. I did. I picked 500. Okay. Can I get an answer? I think I already answered it. I'm not. No, you didn't answer as to 500. 5 million. I don't have any recollection. No matter how large you make the number or how small you make the number, I don't have with any specificity, specificity without any documentation, documentation in front of me to be able to quantify how many incidental bill or dinner for my dad, you know, the ski rentals when we went skiing together. I don't know. So it sounds like your finances are pretty interwoven with a record show that we're all laughing. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? No, I don't. Again, so do you. I'm sorry, Mr. Gates. I'll take you seriously, and it's hard to do. Why would you do that? <laughs> I'm, but I will. I will take you seriously, but it's hard to do. I disagree with your characterization, what you just said. No, our finances aren't interwoven. 
what are interwoven is that we're a family. And I don't think that is any different than any other family in which you have adult children, you have grandchildren that are adult children, and that, you know, sometimes I pay for dinner, and when I earn enough money to be able to do it, by most of the time, my dad would pay for dinner. If he'd pay for dinner, we'd forget his credit card, which 90% of the time he usually does. <laughs> Mr. Biden, I have not asked you questions about dinner. I'm asking you about household expenses. Which I answered the question. Are the basis for this? No, I said, I answered the question. There's never a time for which I paid for something my dad did not pay me back. There's never a time which I gave my dad money. Did you keep receipts? We, you have all my receipts. You have every bank account that I've ever had. You have every bank record I've ever had. You've subpoena, subpoenaed, I've not objected to your subpoena, over 10,000 pages, 14,000 pages of bank records. You have every transaction that's ever been made, that I've ever made. Do you see a tra transaction, Mr. Gates? It's not incumbent upon me to point to you to something that doesn't exist. It's incumbent upon you to create something, to come up with something based on the voluminous evidence that you've collected, which shows no involvement. Well, the email we're discussing from Mr. Schwerin seems to reflect your involvement in your father's personal finances. Are you disputing it? Yes, I'm disputing that. What do you mean involvement? What's the term you mean? Paying back his father for Mr. Lowell. Okay, I can answer. Is it, I disagree with the way you characterize that wholeheartedly, completely. I just state for the record one more time, under oath and under penalty of perjury, that my father has never been involved in my business. I've never asked my father, my father uh, to be involved in my business. My father has never benefited from my business. And I have never asked anyone or my father to do anything for the benefit of anyone I've ever done business for. If you're paying your father's household expenses, how would he not be benefiting from me? I did not, I did not pay my father's household expenses. And you're, take, you're taking one email completely out of context in 2010, over 14, 000, 14 years ago, because that was related to an incidental bill that my father paid me back. Because according to Eric, not even to me, that somehow uh, he owed it to me. Doesn't even look like Eric informed your father. So he paid me back. So if under this, if, you're, if you just take this for what it is and he paid me back, can you exactly tell me what is wrong with that? I'm just asking questions. Motherfucker, this dude. Oh my God. Here's a question. Who did you fly with to Cuba? Matt? This is a marathon tonight. We, we have them on occasion. Uh, thanks for hanging in there. Zero clips, but it's, uh, it's, it's riveting theater. All right. Uh, no, what's wrong with it? You're not just asking questions. You're making statements. You're saying things like bribery in this conversation about this email. Wait, he bribed about a pool service? Yeah, if my dad... If, I, if the pool guy was there and said, hey, I need a payment before I can do this, and here, I pay him, and my dad, two days later, come and said, thanks for getting the pool guy, it, um, it would have gone green if you hadn't done that. Here's the money you just paid. You think that's bribery? But that's not what happened, Mr. Biden. Over this $800, that's not what's happening. What's happening is here, you're fronting expenses for your dad and swearing, I'm not fronting expenses. You keep making things up, Mr. Gates. That was, that was your testimony. We can, go to, we can go to the next one. I don't want to get in an argument with you, but it is absolutely ludicrous. It literally makes no sense. We'll go to we'll go to exhibit 28. Honest to God, that whole fucking exchange. I, I honest to God, I have to say at the beginning of it where he signed over his tax refund, you're like, oh, gosh, tax refund. And then you're like, oh, shit, right. This is just his tax refund for his. He didn't have his book out at that point. Fourteen hundred dollars. Um, God damn. Uh, it truly does not have any bearing, resemblance to reality. It sometimes doesn't, I, I sometimes don't understand what are you talking about? Well, if you're paying things that you're get, then getting swearing, getting repaid for, yeah, I'm trying to ascertain the dollar amount. If I'm paying for an incidental bill for my father and he's repaying, he's repaying me for it, there's somehow bribery, but you don't know what you paid for, why he's paying you back. Mr. Gates, it's because you do. I don't have, you, okay. Let's go on our next. Let's go to 28. 10 years of my bank records. Go through it. Let me know when you have you have gone through it and you haven't found anything. And that's why you can't point to anything except out of context, 14 year old text messages. Actually, Mr. Biden, we found like all this Ukraine, Russian, Chinese money that you seem to make. Let me ask you a question this way. While your dad was vice president, how much money from foreign? Hold on. Before you ask a question, before it has nothing to do with your question. OK. OK. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Gates. OK. So while your dad was vice president, how much foreign money did you make? I don't know exactly the amount again. And what I, what I would like to say, was it in the millions? Are you going to let him answer the question? Or are you going to uh, do your soapbox? It's the same thing. It's the same thing, okay? I'll give you the answer to, that I had. I had business relationships. I had business relationships with individuals that were foreign nationals from several different places. I was paid for the legitimate business that I conducted with those people. And so I don't know the exact number. But again, 
Was it in the millions? Again, you have all the bank accounts. I did very well during that period of my life. Absolutely. I don't know what the exact figure is, but it's not a figure that you can continue to keep throwing around. But I'm just asking. You have that number. Okay. I find it highly disingenuous because you have my bank account. You have my tax returns. Unlike every other American, somehow you guys were able to get my tax returns. I'm a private citizen. I don't think you have Jared Kushner's tax returns, do you? But you have mine, and it has nothing to do with anything that the IRS or anybody else is doing. It's because somehow I'm you're being prosecuted for violating tax laws. It doesn't make them... No one else is being no one else is being thrown accusations being prosecuted uh, for violating tax laws. That's you, Mr. Biden. Let me know when you have a chance to review this exhibit. Want to talk about prosecutions? Gladly. Okay, let's move on to whatever you want to ask me. Okay. Okay. Let uh, yeah. Just let me know when you've had a chance to review the exhibit. Again, where is this from? We've never seen it before. Doesn't look like complete back and forth. Uh, something. Yes, sir. Uh, witness. We did have a deal. Uh, we did have a deal where there would be that you would have to provide then just I would make it clear. OK, just for the record, I want to make a record clear that you made a deal with us. You personally that no documents that were not presented to us beforehand would be used. And don't tell me that they came through Mr. Gates or something else. Well, I'm just saying that in terms of what, what the understanding was that I don't want to argue this about this. But OK, well, we're certainly not arguing. Let's just leave it alone. Let's leave it from here. Here's all he's saying. I didn't. OK, let's just tell him where it's from and move on. OK, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Where does this come from? Where'd you get this, though? Well, I'm going to lay foundation and ask the witness to if he recalls sending it or receiving it. If you lay the foundation, let's move on. Go ahead. Yeah. Do you recall receiving this email, these messages? I don't recall because I don't know whether this email, I don't have any verification. It's printed out or something, so I don't know. I don't know. If, uh, this is that. Well, ask me a question what you want to ask me about. Yeah. So the email reads, you, me, we have a deal with this now, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. I'm not kidding. They, Joe, have become Buccini's. Uh, being called by your landlord, it is much more outrageous. You have to let me in to help. I'm with you 100%. Does that ring a bell? Is this purport purport to be? I can answer. Uh, I can answer the question. No. It says James Biden at the top. Does did you ask Mr. James Biden about this? When was he here? Yeah. That's the funny. I don't remember this coming up. It says James Biden, so I just don't know. I'm not. Listen, Mr. Lowell, we're not okay. Well, I don't know where. Let's lay a predicate for it. You put in front of something that says James Biden and it says archives all email October 1st, 2017. And then it purports to be a message. I don't know because there's no to and from line. It just says James Biden. And you're asking if he's calling me. I know exactly what my uh, uncle is talking about. What's he talking about? He is, he's greatly concerned about me and my addiction. He's trying to get me help. Does this have anything to do with business? No. It is completely to do with the fact that he's really worried about me. He's worried about me as my uncle. And he's saying other people are worried about me. He's saying that the Puccinis are old friends. They're, you know, they're getting calls from people about your behavior and so forth. And again, if your intention was to embarrass me, Mr. Gates, you've once again succeeded. What, what is the O difference? I don't know if there's a typo or anything. Okay. If, if he's meeting, I have no idea what the, uh, who the he is, the O, I don't know. I'm just wondering if your correspondence with your uncle, like the O meant something. It was like a nickname or a place you're familiar with. No, I think if you're looking at this particular email, it's about 13 other typos in here, including spacing and other things. I don't know who he's talking about. And I certainly don't know now. But you're uh, certain it's personal related, not business. I'm not certain of anything about this email. Okay. As I said to you before, it's not even an email. It's not even in any form that I recognize as being a form of communication other than you put it in front of me, Mr. Gates. Do you recall on October 1st, 2017, what kind of shape you were in on a particular day? No, I don't recall. But again, I don't know the accuracy of this, but I don't know what uh, that's what my uncle was talking about, if in fact it is my uncle. There are all uh, Those are all my questions. Thank you. And then are we on the record? Okay, I think this is the final of the, is this where Democrats come in? Jesus. Mr. Biden, I just have a few quick points. You're talking about the voluminous bank records. Yes, in the committee's possession. The committee was in possession of over 100,000 pages of records relating to this investigation. I was off by a factor of 10, sorry. You were asked about a check that your uncle wrote for your father marked loan repayment for $200,000. Yes. Do you, do you recall being asked about that? Yes. Yeah, in the previous hour. Oh, yes. And I just... I, uh, there was a comment made that the committee did not have in its possession the money going from your father to your uncle. And I was just to make clear for the record that the bank records received from the committee from the PNC Bank on October 17, 2023, Bates number PNC 1219, showed that six weeks prior to that check on January 12, 2018, a wire from the client trust account of the Monzak law firm of Joe Biden, uh, of which Joe Biden is a client, wired 200000 to the joint account of Jim and Sarah Biden. And as Jim Biden testified as he tra in his transcribed interview, that was the wire of his brother loaning him the 200000 he later paid, repaid by check. 
And similarly, the $40,000 loan, the same document, PNC 1219, shows the wire from the Mel Monzak firm to the joint account of Jim and Sarah Biden. Answer, thank you. Mr. Biden, exhibit, uh, I think it was number 27, the Eric Schwerin email that you were asked about at length by uh, Mr. Schwerin. You're aware that Mr. Schwerin testified before this committee? Yes, I am. And he testified that this was actually, he was asked about this email, okay? He testified that this was actually your father was paying you back for a joint cell phone plan. Is that familiar? Sound familiar? Uh, very well, could be. Okay, that was an incidental bill, yes? And you have no reason to dispute Mr. Schwerin's explanation that this is, no, I have no reason to dispute this, no. And that there was a family plan, your father had a line that he paid for, for paid you for? Okay, yeah. In one of the earlier hours, there was an insinuation made that because you had created a number of LLCs or because you were involved in a number of LLCs, that there was some kind of effort to obfuscate your business dealings or to do something nefarious. Are you familiar with the purpose of an LLC? Yes, I am. What's your understanding? My understanding of the purpose of an LLC is to protect an individual through the law and precedent, particularly in the state of Delaware, so that you don't have personal liability. The liability lies with the corporate entity, and so it's a form of protection for individuals conducting business. So every time you open up a business, you most often recommend it to create an LLC so you don't have personal liability or direct personal liability. So when you create LLCs, it was never your intent to conceal your business dealings. No, it's the exact opposite, actually. It's that the LLCs were publicly registered, and it's some LLCs have public-facing names, like Rosemont Seneca Partners. Others here, you know, they operate the oper operating entity, which you income and other things flow through and in and out in order to get things done through a cogent way. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Swalwell, no questions. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Biden, I just want to go back to the email that was sprung on us the last round of question. I don't know if it's an email, a text, a letter message purportedly from James Biden. It's not something Mr. Biden, your uncle, brought to us when he testified here. It's not anything he was present, uh, presented to. I don't remember ever seeing this before, and I just, I couldn't hear all of your answers. You're not vouching for the veracity of this. No. Document, are you? No, not in any way. No. Okay. I mean, it's, there are about 27 exclamation points here. I haven't seen that particular affection, uh, affectation connected to you. Yeah, it looks like Donald... <laughs> Raskin, it looks more like a Donald Trump message to me with all the exclamation marks, but okay. And so, all right. In other words, you're not authenticating or validating this in any way. No, no. Okay. Does anybody have any further questions? We thank, all right. We thank you for your patience today. The witness, thank you, everybody. Off the record. And that, ladies and gentlemen, it, I have one more question. I don't know that me. Okay. Um, I am. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and scene. Shit. God damn. My arm hurts from, like, from my mouse. I've got carpal tunnel syndrome from that fucking thing. Just sitting here. Fucking scroll. I've got scroller's wrist. Um, so, uh, oh my god. Kathy, thank you for the super chat. Uh, basically great. Thank you so much for the super chats as well. That's really awesome, you guys. Thanks for the support today. I really I appreciate it. I, um, I, I, this was really fun. Um, you injured yourself laughing. I think we don't have to release the whole thing. I think we'll just clip the Harriet Hagman part and put that out to save ourselves the trying to chapterize it, CSL, because it was one big fucking thing. Phew. <sighs> and, um, <laughs> but uh, again, I'm very proud at how right I was and how we saw repeatedly Hunter Biden's team and he himself referencing arguments that I made and no one else was making for two fucking years. You're welcome. Uh, glad to be of service. Love you guys. <clears throat> now I'm going to have a fucking drink some tea. Cause my throat is fucking leathery now at doing, doing Harriet Hagman for that long, man. <laughs> so, uh, love you guys. Take care. Uh, share the show, like subscribe. Have we Don't worry, we'll catch up. This
was catharsis. Thank you. And yes, Dragon Rider 1350 is correct. I was right about everything. Everything.